see you've been chasing your monsters and they've been driving you bonkers just blinding with rocket launchers of light to blow what they conscious if you really want to juxtapose and take a darker color with the blush of rose and then you put it in your ink and watch it go your mind is always open when your eyes are closed because you're blind to color and you're blind to greed blind to all the things that you don't need and you find a mind and then you plant a seed then you nourish it a little You're let it free it up. I live in the now, the sky's my home and I live in the clouds Now I'm never bound forever Making a change and making it better It is June 10th, 2020 The year that just will not go away But despite the shenanigans that are going on We are here at the Stonewood Ranch in Winniewood, Oklahoma uh, We did a remote show to find Big Bird, Larry Ward He's here with us today One of the most underrated guys in our sport <laughs> With one of the most successful careers. We're going to get into that. Stoked to have him. Welcome to the show, bud. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, thanks for having us out here. Yeah. No problem. There's no way I was going to California with the world is the way it is right now. So I was actually pretty honored and humbled that you all were willing and, and wanted to come here. So thank you. Oh, yeah, man. Like, we, we, you've been on our list, you know, from the very beginning. And uh, Pink, Pink's we, talked about this for about a year, I think. I think early on last year, you were like, we got to get Big Bird. We got to find yeah. him. We got to. Figure it out. The elusive well, there's Big a few Bird. Guys He's that, gone. We've got to find him. There's a few guys that just disappeared into the woods. Poof. Like you, Barnett. That guy won't do anything. Yogi. So, you know, we're tracking Well, a lot down. of them came from the woods. Yeah, you so got, I think that makes you just some went sense. back to the woods. Well, anyway, Home. thanks for being on the show. Stoked to have you. Uh, with us, as always, are my co-host, Grant Langston, multi-time national champion. And a better shot than you are. Drinker mm. of clear vodkas, clear alcohols. You are a better shot than me, and it's pissing me off a little bit. Well, the best part is I went from the worst of the three, and I think I was okay in the end. You're better with the pistol. You're better with the pistol. We'll get into it. Ping, you got, like, you had a, early on, you had a few, like, good successes there. You just picked too soon. You picked too soon. I did. You, like, podium the first three rounds and just got a little rough there. I was just an innocent bystander, but uh, don't quit your (laughs) day jobs, either one of you. (laughs) Trust me. (laughs) No, you were a helpful bystander at times. You're like, oh, you got it. (laughs) So Larry took us out shooting. So the Stonewood Ranch, I mean, it's it's a hunting lodge. How do you describe it? Is that what it is? Well, there's definitely hunting here. The thing I focus on the most, what works the best for us, that we accommodate, I think, the best, is corporate retreats. Okay. Um, You know, 14, 15 guys can come in here. You get to do... A whole bunch of great outdoor activities, fishing, shooting of, of all sorts. You guys today experienced shotguns, pistols, and rifles. Um, really, really good food. Exceptional ac- accommodations. Um, this place is insane. Yeah, h- the food, of- dude. The so, food. so that's the thing. It's no bullshit. Like, I know. Don't, don't think he's selling you. Because I looked online. I'm like, oh, this place looks pretty dope. Like, this will be fun. When you pull up into this place, you're like, oh, shit. He no, was you walk kidding. through the front door. It's <laughs> like, what is this? This is like four stories. I mean, it's amazing, this place. I, I had to have GL hoist me up into my bed. It's this massive king size. I mean, it's as tall as I am. Dude, I got up in the middle of the night for a piss, and I almost rolled my ankle because I thought the ground was a lot closer. It was a foot further down. I almost ate and, shit. And to me, that's really weird because I gave them separate rooms, but they were in the same bed. So I don't know how close this Mind your business. Is. Anyway, the food. We're saving money. The chef here has been just every meal we've had. I mean, steak and twice-baked potatoes and dessert and, oh, man. The food's insane. It's been great. So this place is incredible. And we did learn today that none of us are – well, Donnie's actually pretty good. He shoots quite a bit. But if you want to kill me or GL, you got a real good chance. I, I sucked We're not going to hit you. I sucked on the shotgun. You did suck on the shotgun. Yeah, I was. Yeah. I sucked on the shotgun. Yeah. After Big Bird gave me some tips, I started getting it. GL got – I went miss, got, miss, went miss, 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 miss. And then I, how about the four in a row from different spots? You did spots? do four Come on, yeah. give me a little – I think Larry, Larry, I think Larry was standing behind you going, <laughs> oh, good shot. Hey, the, the at least <laughs> open one eye, that helped you a lot. <laughs> that helped a lot. So you did good. Did I get it? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's lined up with his right eye and looking through the scope with his left. He, he was cross-eyed for a while. Well, I'm a lefty, and I got a bad left eye, so I was. I was, I was butchering it big time in the beginning. I like when Pink shot. If he missed, he would like, shit. And it looked like he wanted to throw the gun down for a second. I get angry. Yeah, you do. GL was, you were the cross-eyed assassin, though. You got yeah. good. I, was, I thoroughly enjoyed that. That was cool. And I was a little better on the pistol than, than the... 
yeah, so so we went to a pistol bay. They got a bunch of targets. We did not do well. And then we went over to a rifle range where they got up to 500 yards, right? And there's uh, cutouts Civil of animals rights, and yeah. things. And um, we both we all hit, we all hit the bear from 500 yards out. Yeah, that's that was cool. Yeah, like was just fun. all the different targets. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, you guys did. You guys did great. Um, no one scared me. <laughs> Don't lie. <laughs> Stop lying. That was a real corporate you know, answer, right yeah. there. Yeah, no, they did. That really was well bullshit. And, you know, a- after the first. 15 minutes or so. I wasn't even scared anymore. I came out <laughs> from behind the tree. You know, you guys did good. So it was fun for me because obviously, you know, you're both really good at, at what you did and what you do. And, and you're both uh, very proud and competitive and watching you miss and then being able to help you a little bit. Um, it, it's fun. And, and it's, I'm not going to sit here and preach guns, 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 but you saw today that they can be safe and fun oh, and we're, we weren't mass killing people we were having fun a little competition friendly yeah. competition uh re- made us all closer i think that'll make the show better because we, we got to know each other a little bit better yeah totally and, and the thing that's neat is you know like i i don't know a whole lot about handguns i, I want to get one i, I want to get a shotgun so i've shot some skeet before but i was asking you like hey man help me help me to you know it's like if i was going to learn to ride i need someone to show me how to do it right you know yeah. and and that's why you were great today like just helping me know how to hold the damn thing how to stand you know well i would have lost my thumb if you hadn't have <laughs> rechanged my grip yeah I, on a pistol you i had my you thumb got across your finger the back. in front of the <laughs> no I, I wasn't i'm not that dumb but i did have my Is finger across on? the back <laughs> i don't like, need that you lose your thumb when it kicks back i was like oh, i don't okay. need that digit. that and the, and the bullet getting the bullet the right yeah. direction that helped too yes so we, we, hey but at least i asked we came a long ways today <laughs> so so but they were great they um came here not knowing what to expect we spent most of the day having fun, I think. Everybody laughed oh, and, and uh, had a blast the whole day. So it, this we place did, is fun. That's we didn't want to get to the show. We wanted to stay out there and stay yeah, doing I know. what we were, we're doing. We're starting two hours late. Yeah. And we stayed up until 2 in the morning bullshitting last night, so that didn't help us either. Late start. <laughs> um, but it was a lot of but fun. But all we'll, worth it. <laughs> totally. We'll, we'll talk more about this, the, this place here later on because I want you to kind of walk us through uh, pricing and, just, and how people would, would go about it and, and all that. But uh, I want to get to your show first, so let's get cracking on that. First of all, got to thank Yamaha. Uh, they are the title sponsor of this show, and uh, they've just been the best partner. These guys make amazing products. Um, their support for us has been awesome. And so, man, if you're looking at a new bike or a generator or a street bike or a quad, go check Yamaha stuff out. They're, they're, they're unrivaled quality, and uh, they're doing a lot to support this sport and certainly this show. So check those guys out. Power Dot. Uh, get over there, check them out. Whiskey Throttle, that code at checkout gets you 20% off. Method Race Wheels, they bring you our front-end chatter segment today. Again, 20% off using their code. And Troy Lee Designs, they're bringing you our timeout today. And I want to uh, make a big thanks to Ajax Motorsports right here in Oklahoma City. Uh, that is a big TLD uh, dealer. So if you guys are in the area and looking for some new TLD stuff, get over there to Ajax Motorsports and uh, check those guys out. They've got a full line of all the new TLD stuff. So uh, an awesome dealer in the area here if you're in this uh, Oklahoma City area. SKDA bringing you our Get At Me Q&A today. Uh, our Whiskey Throttle Show graphics, 20% off using our code. Get over and check those out. Adidas, don't be a dick to your feet. I was in Adidas all day. My feet are nice. I'm letting them breathe right now. I don't worry about the The humidity feet got to us a little bit. Yeah, yeah. That thing, intensity over the guns. I was like, it's not too hot. I shot one round. I was just pouring <laughs> sweat. I'm like, I'm overdoing this. <laughs> I don't think we should be working that hard. Just going. <laughs> I know. But we were all, yeah, pretty sweaty. Uh, Pro Circuit, thank you to those guys. Get over there and check them out. Um, 10% off anything using our code. And they also have smoking deals, man. I'm telling you, follow on them on Instagram because they blow out some of their old inventory. And if you have one of those units, man, you steal this stuff. Well, they also um, dialed in that YZ250F that I managed to snake off of you through Yamaha. So thanks, Pro Circuit. And Yamaha got a badass bike right now. Oh, and thanks, Ping. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> we have worked hard on that. I got to ride it twice. <laughs> Thanks I've lot. written it more than you have I in the know. last two weeks. Suck it. I N- did. <laughs> Dunlop tires. I'm uh, just bringing you the best tires in the sport. Get over and pick up some Dunlops. MX-53 front, 33 rear. If you're looking for the combo, that's it. Nihilo Concepts. You get a free gift using our code over there if you buy anything. So check those guys out. Fire Department Coffee. Best coffee in the world, man. 20% off using our code and 10% of their net proceeds go to uh, firefighter charities. So um, I really appreciate their support and I uh, love that company. So get in there and help them out. You're going to drink coffee anyway, man. Support somebody that supports us. Seat Concepts, amazing saddles. We just did another uh, uh, KTM 65 project with the seat on there. It looks so good. Uh, amazing stuff from those guys. Specialized, best bicycles in the game. 
uh, period, get over and check out their new line of bikes uh, from, from e-bikes to downhill to enduro to cross country. They got the best stuff in the biz. And OGO Power Sports, uh, if you need a bag, a hydration pack, backpack, helmet bag, boot bag, they got it all. And uh, the stuff is bulletproof. So check those guys out. Uh, let's jump into our Method Race Wheels front end chatter. They're bringing you the longest, lightest, strongest, fastest wheels for your truck, van, sprinter, SUV. A couple of topics. Bird, throw your two cents in here. This guy's from South Africa. I'm from Montana. Neither one of us hunt or fish. What the hell happened? <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess. Are we disgracing our home countries? No. First of all, you moved away when you were like. You keep claiming Montana, and I keep thinking you're super cool because you're from Montana, but you moved there when you were like seven or eight or something. Ten. Well, well. And my mom still lives there. I can still claim it. All right. Well, I don't know what happened because I, I probably would end up going back to Montana if I was you. But mm. but if you're happy and you have a family uh, in California, you know, we can't help it where we end up. I'm in, in Oklahoma. Uh, I never dreamed yeah. I'd, I'd end up in Oklahoma, but I love it here. I'm, I'm as happy as I can be. You're here. in a place where the best slogan they could come up for their license plate is Oklahoma is okay. okay. <laughs> it That's is. it? That's I the best you guys could do? I guess. Uh, that was way before I got okay. here. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, that's the cool thing I like about this place. If you want to come and hunt and kill something, you can. But like GL and I just aren't into it. We just like yeah. I'm just not big on killing stuff. I don't know. It's not in me. I enjoyed seeing the deer. <clears throat> that was awesome. Like, yeah, yeah. like driving around and just, it's like spotting game and all that. It was cool. You got a lot of variety out there. I didn't realize. Yeah, and we've done a bunch of different kinds of events. We Just corporate retreats, uh, oil field service companies, pharmaceutical companies. The guys like to come in uh, and be guys, shoot stuff, blow stuff up. And, and you know, ho hogs, hogs are the most popular thing, shooting the hogs, which um, even if you don't like to shoot stuff, hogs are a, a major nuisance and a problem in, in, in a lot of agricultural areas and uh, they they have to be taken care of and this is just a, a way for guys to have fun and take care of them also so it's not all about just killing um, people that harvest deer you know all the meat gets eaten and processed yeah. and, and, and we do something with it so it, it's like it's like all conservation you know you have to take care of the animals well, and so say, they take care of us what i was kind of pleasantly surprised about was to see like how you invest in basically your stock which is which is your deer your animals and all that i mean you know from you almost basically have a an, your own hospital for them and ways to take care of them if there's any diseases or and i thought wow that's pretty cool at least they have a great life as we joke until that point but <laughs> they have a great life yeah i mean they really do yeah. they're not phased by even the gunshots or us driving by they're just chilling. They got food, water, shade. I mean. Yeah, and, and, and I thought it was cool, too. I, so I didn't know this, but you were talking about because you kind of keep uh, um, the better genetic um, specimens in a certain place, you feed them the best food you can, you actually have some with, you know, that yeah. you could never find in the wild. They yeah, just absolutely. Get that There's, you know, it's, we didn't invent the wheel. We're just, and, and we're just doing that to offer what people ask for. Um, like I said, this place is only five and a half years old. Um, we went through a huge remodel two years ago and we were just looking, you know, we tried the big game hunting. We've tried weddings, um, corporate retreats are that f are best fit. It's the a good way to us. put it. Cause I, I could totally see it. Just, just you and the boys just, cause there's so much to do. Well, I mean, you got the biggest bar I've ever seen, the biggest dining room table, <laughs> the biggest TV, and then that movie theater room. Like there's just so much, even just other stuff to, Enjoy well, and so hang out. what we talked about on the way in too. What about bachelor parties? This is the perfect place, man. Because yeah. you're not going to get in trouble. There's no women anywhere around here. <laughs> not well, that I have a full mouthful of teeth anyway. <laughs> and but I don't think you should. Say, I don't think you should be <laughs> saying that one. Did there you not see my wife? Yeah, I did. <laughs> but she she's not coming around here with a bunch of guys. Hey, you no, know the it, to, you know the toothbrush was invented here, right? Hmm. Anywhere else, it like oh, there, everywhere else, it's a teeth brush. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Larry's anyway. heard it before. That's why he's like, "Oh, oh God, yeah, I haven't heard that one." That, I no, like I'm that saying one. it's. This is like a guy's paradise, man. Shoot guns or I dirt agree. bike. Three dirt bike tracks over there. Yeah, you got a bunch of pit bikes. I don't know if you offer those out. Yeah, we, I mean, we can. I'll work with anybody. Yeah, I try to make this. Another thing that I really like is I don't. I try not to ever mix groups. So sure. if you and ten buddies come here, we lock the front gate, and it's your place for the yeah. weekend. Or and uh, you can do whatever you want. It's kind of like Vegas. No one else needs to know. Not that anything crazy goes on, but, you know, so guns right now are a, a confrontational issue. And if at your work, you know, maybe they don't like guns, but 
you want to try it and experience it for yourself, you can come here and shoot and have yeah. fun and get a little bit of education so you can make your own decisions. How, it's Absolutely. how comfortable it is here, too. Inside this lodge is like another level. Yeah, it's super nice. And I think moto fans, if there's moto fans that want to come, the memorabilia you've got, like the jersey <laughs> collection, he's got you got every helmet you ever had, pretty much, right? I mean, You're there's missing a couple, been maybe. some stolen in Europe. Um, I think there's one at Oakley. Um, you know, I gave one to uh, a good friend, Fred Wright, in Washington State uh, last year. Um, so there's some that are, aren't missing, but yeah. I am proud of them. And having a Troy Lee rep here is kind of cool that they got to see it because I think there's 20 or 30 Troy Lee helmets down there. Dude, there's a lot of history. Yeah, it just, cool. Even I looked, and I'm like, I remember that. Yeah, I'll tell I remember you what, that. Yeah. There's a lot of concussions is what there <laughs> sure. is. There's not one of them that's not scratched. <laughs> those helmets weren't great back for a lot of those years, huh? There was a period they looked a lot better than they actually were. Yeah. What would you ask? Because I forgot. Already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That light one. Larry, I'm over here. Your, your eyes yeah. are doing this. That carbon one was ridiculously <laughs> light. It was not even like a helmet. That was like one of the first carbon shell. That was when that was just coming out, right? Yeah, I remember I mean, that. I, mean, I remember, and I probably shouldn't say this, but I remember watching reps take stickers out of legit helmets and put a sticker in that thing because it, right? it, it totally Had wasn't. This was your Honda of Troy days. Yeah. Uh, 96, 97. Was it? Axel, what brand was, what was he in? I believe he wore Cinecella Cinecella. gear. Yeah. What was the helmet? And that's a good question. Oh, okay. I don't know. We'll post a bunch of those if you're following our uh, Whiskey Throttle Show Instagram page. We, we got a bunch of pictures. So There's also pictures of the shop and all the helmets uh, on, on the, at the Stonewood or at, yeah, at, at Stonewood, Stonewood Ranch, Ranch yeah. on yeah. our Instagram as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll send people over there at the end too. And we're going to po post a bunch of stuff on our Instagram. We'll tag them. So. That's basically Larry's account. So if you want to follow Larry Ward, it's <laughs> at Stonewood Ranch. And you'll get, what, like a three-to-one ranch photos to Larry Ward photos? Is that what we're doing? There's a lot more ranch. The <laughs> only, honestly, I mean, I'll be totally honest. Um, I've been gone from racing for 17 years, I think, and I am so thankful for racing. It's I still benefit in my life today from racing. I mean, look at this right here is because of sure. racing. Um, however... I mean, there's only a handful of guys that made enough money to live the rest of their life comfortably without having another career. Yeah. And I, I searched, like a lot of guys, I searched um, for what was next for me. Um, I wish there would have been some sort of plan so that I knew exactly what was next after racing, but it took me a while. And luckily, and a lot because of my motorcycle career is how I ended up here, um, I wasn't qualified for this position. And uh, I've put this all together just because from racing, you know, I have... I'm very dedicated. I never give up. Yeah. I, I want to be successful. I want this place to be perfect. I'm pretty anal. If if you look around, like even uh, you leave a chair out, I scoot it back in. That's my, my wife says I have a problem with that. Yeah, there's <laughs> medication for that, but it's <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm proud of it, and uh, I'm very comfortable here. I'm happy. I have a beautiful wife, beautiful daughter. Um, I can go fishing in the afternoon. I really enjoy as much as I love to hunt. I love raising and taking care of the animals just as much. So it's, I, I just, uh, motorcycle racing has is, is made me happy. And I, I've never, I mean, we all have stress, money, yeah. relationships, this or that. Uh, but because of racing, I, I think I've had a very blessed life. And I'm very thankful. If I always say if I could go back and do my life over and try to do it better, would you take a chance and oh, try to make it better, yeah. or are you comfortable with where you're at? And and I'm I'm it's really I'm really it. comfortable where, yeah. where I'm at. Yeah, knowing that if you made that difference early on, it would could change. I, I might have been I might have won a championship, or I might have won more races, but it, it could go the other way yeah. too. And in, in, in injury, as you know, you you were riddled with injuries. Um, anything can happen. So to be able to say I have, I think. I was told at one time the second most main events in history, counting everything motocross and nationals. Um, and, and just to have the people, I went to Dallas Supercross this year just to say hi and actually try to promote. Uh, what, what I tried to do was go to all the factory teams and try to create a picture of what can happen here with the food and, and the shooting and the, and the camaraderie so that mechanics, truck drivers, team managers, riders could all come here at the end of the year. Um, and I, I actually got a lot of positive feedback. However, the coronavirus probably set that back because everybody's schedules are so messed up. But, you know, I'd see. You planted the seed. I see. Least, yeah. I, I could not walk 50 yards without running into somebody that I knew or that knew me. And uh, it did make me feel really, really good that I was remembered because I, I'm a very humble guy. Yeah, I'm thankful I won some races, but 
there's guys who who did a lot more than me, but it's it's pretty cool that uh, I got to be around for that long. And the older I get, the more I realize that my longevity was was kind of special. Um, Mike yeah. LaRocco was probably the only other one. Chad Reed's amazing right now. How how long he's going? But it's you guys know it's the stress. Um, I've heard Villapoto talk about when you're that next level above me, the elite. Then the pressure of if you don't win, you're embarrassed and people yeah, are yeah. down on you. And I think Ricky, I think Ricky kind of went through that Experience too, where. That, yeah. Uh, he saw James coming, and he's like, "Oh no, what if I get second? The pressure I, to not I've never got second yeah. before, you know. The pressure to not lose was more than the pressure. Way of worse than the pressure to to go out and win, you know. Right. So, so I was, I fought. I I had success early when I was 19 years old, and then I, I struggled for three or four years until I finally got a little bit matured and got a little bit better equipment. And uh, no lean, my no lean years, Clark Jones helped me a lot get back on the right track. And then, you know, I, I put together seven or, or so more real consistent decent years that i'm happy with you know yeah. like i said you always look back oh i could have done sure. this or i wish i'd done that everyone but, does but I'm i think I'm, it's human nature but i'm fine I'm, I'm i'm happy and it's led to a lot of other stuff and this place is great it's you, it's, s- you seem happy even just when we hang hang around like we've gotten to know each other a little bit more i think when you're away from the racetrack like your personality and, and the way you are, it's been pretty funny just sitting back and watching the whole di- dynamic. And and with other riders, I've seen that where it's different. You almost feel like you're talking to them, you can tell that they're a little lost. Like you, you yeah. said to Larry, you love being here. Like this is your well, no, place. Look, just just knowing how much you loved hunting throughout your whole race. I remember you telling me about what is it, the Boone and Crockett scale or whatever. <laughs> I remember, was that what it's called? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Is that my yeah, wrong? Yeah, that that is. A, you a told me about that during the racing right, when we we were both racing, and I'd laugh like this guy, man. He's so into hunting; it's so funny, you know. <laughs> you love it, and then so to to see you now, and like you said, you you wandered a little bit to find this, but like, I'm just so stoked. This is like dream job. I can think of a guy like had this long career, really no injuries, a couple collarbones or some pussy shit. That's all you ever had, like, you know what I mean? Like that's awesome, dude. You made good money. You did awesome. You had this great career. No injuries, you know. You maybe you wander a little bit to figure it out, and then you land here. Like, yeah, dude, well, I'm lucky. Uh, you're living the dream, man. W- and motocross helped me with this because the owners, the Folkerts out of Michigan, that that own this place and funded the whole whole thing. Uh, their son and John himself both really enjoy racing motorcycles, and uh, so it definitely helped that sure. that I could I could still ride a little bit. Yeah, so it opens doors, and we we tell this to guys all the time. We're talking about life after racing, and Man, if you just apply the same principles that that sure. got you the success in motocross to whatever else your new passion is, find whatever else you're passionate about, and apply the same shit, and you'll 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 find success there too, you know. And yeah, you've done. And, so I, I love it. Well, thank you. It. And I was lucky enough to, you know, I didn't make, I wasn't super rich when I retired, but I was comfortable, so I could find something like this that I wanted to do as a job, not I had to do sure. as a job. Which, for me. There's a big difference. There's a big difference because yeah. because I, I spend way more time here and way more hours and I'm, and way more methodical and think harder and, and work harder here than I would at a job that I had to be at. I yeah. do it here because it's it's like even the owner the other day gave me a compliment and called this my baby, um, which made me feel good because you know I think he kind of appreciates. He knows it. you're vested. He, in he knows my yeah. life is invested in it, just like just like our lives are yeah. invested in racing. Yeah. Same way. Um, Okay, so next question for the Method Race Hills front end chatter. I wanted something I want to talk about is underrated riders. And I think when you have that conversation, you got to be top of the list. I mean, people people obviously know you, your name, but like I, I think if they were to look at your stats, like we talked about at breakfast this morning, 17 pro years? How, how many years did I say he raced? A, 80, a lot. <laughs> 80, 87 to 03, right? Yeah, I think, I think it, that's right. And in all those years, you only had three championship runs, indoors or out, that were outside the top ten in your overall finish. That's, that's consistency. That's wild. Yeah. So, And some of those, like you said, those might have been when you came into the 125 class halfway through the series, right. you know, back when motocross was split into 250 and 500 and the 125. And I rode for Suzuki, who didn't have a 500, so I'd ride 250 nationals and then drop down and ride yeah. 125 in the last couple of nationals. Hey, not just, just to mention that, but how many different guys he's – ridden with throughout those yeah. basically three decades because yeah. you because you started in you know, started in the 80s and finished in the 2000s yeah, yeah I mean, so so on the first part of the question um i had a problem <laughs> and i wish i could have fixed it i would have been a lot better but i could be one shock spring away from being great or being horrible 
Um, so I might start a year 14, 12, 13, and then make one change and go two, two, three the next three weekends in a row and be back in, you know, the top 10. So yeah. um, I was – there were certain tracks and certain soil that I was really good at, and there was other ones that I was really bad at. And I always tried to improve on my worst. Um, so that I think that has explained some of the – you can call it I was very consistent, but it was also inconsistent. Cause, but, I mean, I had some runs. I finished second, third, fourth, and fifth in Supercross Championship, which, uh, you know, you, you, I'm missing one, which yeah. is <laughs> at the time, Jeremy was pretty damn good uh, and was yeah. pretty much, I mean, he was amazing. So, um, and based talking about the un, being underrated, I, I don't feel that way. I think, uh, you know, Racer X and some different uh, – avenues in motocross they, they they i still get to see my name a lot even 20 years yeah. later 30 years later i still get to see my name a lot and it makes me feel believe me the older i get the better i feel when i see my name yeah. I- still yeah, so sure. but anytime you don't win a championship you're right. kind of like excluded from this conversation of great racers right and i don't think that's i don't think that's fair there's very few champions you know well, there's a I lot mean, of other racers that are great uh we, we were talking about some other underrated guys like maybe albie even though he won one championship here he was way better, I think, than what he showed here. He was uh, injured a lot. You mentioned Tortelli. Well, Tortelli had the world titles, but when he came over, he had the speed. But same thing. I think he never – and then when he was doing pretty good, he battled with Ricky. I mean, he's beaten yeah. Ricky, I, I mean, he, one of very few. He had days when he was, was could, better than Ricky, be actually. And that's, uh, that's hard for me to say because Ricky is – I mean, not, especially on a motocross track, is – I've ridden with everybody fr- in the world, and – he was James maybe had the speed, but Ricky and a whole race is um, unbelievable. Yeah, the I mean, whole package. I mean, it, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, his numbers are too. But, but you, yeah. You ask about guys that I got to race with, and that's something else I'm very proud of and thankful for is I raced with Johnny O'Mara, uh, Rick Johnson, Jeff Ward. Um, Chicken, Bale, well, Cooper. <laughs> yeah, Guy uh, Cooper. Some, I'm trying to think of some of the older guys. Um but then all through the Jeremy McGrath Bradshaw. and the Damon Bradshaw. My rookie year was in the top class, 1990, was Bradshaw, Kudrowski, LaRocco, Matasevich, and myself all came into the big bike class. And all I think everybody but I think everybody won races that year, which is unheard of. Five rookies winning, winning races. That's, that's is a, that right? That's a strong class. I, I may be wrong. I know Bradshaw, of course. Um, I think Kudrowski may be Daytona. I think. I think most of us won races, yeah. or if not, did shortly thereafter. Um, so that was a strong group to race with all those years. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Washugal 02, one, that won the first moto. Mm-hmm. Um, the little smarty pants trophy girl reminded me at the podium that James Stewart was 16 and I was 32. I was twice his age. But I got to battle with James. Uh, I, I've told this story before. People have heard it. But um, for those that haven't, on the, on the podium after the first moto, uh, they asked. They were talking to it about with James Stewart, and he said the old man got me. <laughs> and I never. I mean, that's James Stewart. Now you think he's top five, one of the one of the best guys yeah. ever in the sport. And for him to even mention me, it's, it makes me feel good. And then oh, yeah. another thing on the underrated, uh, Jeremy McGrath. I don't know if it was on your show or a different show here recently. I had a b- couple people call me and. He was asked who he thought the most underrated racer that he'd ever been around or raced with was, and he actually said me, and uh, it blew me away. Uh, <laughs> it's hard for me to believe that. Jeremy McGrath's the best ever, and I'm just a humble guy that comes to work every day and uh, made me feel good. I actually sent him a text and thanked him, and we've kind of yeah. kept, kept a little bit of communication ever since. So it's been, it's been great. It's been really good. Well, I don't think there's any arguing that, man. Just looking at your stats, uh, you've got some other records that we'll get into. but Yeah, in, in the U.S., as far as that goes like even just certain rides you know or getting you know multi-year deals with the big money like you you were there but i feel like just kind of flew under the radar just a little bit as far as that goes and we've seen that with a couple of people we were talking a little bit earlier they were even like in europe i think like yves de Marier was someone that we said you know one races was always there or thereabouts but you know now that it's retired people don't bring that up a whole lot or even um pit Byra. You know, everyone talks about him as what he's done at KTM, but as a racer, he was third or second in the World Championship many, many mm-hmm. times, but he was behind Everts or Kurt somebody Nichol. like that. I would throw Kurt Nickel in that yeah. under, underrated guys because he never won a title. But damn it, he was second and third Five, a lot, you know. Six times, I think. So th- this sport, yeah. and this isn't a cut on the sport, it's, it's reality. Um, it's really 
there's a lot of what have you done for me lately. <laughs> yeah. And you can win one weekend and you're eating dinner and getting free stuff and you can get literally a fourth or a fifth the next weekend and it's what's wrong, you suck, you don't train, you don't do this, you're not committed. And I'm like, I got fourth. I was still the fourth best guy in the world tonight. Um, so I, sometimes when, you know, everybody has little roller coasters when they think, yeah, I did really good, and other times, oh, I suck. So I always tell myself, and, and you guys, you, you're, you want to be a good example, but if, you, if we were professional golfers for 16 years and I was in the top 10 in the world for 16 years being a professional golfer, I probably wouldn't be a, a, You'd own this a, a ranch bitch. I call myself the ranch bitch here, but I probably wouldn't be still working. And that I, I, sport is far less dangerous <laughs> than this sport. Well, that, that's true. And, Depends and I, who you golf with. But far more popular. <laughs> but far more popular. That's, and therein lies the problem. Yeah. And, and the, on the injury part of it, I was always a little smarter, and I was always, like I said, if I was comfortable, I would hang it out and go for it, and I, I, I could be pretty good, but... You know, every year you got to change bikes and change front forks and change this and change that. And uh, I, I struggle with that at times. So the years when I'd stay at one team for more than one year, I seem to have a lot more success. So. Mm. Yeah, you build momentum. <sighs> well, that's awesome. That's our Method Race Wheels front end chatter. Uh, I want to remind people to get over to whiskeythrottleshow.com. Check out our website. Uh, we've got a bunch of photos of all our guests, including Larry, that will go under his podcast. You can scroll through those. Some really cool stuff from his team green days back in the... <laughs> Late seventies, early eighties, the first team green rider, rider right? Uh, the first I, I, team green group. I don't, I, I don't think that's true. I, I, but um, I was an early team green rider, but I don't believe I was. I, I definitely wasn't the first. Or was one. it pretty damn early in that program? Yeah. Well, because when, when I rode, when, I think I believe my dad brought home a KX eighty, and I don't know if it was seventy eight, but it was it was the first year Kawasaki made the eighty. So uh, I remember having a Kawasaki eighty when I was very very young. <laughs> yeah. They had one in ni- in seventy nine. I know for a fact. Then maybe that's when I got it. Yeah, steel tank. Because I, I had a YZ eighty uh, before that. It's steel tank. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was the first year they made them. There's some great photos again on our Instagram um, of you on the eighty that had the number plates into the rear fender. What do we say that was eighty one or eighty two? I think somewhere eighty one. Eighty two. Oh yeah. I uh, even, uh, yeah, those were like the 81s. Yeah, yeah, it was like around the 81 model. You've got one in your shop, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. I even gave you... The one we have is 81. Okay. So. I even gave you some pictures uh, with my mom and me on a little 73 MR50. Yeah. And uh, Honda MRs. MR50. And then at Rio Bravo, before Ponca City in 77, I raced in uh, Rio Bravo, Houston, Texas. And there's a picture of me on an Italia jet. Uh, so, so my mom dug up some pretty cool old stuff. So. Italia That's jet. Crazy. And you're 50, right? And you say you just turned yeah, 50? Yeah, I just turned 50. And I, it's hard for me to believe. I don't know where, where time goes, especially the last 20 years. But, uh, but I have a five-year-old little girl that's about to turn six. And that's, it, it makes me still feel young. And yeah. my wife's quite a bit younger than me. And uh, so I, I don't feel 50. I, I hope I don't look 50. But uh, Dude, you look like you just stay in the gym all day. The first <laughs> thing when I saw you, I'm like, holy shit. Yeah, when you came to the door, I'm like, whoa, he's beefed up. <laughs> Big well, bird, du- big bird, doubled up. Yeah, I was a bit uh, anorexic and a little, a little narrow when I raced. So yeah, you were saying you were one seventy when you were racing. Yeah, I remember towards the end, like one seventy eight to one eighty two. But when probably, probably yeah, one seventy, one sixty eight, one yeah, maybe even lighter than that on one twenty five. Huh? Yeah, and I was, I mean, I was six two and a. I was, I was skinny, and, and I didn't know anything about nutrition. Well, that's so that's what I, I weighed when I raced, and I, I was 5'9". <laughs> yeah, and, and, but I didn't know anything about nutrition, training, everything I did. I, I wanted, and it's probably backwards. Uh, in hindsight, of course, it's backwards, but I wanted to do it myself. I wanted to race and win myself. I didn't want to win because this trainer told me to eat this, or this guy told me to do that. I, I, I like to ride a motorcycle, and I want to try to do it myself. Now, later on in when I got a little bit smarter and older and, and the sport evolved, then, yeah. then I learned some of the stuff you have to do, but still, uh, I've never had much of an, I'm never that hungry. I don't have that much of an appetite. So it was as much as calories as we burn when we're riding and training, it, it was hard for me to keep weight on. Well, yeah. And you always, you were living in uh, South Carolina for a lot of your career. And when it's, I find when it's hot and sticky, I don't want to eat. Well, that was my, that was my choice. Um, Early, early on in, in 125 days, like my, one of my first nationals I went to was uh, in Texas, and it was super, super hot. And I was like top five fast enough, but at 20 minutes, I was done, he, overheated. And uh, I learned real quick, I needed to learn, 
I need to live somewhere that was hot and miserable. Yeah. And South Carolina is hot and miserable. And I did get better. Um, you know, was I the best guy in hot condition? By far, no. But I got I did improve through the years, and yeah. I got better on really really hot days. I watched a awesome video. I believe ninety seven. Uh, Kenworthy's Emig and me second moto and afterwards you can see we both are down about 140 pounds and we were skinny and everybody vapored that day but uh, but but I learned I learned to deal with it yeah, yeah living in it makes it way better uh, way easier to deal with yeah. um, hey uh, so also on our website I want to just tell you to get over and pick up some merchandise uh, brand new Mike Metzger t-shirt that's out these are our factory tees got a bunch of different colors so whatever bike you ride you can match it up also, Mad Skills Motocross 3 coming out soon. Uh, they're beta testing that. It's going to be really cool, so check that out. Uh, should be available here in the next month or so. And uh, let's get into it, man. Uh, let's go back to the beginning with you, Larry. Like, Snohomish, Washington? Yep. I always thought that was the weirdest name when I was a kid, but I always remembered it. I remember hearing that from when you first started racing. Snohomish, Washington. Hmm. What was it like up there? Ha! Ah, I mean, we lived out in the country. My my dad and mom had ten acres. Uh, I just put it around them. Little MR50 and a little YZ80. Um, and did, did dad, dad did dad race yeah. or something or how? how did yeah, you? my uncle my uncle raced more. Okay. Um, but my dad dabbled in it. He he raced a little bit. Um, and they thought it was cute because at three years old they could hold me up and 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 I'd take off no training wheels. You know, just hold me up. And when uh, it was time to stop i'd hey you know i'd go by him and yell at him and then he'd catch me and it was so cute that a little three-year-old boy now you'd probably go to jail for letting your three-year-old ride a bike but <laughs> back then it was cute um and when i was six years old my mom and dad took me to a little just a little like gravel pit track in everett washington and uh i, I did pretty pretty good I, I showed you guys the trophy i showed yeah, you guys uh -huh. my very first trophy from 1976 and it just you guys know how it goes. Then 30 years goes by, <laughs> and uh, you've gone through racing. But we just started racing once a month, and then there was a little flat track uh, 10 miles from the house we'd do on Friday night, and then started racing motocross on Saturday, and it just, just kept getting bigger and bigger. And then, you know, coming from the Northwest, it, it is a little bit smaller racing community. Sure. It's, it's a tight. It's, they have an unbelievable strong, but, but it's smaller than nationwide. Um, but I was lucky enough to be one of the better kids that you know six-year-old seven-year-old kids so we went to rio bravo and I, I think i finished fifth my first ever amateur national what was that amateur national was it so, it so it was the nma it was the nm it was ponca city but before ponca city okay that was at rio bravo in houston texas huh, okay nma grand national championship yeah um and then of course and you so the first time you went was when you were six is that what you said yeah, so it, was 19, it was 1976. I don't know what time of the year, but I was probably six. It was probably later in the year. Yeah. So six years Damn, old. you're pretty young for... So you guys were doing amateur nationals pretty early. Yeah. Yeah, so... And then my mom and dad got real involved. You know, then they became the... They ran some of the NMA qualifiers in, in the Northwest, and we just started racing more and more. Oh, and they more. got really involved. Yeah, really involved. Did you have any brothers or sisters? Or yeah, I have, I have one sister. She's a year younger than I am. Okay. Uh, She's still in Washington State. She's a vet tech and has three kids. Uh, one's graduated from college, super smart, beautiful girl. Um, the other one's still in college, and the youngest one's in high school. Great, great, big, all all strong, healthy, beautiful kids. And uh, But they're still in Washington State. Yeah. You get up to see them very much? Uh, not very often. No? No. Uh, so... I love my sister, but I was the golden child, and everything was for me. And and uh, so, I she she loves me, I think, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> she loves me, I think. <laughs> well, as long as you think that, that's all that matters. <laughs> well, we've had this conversation with the other guy. I mean, you have a younger sister. I've got it was a, a little bit the same. In I've got an family. older sister, but like, man, they definitely got was shafted. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah stick I agree. Times, yeah, I agree. Hey, so. I got I got an event this weekend. Yeah, but we got a national. <laughs> yeah, my sister wanted so, a horse, and my dad's like, "No, we're going racing." You know, like. Well, for me, my mom and dad divorced in the fourth grade. Uh, when I was in the fourth grade, they they divorced, and my dad was really good about. So I went racing with my mom and stepfather after that, and my dad was really good about taking care of my sister and supporting her softball and and snow skiing and volleyball and and everything that she did. So she she had a lot of she had a a lot of opportunities too. She, she went to the University of Washington, and she she's a smart girl. She's had she had a good life. Hmm. 
So your real dad didn't, he wasn't really involved with racing too much? Not, not, uh, he got me started about my first bike, but after that, uh, yeah, that's interesting. after fourth grade, it was all my mom. And then my mom remarried, uh, Harry, Harry balls at like, uh, Ricky and Ernesto know him or call him. Um, and he's been around the sport. So he drove uh, a motorhome for Kevin Wyndham, a straight truck for LaRocco. And he, he's been around the industry okay. a lot. Okay. Yeah, cool. It sounds like you're pretty close to your mom. She's moving out here and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. my mom's That's cool. great. My mom's uh, never, even my stepdad, are all, oh, Larry's the best. Oh, Larry can do no wrong. She's always been my biggest fan. She even, you know, drug me to all the nationals, all the amateur races, would wash the bikes and all the laundry before I'd get home from school on Monday. And then That's we'd cool. tear the plastic off and Harry would, you know, change a piston or, or a clutch or whatever needed done that week. But my, it, my mom was... <coughs> The one that was uh, always got me there and always made sure I kept going. And then even after I, I was a pro and, and uh, you know, the first year I went to Japan, my mom went with me. So she, she was, and she still, she worked for Sam Gammon, Victory Sports, all the, uh, like, um, Muddy Creek, Tennessee, all the big oh, amateur yeah. nationals in the okay. southeast. And uh, I think she worked there for 20 years just because she was still waiting for somebody to say, hey, you're Larry Ward's mom. And so she could go on and, and twist their <laughs> ear for an hour about, yeah, I am. Oh, you want to hear all about him? Look at these uh, pictures I, I have of Larry. Just <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's so, funny. and now it's my daughter because my daughter's a little L Larry Jr. So now it's all, now, and she can't stay away from my daughter. So yeah, they're, they're, they're coming here. That's and, cool. and I'm settled here now. You know, I've been here five and a half years and we've gone through some ups and downs and, uh, not not with the owners now, but we had a, a partner in the, in the beginning, and, and there was some stressful times. But everything's settled now. This place is going really good. It's it's got momentum. Uh, it's it's almost finished. I mean, it's turned out fabulous. So yeah, my mom's coming. Will here. it ever be finished though? I feel like on these <laughs> sort of pr projects, it never ends. Yeah, that's true. But but thankfully, John and Melinda Folker, uh, they support it. They love it, um, and. We, definitely the goal is to make money and but for me the more money the ranch makes the more money I, the better i can take care of the staff sure. and, mm -hmm. and everybody in which it's, it's all local people and they're good people and i want you know tr do the best we can to take care of our, the people that take care of us yeah uh sure so, so we talked earlier about some of the guys up in the northwest because from montana i was popping over and doing these races the yamaha gold cup at washugo and uh, I raced, like I told you, at a place called Mulkey Park yep. in McMinnville, Oregon. Yep, McMinnville, Oregon. That was rad. And there was a place in Idaho called... Uh, Sandpoint? No, I raced there too, but there was a place called the Fossil Bowl. Mm. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? It was rad. I don't remember the Fossil Bowl, but <laughs> I remember... That uh, sounds like a race coming up for us. <laughs> but did Fossil you have, Bowl. <laughs> a whole bunch of vet riders. Did you have a race at... Uh, Clarkia. It was called oh, okay. Clarkia. Yeah, I raced at Clarkia. Yeah. Had that big downhill well, with like markers. To there see was one actually jump. in Boise at the uh, Oahe Club oh, or yeah. something that had oh, this big, OMC. gnarly, sandy downhill yeah. that was suicide downhill or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There was great tracks. And I, I just remember um, uh, Butch Smith, Rick Simmett. So Butch Smith was a little younger than me. Yeah, he was more my age. Yep. But Ricky Simmett, Lowell Thompson. Yeah, Lowell Thompson. Lowell Thompson was probably the most talented, the best. Um, I, I don't know what happened to Lowell. I've, you know, you hear rumors, but uh, there was a kid named Stevie Oster that was pretty good. Um, you know, th there was there was quite a few young kids. I, I remember uh, pretty competitive classes on 80s, but, you know, luckily, I don't know if it was my mom and Harry having me a little better equipment or if I just had talent or what, because I, I was a skinny kid. I couldn't make a junior high football team or basketball team. I was just a skinny little kid, but I could, I, for some reason, I could ride a dirt bike. Yeah. Yeah, it, it seems like it came naturally to you a little bit because, or maybe you just started riding so young at three, it was just sort of a natural yeah. feeling for you. But, but, but I had a good time growing up there wash, in Washington racing. Uh, I, I really miss it. I've actually been in contact with Ted Duvall, D Duvall Engineering lately, and uh, I'm going to do everything in my power to get, they have a big race at Washougal every year, and I'm, I'm going to do all I can to get up there this year. Which one is that? Uh, I should be more educated on that, and he's uh, probably going to kill me, but... Uh, but it's at Washougal, and I, th I think it's something a cup, something cup. Okay. It, it's not the dream race, the 125. No, it's after the national. They had a, I think last year was after the nationals. Okay. Like around that so, time. So cool. I'd, love, I'd love to get up there. Uh, you know, they want to do a thing, a bonfire thing. People can talk and, and, and just hang out, and yeah, uh, which, which would be fun. It'd be fun. That's right. But, but I remember at, not so much on 80s, but when I, when I was 15, 16, and I turned – was riding 125 and, and turned pro, and I remember racing against 
childhood heroes like Phil Larson and Mikey Larson. Uh, there was a guy named Jimmy Anderson who I think still has a training facility somewhere uh, down south now, but I, I thought he was the the best, and I always rooted for him. He was so fast, and you, you talked about McMinnville and Mulkey Park, and when I was 15 years old, I, I won my first pro, and there was there was a Gold Cup series in Washington State, and there'd be 30 pros in both classes. Like, it was stacked. Yeah. And I remember 15 years old, I, I actually beat Jimmy Anderson. He was right on my butt, but I beat him, and t uh, Mikey Larson was third, and, like, I thought I thought really – you made it. That was almost like winning a Supercross because I was a little kid, and then I, and I beat Jimmy Anderson. I thought I was really good. Now, they both – both of those guys, I got third second moto. They both smoked me second moto, yeah. but – but that, I remember that part, that track. It was, it was. So those fun. were the local guys you looked up to. Yep. Was there pro guys at the time that you well idolized? I mean, who, who yeah. would have been the guys at that time? Hannah. Well, um, I remember Mark Barnett uh, one year at Seattle Supercross. Had, he had a Kawasaki with an orange seat. That was super cool. Okay. Um, <laughs> but 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 for me, Jeff Ward because of my name. You know, I was Larry Ward, Jeff Ward. He was Wardy. I even when I was first truck I ever had had Wardy on the license plate because uh, <laughs> was I, it a mini truck I, I, yeah, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean I, I idolized the guy because he was Jeff Ward and I, you know I wanted to be like him and then actually I talked to him at Dallas about this it's kind of well, you funny. look like him I mean you have the same oh, body yeah, structure yeah, similar yeah. riding style <laughs> yeah so uh, we're, we're twins uh, yeah I think uh, he's Danny DeVito <laughs> <and> <laughs> yeah I was gonna say <laughs> <laughs> he probably wouldn't like that uh but I talked to him about it this year that, man, I said, I grew up idolizing you and loving you, and you were the best. And uh, I, want, I even had a helmet. I showed you a helmet painted like yeah. his today. Um, and then in 1990, my first year in the big class, he was teammates with Chicken, who I, I'm sure people realize Chicken and I had some run-ins like almost everybody else did with Chicken. And, but Jeff Ward was his buddy and his teammate, and, uh, and uh, they were, he was teasing how, yeah, we ganged up on you. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't like you very much then after I idolized you my whole life. But, but you know, time passes, and yeah. he's still Jeff Ward. He's still one of my biggest heroes. So, but Ricky Johnson, um, I wasn't like some of the guys that Ricky Johnson was God, but Ricky Johnson was unbelievable. Uh, I got to well, see you also had to race with him as well. And I think – Correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't it also seem different when you then line up with someone? I feel like that pedestal gets brought down a little bit. Well, I, for me, it made my first win for me that much better because yeah. Ricky Johnson and Jeff Ward and Johnny O'Mara and in the John race. Michelle Bale, Jeff Stanton. Jeez. I mean, there was a lot of good guys in my first win. So that makes it that much more special. Dude, um, that's gnarly. But, but Ricky that's Johnson, in his defense – that was after he got hurt in 89. So, still. so it was after uh, his injury. So You just mentioned a lot of big names. Was he there. on the track? Abs or he whole shot it. That's he all I'm asking. Yeah. So you passed him. Well, yeah, but he he wasn't the Ricky Johnson. He was a one one handed Ricky Johnson. But still, beating a one handed Ricky Johnson is pretty yeah. good. So um, Mike Bell. I got to see Mike Bell win in Seattle yeah. when I was a little kid. You have like, a picture. You showed me a picture of you and Magoo. Did you like Magoo? A yeah, lot? so Magoo. No, I mean. Of course, everybody likes Magoo, but he was a Northern California guy, and he came up to a race in Washington, uh, and so I got to see him there, and I was a little kid, and of course, any pro you want to you wanna yeah. idolize. Yeah. I, I, you got to understand, I, I was a little six to ten-year-old kid sneaking in the kingdom to get in the pit area for, to see these guys. Like, I was a, a diehard fan when I was a little kid. That's, yeah. My mom said when I'd fall asleep on the way home from Supercross, my, my hand kept moving, you know, like, <laughs> like doing the throttle and stuff. twitch. So, That's uh, funny. Uh, um, I mean, there was – That's uh, Jeff Ward was the big one for me. Yeah. I, I, Ron Lachine, I always liked his uh, style and his gear was always perfect. Uh, but – and this isn't a crack on him, but my parents did use him as an example to, you know, stay on the straight and narrow, don't don't drink and don't do this. To, they, they brainwashed me use, using some examples like that yeah. to uh, – that you can you can shorten your career by yeah. – if you get, go down the wrong path. That's oh, not brainwashing. It's pointing out, uh, you know. Well, I love Ronnie, and I still text him a lot. So I, I don't want to be like I'm picking on him, but uh, but it's just reality. That's that's what my parents did. Yeah, I mean, he knows it as well. I mean, he knows it was that part. But you know, the cool thing is, you see Dogger now, and you're like, well, he's, that's he's the great pulled thing. his things yeah. back together. Like, you look at someone, you're like, oh, we're not looking at a hot mess. It's like. Yeah, he's got his shit together. Like, he really does these well, days. And, and we've asked, we've talked to Ronnie about coming on the show, and he's like, eh, nah, not right now. You know, he's always kind of, you can just tell he doesn't want to go through it. 
right. you know, we'll rehash it. And it's like, man, you're, first of all, don't be embarrassed of your past. It is what it is. We all made mistakes. Some of them maybe didn't get out as much as his did. But, like, the bottom line is his story ends yeah, it's well. It's not like it's that bad. If he wouldn't have been as good as he was, his story might not have been as loud either. There's yeah. other guys that have had the same problems he did. Yeah. And uh, just Keith, he was, Keith Bowen, but he wasn't quite as good, you know. So uh, there's other guys, I think, that have had problems. So, But, but yeah. hey, he's a super cool guy. He'd do yeah. anything for you. Um, yeah. And, I mean, I think he's – most people's one of most people's favorite. Yeah, for I, sure. I showed you guys all my jerseys today, and I have Bob Hanna jerseys and Pastrana and Carmichael, and the Ron Lachine one is is is, one is my favorite yeah. for sure. Um, so why did you move out of Snohomish and when? So I actually graduated from public high school. Um, I had like fifty some absences my senior year. I, I was <laughs> racing. I mean, I got third at Southwick my senior year, at, and I was racing full blown nationals. Um, my mom. I'm not going to lie, probably should have gotten her second uh, diploma because she did a lot of my homework. Uh. <laughs> so, um, but the day I, I graduated, I went, I remember going to, uh, I, I had signed a deal to ride for factory Honda. Your senior year? Yeah. I, I call it factory Honda, but it, it, it was, the big bikes were like uh, Ricky Johnson, uh, Jeff Stanton, I think Bale came over that year, and then Kudrowski and I. Uh, and Cooper was on the team because he was a really good 125 guy. And Kudrowski and I were considered factory Honda riders, but we were mainly to ride 125 Outdoor Nationals and East and West Supercross. Hey, um, do you remember how much you made your senior year in high school? Well, I remember my mom having to talk with the principal, and, and she kept pointing out that I make like three times more money than any teacher in the <laughs> school. So, so y'all are either going to help us with this, or he's just going to quit. That probably went down like a lead balloon. Yeah, that didn't probably go too good. <laughs> but, um, but I graduated from public high school, and I went to the twenty the overnight thing at some fitness club with my senior class, and I loaded up my truck and drove to California. The very next day, I stopped and had lunch with my dad. And drove to California, and I've never lived in Washington since. So oh, is that right? I got wow. I got my little mini, my little truck, and I drove Put to California. Put your Sir Mix a Lot tape and just like pumped it all the way yeah, down. Yeah, I, I don't I don't even think that was current yet, but oh yeah, uh, but, <laughs> before that, <laughs> yeah, this was eighty seven, eighty eight, nineteen eighty eight, eighty eight, yep, eighty eight. So when I drove to Southern California, I, I've never I've never lived there again. So I lived in Southern California pretty much through my whole career. Um, oh, where were you living? October through April, May. Um, I lived in, sometimes I, I stay with my buddy, uh, Lewis Wellen, who has torch sunglasses now. He, he, he was my Oakley rep for years and years and years Okay. Um, in Laguna Niguel. And then it was quite a, quite a drive out to the test tracks, but it, yeah. it was really comfortable when I got home. A couple of years, I had an apartment in Corona. Um, when I was at Nolene, I'd stay at Clark and Lois's house. They had a house up in... Uh, Victorville? Yeah, Victorville, Apple Valley. Yeah. I, I stayed there a couple of years at Nolene. So, um, you know, just for testing and getting ready in the first couple of races, it, it, fans, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, if you ride, the first time you, if you've been in South Carolina riding a little bit softer dirt, the first time you get to California and you ride a lap, you're, I mean, your hands blister more, y your lungs burn the first time you so get, dry, yeah, yeah. Your, your lungs burn, uh, the hard clay squares, it just feels like you've never ridden before, mm -hmm. but you, you ride on that every day for three or four weeks and then it, it's normal and, and it feels good. So, so I you, always try to. So you to had a place in South Carolina then right away for the winter, summertime. Yes. And you'd yes. be in Cali. And, and uh, so I was lucky enough, a, a kid named Hammer and Hank Maury, his dad had some money and property and he split, uh, it was his property, but he, him and I both paid for half of a supercross track and John Savitsky, Stadium Dirt Designs, which used to build Supercross tracks, came and built me a really, really nice track. Um, and then they had Camp Coker, which is still a GNCC uh, facility now. Okay. Um, so we had that for an outdoor track. And Hank was aspiring. You know, he was, he was re really good. Really good amateur. Didn't his dad, did his bars competition or his, his bikes were done by them or something? I remember bars competition was a big East Coast. Yeah, well, bar bars did my uh, Yamaha 125s. Damon Bradshaw and my Yamaha 125s in... Uh, 87 and 88 and, and i remember other than a, a bog when you land off big jumps which was inevitable in a I was 125 say, pretty days, common uh my bikes were fast I, I remember getting a fifth at lake sugar tree in like 86 or 87 and i mean so i was i was okay uh hmm. 
you know, I always I had I had enough speed. What happened to Hank? Why didn't he? Why didn't he ever? I, I, I don't. Know. I mean, I know what happened. I know where he's at, and and uh, you know his his daddy and ha- had real successful businesses, and uh, Hank's still around. He, uh, as far as racing though, just didn't make the my, jump. My opinion, and this isn't a put down on him or, or any other kid, but um, it's just just what my opinion. Sometimes um, the kids who have the big motor home and the fancy trailers and the full-time mechanic and the best of the best stuff that when they're amateurs, especially back in those days, a little bit better equipment made, made them a little yeah. bit better. They look better on when, paper, basically. And then when you get to 125 uh, Supercross and everybody's got the same equipment and stuff, um, it has to be frustrating, always being a little faster. Your bike's always being a little better. Now everybody's just as fast, and you're like, well, "Why used to smoke that guy? Why is he keeping up with me?" And uh, I, I just think, you know, and, and injuries. The, the poor kid got hurt a lot. So yeah. I, I don't, I don't. And this was a long time ago too, so I don't remember everything. But yeah. I still keep in touch with him. You know, do you texting twice a year, maybe? Yeah. So so v- very slim. But uh, Paul Dennis passed away this year, and uh, we were. Hank, Paul, and I were three of the original amateur Team USA, Team Green Team, um, another kid named Dickie Blora, and we went to England in 82. Uh, so Hank and I reached out to each other when Paul passed away. That was that was pretty cool. Hmm. That's cool you guys keep in touch. He, so is he working for Dad's business then? I, I think, yeah, he has something to yeah. do with, with, with his dad's. I think he does a different angle, a security side of something or something. But but okay. he's got he's married and has a beautiful wife and a couple yeah. kids, and, and I think he's doing fine. Good for him. What about Lowell Thompson or Rick Simmett? You ever? I don't. I've don't. I've never heard from any of those guys. Yeah. Um, I don't Scott, know. Scott Brown. We were talking about him earlier. Well, Scott too. Brown was a Southern California kid. Like with Kyle, him and Kyle Lewis grew up together. But he was in your era, right? Absolutely, and he yeah. was a super fast guy. Uh, you know, there was the group of that, that some of the boys passed away or got got killed yeah. in a train wreck at Bruce Bunch, Rick Kimmy, Kyle Fleming, Fleming yeah. um, that were really good and just a little older than us. And then Scott Brown, uh, Kyle Lewis. Kyle Lewis was super fast amateur racer uh, and a good 125 lights rider, too. He's another underrated guy. Yeah, and he put in some decent outdoor national. When him and I were at Moto Triple X in in the 2000s, I mean, we were there at least. At least you knew there. We both had some top five finishes, which was was respectable. Japanese national champ, ultra cross champ. I think one of the youngest guys to ever win a 125 supercross. Yeah. Huh. So that's interesting. Um, did you know Jeff Grafton? Do you remember him? It, so that name sounds familiar, but okay. but I don't. Not off the top of my head. Well, he would have been. You know, he was a little bit younger than or older than me, so he would have been kind of your era. He was a Southern California kid, but he passed away. He got thrown out of a truck mm. and died. You remember all all the racers that I looked up to, the Jeremys and the and the Wardies and all those guys, Doggers. They ran a little sticker. It was a JG with mm. a little cross on it. And it, anyway, it was after him. I didn't know if you knew him or not. Anyway, um, all right. So, moving on then to your first, your first pro race was '86. Am I? Do I have that right? Watch Google. Yeah, sounds right. Sounds um, right. On a you Yamaha. got 21st overall. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, most guys don't qualify. Well, so you were you Honda support then, or was no? That? I was on a. I was Yamaha support. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yamaha. Well, that's right. Brad Shalarocco and, and myself uh, were one, one just. So Yamaha, Loretta Lynn guys, basically, yeah. sponsored Yamaha amateur kids to race Loretta Lynn's, um, and it was towards the end of the year, and I went to, I didn't even, I don't even remember that race you don't remember that it? I did oh, that bad. Okay. I, I thought I was more competitive than that, but obviously. <laughs> well, just so you know, you, you were unlucky that day, unlucky that there were 20 guys quicker than you. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, you would have had it. All right, so what about 87? Uh, you did a handful of Supercrosses and Nationals. Do you remember anything about that year? Yeah, 87, I was still on the Yamaha. Um, I, I think that I think I got a fifth at Axton that year, um, so showed that I actually had a chance. I mean, fit, 125 Outdoor Nationals with Guy Cooper, Mickey Diamond. Uh, there, there were some super fast guys. Key, would have been Kehoe. Yeah, Kehoe. Uh, Holland. Jeff Leask, maybe. Did he ride 125s a couple of years outdoors? Yeah, he I did. Have to go back and look, man. Did you uh, Did you do any Golden States or any of those? I remember going to some, but. Uh, I don't think I ever had a lot of success at, at those. I never raced the whole series. They were big. That I remember. That, at oh that yeah, time. I remember. Really big. I mean, CMC Stu. Yeah. yeah. Stu Peters. Uh, I used to have a nickname for. Uh, what was his son's name? Marky. Mark. Mark, Mark. Yeah, I can't. I had a nickname for it with his hairdo. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't insulting at all or anything. <laughs> no, it was. It was a compliment. Complimentary. Yeah. 
<laughs> like all of your nicknames. Goldilocks, I think, was yeah, the name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and then his, and then his sister, <coughs> uh, Sandra, even later on when I, when I was at Nolene in 95 and 96, 94 and 95, uh, they had Vic, they had the track up at Victorville. Sunrise, yeah. Yeah, su- Sunrise, and, and they had a little. It was one of the first places I think to have their own little sectioned off supercross yeah, track. Yeah, that was for, Suzuki's test track. Yeah, and so and and I, she let me ride out there a lot. So oh, she and did. I remember yeah. I, I learned how to uh, adjust for the wind. Like I could I could go from yeah. one side of the track and land over on the other side because, and I hated the wind, but I there. rode in it every day. And then when I get to, it was that track was horrible, sandy, sandy. Yeah. silty dirt. I've ridden on. For Supercross, it's it's and not a good Supercross wind. track. 30. And only wind. It never was not windy. This was after Suzuki. So I was there. I know what you're talking about. Suzuki Supercross track was when you used to drive in was on the right side. No, right when you'd pull in, it was on the left. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, originally back in '90, I remember testing there with Suzuki, and the track was on the right. But the one on the left is what I'm talking about that um, okay. I rode at a lot. And 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 uh, and so it was so miserable. Then I'd I'd hammer my laps, and Clark would be out there with a the stopwatch. And when I get to a stadium and no wind, I felt like so good because it was miserable out there riding in that yeah, wind. Yeah, yeah, well, it was terrible. At so I don't remember a lot about those years. I was still going with my mom and Harry in, in a van, in a Conaline van. Um, have one twenty-five on one wall, two fifty on the other wheel wall. And my little miniature docks and I would sleep in the middle, and mom and Harry would drive, and <laughs> I'd wake up when we got there. So that's about all I remember that's crazy. from those days. So. Um, you must have gotten your Honda ride for 88 then? 89. Oh, 89. Okay. 89. So 88, you actually had a pretty good season. Third at Seattle, uh, second at Dallas. Those are your first podiums that, that I can see anyway. From right. Uh, and results. I was on a uh, Yamaha still. Was and, that like a... And, and I had Bobby Barr Motors like you talked about. Bobby okay. Barr. Uh, so, yeah. so, yeah, I, I had... I, was that a turning had, point for you? I mean, that, yeah, that seems like that I'm had sure to be... I, I, I matured. I won... Uh, the Gold Cup Series in Washington. I I don't think I won any amateur nationals like L- Lorez and Palka, but I was you know I was legit. I in was, the mix. Yeah, yeah, I was I was decent. Uh, P- Palka was always the start was always kind of sketchy, like concrete and wide open, wide open left, right, yeah. left, huh? And yeah. and, uh, and I was I was I was kind of a little wussy when I was younger. Did you ever jump? <laughs> uh, you know, so you went the start left, right, left, and then it, it swept down, and then there was a. It wasn't meant to be a double, but you'd make a tight right, and there was a roller, and then another jump between trees. Yeah. Did you ever double that? I don't remember. I All don't right. Remember. Yeah. I, Ezra Lust did it on a mini bike and blew my mind. Like, <laughs> I'd never seen anything like it. Ezra Lust did yeah. a couple of things. He did something at the World Mini, too, jumping this double there, and I was like, <laughs> on a 60. Wow. Pastrana did that to me when he came to South Africa in 95. There was a jump, and 125, just a couple guys were doing it. And everyone was convinced. Can't do it on an 80. Not enough power out of that corner. So, yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, Pastrana can't do it. Middle of the race, he <laughs> jumps over my head. I'm like, you asshole. He's a knucklehead. I remember before Daytona, you always try to find a local track just to try to get used to the uh-huh. dirt and ride. And we, we were, he was just a little kid. I think he was on 125, but still not Supercross, still amateur. And we were testing at this track with Suzuki. And all day long, all he's doing is shoveling this big hill and he was shoveling 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 and, and he because he wanted to jump over this pond <laughs> rather than ride on the track and practice he wanted to jump a pond so but uh I, i'm not real tight with him i don't know him very well we, we were teammates in i believe 98 99 at suzuki but there were separate Separated, separate yeah. semi so i didn't have much to do with him he was a very respectful kid i mean uh, well, I don't know if you know, but he went on to do okay. Yeah, and, and that's things. what I was going to say. He's financially stable. <laughs> he, he's, he's a great example of, yeah. you know, everybody else's right way isn't exactly the right way. Yeah. So yeah. beat to your own drum and, and do what you want to do because it really worked out good for him. He, uh, the, the day that you passed me in that last corner at Redbud, uh, he, he was respectful. Even in his interviews afterwards, he was like, Larry was flying in practice and, and he was riding really you good. Were really so good that day. He, he, uh, he, he was always super nice. Yeah. Good, good yeah, no, I, wouldn't find too many people saying anything negative about him. All right, so <clears throat> 88, you had some good rides on that Yamaha, so 89 was when you got your factory Honda ride. Yep. That season uh, was even better for you. You got your first win at Southwick. Outdoor which National. we yep. talked about. You've won there a few times. What, what was it about Southwick? <laughs> well, Denny Stevenson, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's going to listen to this, and he's probably starting to smile and laugh right now. But... Uh, I went there. So Rick Zilfelder, who owns Ziggy, has Factory Connection yeah, now. He was your mechanic. He was my mechanic. Right. And 
I didn't know he was even a pro mechanic. Yeah. I didn't know his how he got into His first job in the industry was, was working for me in 89. Yeah. And uh, we, have, we have a lot of inside jokes, but uh, <laughs> about the bike, like, <laughs> one time they welded skid plates on your bike back in those yeah. days, and I kept complaining of this noise. I said, it's like, to toom to and, and they're like taking my forks apart. Well, the, the skid plate was bending. To tink, to tink, and it uh, was vibrating. It flexing. sounded yeah, like yeah, yeah. really loud, and they finally figured it out, and the forks always clank because they were, they were crap forks back in 89 on a, on a 250 Honda. But anyway, we, he teases me about that. But I went to Southwick. So Southwick used to always have a race the weekend before, an yeah, amateur uh -huh. race. And we went there because he was from New Hampshire, and that was his hometown area. And I went there and raced. And Denny Stevenson won the race before, the, the weekend before. He won, he won the race. And th this isn't an insult to him, but at the time, you know, I was winning motos and doing decent outdoors. And he was a little bit younger than me. And I'm like, Denny, you know, I was pissed at the time that I let Denny Stevenson beat me. And I trained and rode all week, and I crashed on Wednesday bad. And I and I and I thought like I, you know, when you hurt like something, but it's not broke, but it's hurt. Yeah. And I took like three days off, and then uh, this is, you're gonna laugh. I'm just telling you what I remember. But I listened to Heart, the group Heart, the band Heart, <laughs> Barracuda all week, <laughs> and for some reason that song took took me over, and it was fun race for <laughs> me because me <laughs> ooh Barracuda, <laughs> yeah. that's the one. Dun, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. So the late Donnie Schmidt, who was unbelievable, super good rider, super nice guy. Uh, I thought he had me the first moto. Bradshaw passed us both, I, if I remember correctly. Don't. Call in. We've, so we've said this before. So here, don't don't, don't let the facts get in the way of a yeah, good story. So, so like, <laughs> let's just keep going. So I think Bradshaw passed us both, but then I think he hurt his tailbone or something, and he slowed down. And uh, and then Schmidt had me pretty good, but he he believe it or not, because he was always super strong, but he he something he vapored Faded a little bit away. towards the end, and and I won the first moto, and uh, I'm like, and and I had had success there the year before. I think I got third. Podium. I yeah. think yeah. I think I got third overall the year before against like George Holland and guys that were childhood heroes. No, you every every year at Southwick, you you did well. Even if you didn't win, you and were up, on up front. A, on kinda, a, kinda, on a, kind of sounds like Seattle on a small bike. I sucked there on a big bike. Oh really? I don't know why, but I, I but on the 125 I was good there. But on 250 and 450, not so good. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, but um, huh. but I remember all week I was bummed that Denny beat me, and and I used that like his motivation. Uh, and I won the first moto, and then I think I got second or third the second moto and won my first overall. And uh, I remember Guy Cooper was my teammate, and I was mentoring and trying to learn because he was really good on 125. And I remember Ron Wood said, hey, do you know who won the first moto? Because his van, box van was right next to mine. And they're like, Larry won the first moto. And I remember him coming over and telling me good job. So it, it, that was cool. That's something I remember. Uh, Cooper is always cool. And, and, Z huh. and Ziggy, it was so cool for him because his dad and his brother were there. And his, it was his first national win, too. And he actually, I believe, is restoring uh, an 89 CR 125 right now. So he, so cool. he still remembers it, too, because he's had a lot of success with Factory Connection. So to remember that he, you know, not that I got him to start, but that we started – yeah, it's yeah, the first one. No, we're both young. Yeah. It's, pretty, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And so, how did the Barracuda song? I have no idea. I'm but that sticks in your head. So, that, so like, I'm in Washington. It took I'm, over him. Okay. I'm from Washington State. Hart's from Washington State. Uh, you know, so I just remember. <laughs> I listened to Hart that week, that song, and, and uh, I probably should listen to it a little more. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I had I was competitive that year. Um, opening round, I remember Bradshaw won the first moto at Gainesville. I was second, right on him. Second moto crash one thing leads to another and you blow you know you could just slow down and got a, a two four for a second overall but you're set 18 years old and you hold it wide open everywhere yeah there's no there's no thinking logically at no that point. No, yeah. no i didn't know um and, and you know i mentally politically had problems that year uh kudrowski was winning the championship and they gave him honda gave him uh, upside down show of forks and i still was was with the old conventional forks and they didn't want to give me them and so you know that plays games with you when you're when you're 18 19 year old oh, little course. kid and and so that that bummed me out and stuff but but uh but i, I won my first national and, and and that's that was awesome yeah so that's a pretty good year then was honda stoked um well honda at the, that year had rick johnson jeff stanton john michelle bale kudrowski who won the championship his rookie year Cooper. Cooper, who was winning races, and me. So 
what are you going to do? So that, you know, they, they kept Kudrowski because he won a championship. They won the number one plate the next year. Kept Rick Johnson and Jeff Stanton and, uh, and Bale, I believe. And so that, they went down to four people the next year. Hmm. And so everybody else was, was looking. And then also, we didn't milk the 125 Supercross class for 10 years. Like, like me? <laughs> I mean, yeah. you said it. I just, yeah, he said it. I just thought not, it. <laughs> Larry Ward's an asshole. I just want to clarify that. For anybody 60, who's not a question. 60% of the time only. 100% of the time that there's a well, 70% chance that. That's back when the rule was like you were kicked out. Yeah. Everyone. Did you, did you get pointed out? I, I don't remember. I think so, but I don't remember, but I think so. But you I probably only, did. I Every, everyone it, did. I only wrote it two years. I mean, I wrote some, but I wrote two, 88 and 89. Oh, for sure. Third, out. third in the championship both well, years. Well, 87, you did some. And, and I was, well, that's what I'm saying. I rode some, but my f- two, two full years, years was yeah, 88, yeah. 99. And then, but, but in the day, you didn't make, I don't know, I don't remember exactly, but you don't make $50,000 to ride a lights class back then. So you wanted, you wanted to get to the big bike class. So, yeah. and then, and so not being the cream of the crop of the pick and Suzuki definitely was the fourth best team at the time in the early nineties. But do I go to a privateer Honda team or do I go to a factory Suzuki team and make a hundred thousand dollars guaranteed? So oh, it's a no brainer. So and there wasn't B level teams. That's the other thing about that era. Not that as people many, don't really get not like, as many right now. You could go to, there's a few, there's a few Butler brothers. Teams. That's a great team. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, Damn near factory well, equipment. Well, is that, is well that, they have factory equipment. So. Is that Baggett? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you could go to uh, – help me out. I mean, th- there's good B-level rides now. Right, absolutely. There wasn't really that. Like, there was Moto Triple X. No, not there then. There was no lean – yeah, not even then. You're right. No. Who was there back then? I mean, I'm still saying there was well, just I, nothing. I'm picturing in my mind Jeff Glass, but I think that was – That was I think, his own deal, though. He's, I think one local grocery store gave him a thing of surf, and he made it <laughs> look a little bigger than it was. <laughs> So who knows? Who was the Great Western Bank team? Who was Jeff Glass, Glass agrees with me that you're a dick. Right? There's no he's question like, about yeah, it. That one, he's a dick. <laughs> Fingers right. So good. Great Western Bank was way later on in, yeah, the, in the, was, the 90s. That was 96, right? Yeah. 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 Was that his sponsor or someone else's? Jeff Gla- Who? The bank you just talked about. No, it was Buddy Antonez, yeah. Phil uh, Lawrence. Danny and Castillo. Yep. Yeah. And they Basically, were, Dave's yeah. dad. They used his yeah. jet. <laughs> Buddy knew somebody at Great Western Bank. I think they didn't even get paid. Well, Sizzler, no. Yeah, they, were, they weren't charged any, uh, you know, overdue fees or bounce checks <laughs> yeah, fees yeah, or yeah. anything like that. Did you get free Sizzler? <laughs> at, at Sizzler? That's what I was going to say. Uh, there's a lot of fraudulent advertising to make your team look a little more <laughs> legit yeah. than it is. Sizzler, Nolene Sizzler. Sizzler was everywhere, and you'd think it, it was. One friend that owned two Sizzler steakhouses in Southern California. It had nothing to do with, with the corporate corporation. Is that Sizzler. right? Yeah. And I think that guy gave like five grand just to help out the team because we were so low budget. It, I cannot believe the success that we had with the budget that we had. That was a little bit like LaRocco when he had Jack in the Box because we had the same agent, Fred Bramlett. And he's like, yeah, that, honestly, it was a bit of smoke and mirrors. But people were like, whoa, they got Jack in the Box. Well, even with Mitch, right. Peak, Peak Antifreeze didn't do much. Uh, that even, first year. even probably Dungey was faking with Target, huh? Yeah. <laughs> probably not. Probably that, that not. Different a, time. That was a joke. I think he's still getting Target money. <laughs> he just doesn't have to wait outside. Gets free diapers. Yeah. <laughs> first pick of his uh, looting, you know, if he wants to loot, he gets in early. Oh, the yeah. early, yeah, early bird special. Yeah. Okay. I do, too, because I'm 50 now. <laughs> <laughs> they let the seniors go in when it's first freshly cleaned. <laughs> <laughs> With a bag of disinfectant <laughs> wipes in your hand. Uh, oh, need some man. Geritol and Depends. That's borderline political. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's see. 90, then. How did the Suzuki deal come about? You, you kind of had that choice of like, all right, privateer or make 100 grand and be on a factory team. Yeah. I, kind I of a no-brainer. I don't remember. Um, did you have an agent? No. I, I, okay. I, I think in my, the first one in 90, I think, was just Harry, my, my stepdad, okay. honestly. Um, Harry Ball. Harry balls, um, and and I don't remember how exactly it came about, but I do remember a couple things about that year. Um, so I think my contract was uh, Honda ended fairly early, um, or or I got released so that I could because I got to go to Japan at the end of '89. But I rode factory Suzuki, and I I was pretty tall and had long blonde hair, 
um, all yellow gear, yellow bike. And that's where Big Bird came from. That, and Mike LaRocco was walking behind him. And people don't know LaRocco. Like, he seems all gruff and tough and doesn't talk. And, and But he, he's kind of shy, but he has a super dry, super funny. He did anyway. I haven't seen him in 20 years. But has super funny, really funny guy, actually. Yeah. Super, Sneaky funny. Su- yeah, super funny. Yeah. But he says, damn, dude. You look like Big Bird, <laughs> and that, and unfortunately, it stuck because I don't know if Big Bird is Metro Homo boy girl. I'm not sure. And him and Snuffleupagus were a little tight, so I'm, I'm not sure. But anyway, it stuck. And ironically, that year had quite quite a few uh, run-ins or feuds with with Chicken Jeff Matasevich, who was Chicken. So Big Bird versus Chicken. It was kind of kind of kind of worked out for me. He kind of did. And your guys' rivalry went back to 125s, right? You guys just kind of. Yeah, but we liked each other on 125s, but the big bike class and the money, it, it just, a little more pressure and a little more attitude. And was there one, I, I thought it was Seattle, but you said it was like maybe back east somewhere where you guys, he smashed into you and afterwards he punched you in the helmet and you dropped your bike and went after So, him. So, of course, the 1990 Supercross is the biggest block pass joke that, that anyone's ever seen. Like, it takes block pass into a whole new level. I mean, stopping I mean, literally turn, stopping, yeah. looking, hitting the brakes, and, and ramming. Like, it's unbelievable. Um, but, yeah, but later on. But then at that obviously created friction. And then uh, there was, I don't know. I, I guess we just didn't like each other. I, time's gone by now. I, yeah, I'm, o- I'm over Your relationship it, but, yeah. went afoul. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty... <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> that was a dad joke. Let's throw it in there. <laughs> so, but, but I don't know for whatever reason, um, we, we were just, he was we were just, we were just different. So, but and it's all just about testosterone and think, yeah, thinking you're, you're, you're cool. Yeah, There's yeah, so yeah. also personalities that just you could just tell from the outset if you put those guys on the track, they're probably not going to get along, and they're not going to get along. And the race that he it punched me in the helmet, and I dropped my bike and ran after him. That you're talking about in his defense, not not that I. I would probably would have never helped him until now that I'm 50 and mature. But uh, he thought the, the last turn, he thought that I just like rammed him. Well, I was out of control and I, f- I full whiskey throttled ah. and, ah. Uh, and lost control. And, and I, I cleaned him out because I was out of control and crashed and my bike hit him. And he thought that, uh, you did it on purpose. Whether he thought I did it on purpose or he was just pissed that I cleaned him out of a prior transfer position, uh, <coughs> that, that's when that happened. So. Okay. But that, he that was, was a great highlight reel. I, but you got to understand all of our attitudes and stuff. Uh, we have good years, bad years, and we were both had been at the top, won Supercrosses, and now we're both on Suzuki, Privateer, kind of like a little bit of support. We were both a little miserable, and so we were both a little salty too. So Well, 90, he was Factory Cowie, right? 90, yeah, but, but the year he punched me in the helmet you're talking about was like 93 or 94. Oh, it was? Yeah, uh, yeah 92 or 93, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I, I had my years wrong then. I believe okay. it was at, at Indy. No, the, the Seattle one, I mean, we just raced each other hard. I did it to him in the heat race. Um, you know, not as bad, but, uh, but hey, he wanted to win. Yeah. He wanted to win. So I don't blame him. And I wanted to win, too. And when, every time I watch it, I still don't understand how he parked me as hard as he did, and I still pass him in the next corner. I still don't get it, but it was, it was cool. And I still really don't understand. And this isn't tooting my own horn or anything, but... I don't know how we were that much better than everybody else that night because we literally stopped and blocked past and, and waited, and we were still a whole straightaway ahead of everybody else. And it, so, who was third at that time? Do you remember? Well, well uh, Tishner ended up third, but he cleaned out Bale. Bale was coming to to be third, um, but there was a tunnel jump thing, and and Bale when he cut back hit Tishner. Oh yeah, 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 it, it yeah. was surprising that you, as much as you guys screwed with each other because. Almost always when that happens, the Somebody, pack catches yeah, you, and then, absolutely. It's, and then it's it's on. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, sometimes in those events, like if there's a two rider breakaway, a lot of times guy in third is just like, all right, just don't blow it. They're gone. Meanwhile, if he was charging, could have maybe had yeah. a chance, you know. But it was yeah. more like I'll never catch them. Well, Tishner yeah. was a good rider, but he was never. A, a, he was kind of lucky to be in that position. Yeah, he and he that was one of his better races, you yeah. know, to get. And I heard he's gotten hurt recently, so. I haven't heard anything, but I hope he's yeah. doing better. Yeah, so I haven't heard enough to you. Shout out to yeah. him. I hope he's doing all right. I think he's definitely on the on the mend. He's not 100, percent because he's like he's, he, he's another kid that I've known since. Uh, I, first time I remember him was um, at Saddleback Park at the. Oh, oh gosh, what was, what was that amateur national in California? Always called 
uh, the World, World, World Mini. Mini. World Mini. I raced at the World Mini at Racing World when Jeff Ward was on an 80. That's how old I'm, I am. Or things I remember from how young I started ra riding and racing. Um, but I remember ro meeting Ronnie Tishner in, at a Saddleback at a World Mini Grand Prix. Tish has always been cool. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. think there's anyone that dislikes him. He's just easy going. Yeah, um, for sure. How was that bike in 90? Well, <laughs> this is when I get into uh, problems with being picky and this and that. Uh, so, <laughs> Well, hold on. Let's start there. Because, you know, like if you ask any mechanic you worked with yeah. or anyone that knew you, that's what they say. Oh, this fucking guy, you know. Like, but. Levers up. I, I heard a story. I don't even know if this is true. Is that your mechanic would mark your lever positioning. You know, like secretly, like tap in a little thing on the bar, like, okay, they're where he raced with them last weekend. And you'd show up on the weekend. And anytime it was funny, because I'd come in, <laughs> having heard these stories, when I'd get to the track on a Friday or whatever, and I'd be walking through the pits, and I'd see you, he, inevitably, you were always on your bike, yeah. fussing with your levers, I knocking them up, knocking them down. I don't know if down. it was a nervous habit or what, but all those Everyone mechanics. Has, I think that's a nervous habit. All those mechanics that, that bitched about having to do that all got to be on the podium at one time or, or the other <laughs> when they worked with me so they can suck and it. No, nobody said it. Just That was a thing of yours. You it's, were like, yeah, no, it, it's like a trait that you had. And it's true. Because they'd say you'd, you'd come up, oh, no, this one's got to go down. And then, so no, so no, I wasn't the best. And then you'd end up setting them right exactly where Probably. they were. Probably. <laughs> I wasn't the best uh, like running and cardio and trainer, but I rode my motorcycle all the time. Like I went through so many practice bikes. Um, I, it's funny. I always say like I could go through five Suzuki's to two Hondas. I always like was promoting how much better Hondas durability and stronger bikes they were. But I rode all the time, so I'd ride all week. I mean, your grips get molded to your hand and everything, yeah. and then you get on this brand new and it feels weird, huh? Perfect bike, and it, mm. it, it stiff. And, and you're sketchy stiff. and it's slick. It's like, can we bend the bars a little to the left and then like grind down right. this grip? And then yeah, you yeah. crash during the week and you don't realize it, but you're riding with bent bars all week, and then straight ones feel like crap. So it was, it, I was just trying to trying to do the best I could and be as <laughs> the most comfortable I could. And I also, being so tall, I always struggle with arm pump a little bit, like the the seats the guys all have now. Uh, at No Lean, we sprayed literally 3M rubber, mm. sticky rubber. I remember Clark got some uh, pure rubber from that they made grocery cart wheels from, and glued that to my seat, trying to do what they do now. Uh, yeah, you know, because pump. the more traction I could have on my butt, you know, you could hang on with your butt and your and your lower back. You didn't have to use your forearm so much. And uh, and back in the day, I mean, before clutch adjustments, your clutch would get a bunch of free play. I mean, there's a lot of things that added to my pickiness. But what I didn't realize when I was 19 years old in 90 at Factory Suzuki was that there is some politicalness in sales and marketing. And Suzuki came with stock KYB forks in 1990. They had already retooled and were moving to Showa in 91. And so our race stuff was Showa stuff. Raced the first race at Anaheim, I crashed and got like 14th place and could not even be on the same track w with the, the show of stuff that they wanted us to run. So I go to Houston Press Day the next week, crash, bike into the bleachers, like major crash, still I'm still struggling with this bike. So I asked, I talked them into, because all week I'm riding up, we didn't have the same bikes at home in these yeah. days. We had stock, box stock bikes at home for practice bike, maybe a silencer. Um, and I talked him into letting me use, this is true, box stock, mm -hmm. KYB, triple clamps, fork, shock, box stock stuff. And I said, just let me race one weekend. And if I do better, we'll see what happens. If I don't, then I'll, 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 I'll go back to your stuff and I'll, I won't say another word. Well, I got second place that weekend. After bone stock suspension, bone did stock. Did you did you have like like you know you wanted the clickers? You'd put them. Yeah, all, set them all, in, pretty, all the way pretty in. much like all the Stiffen way in out, out three or four. So no valving. You did no valving. No, nothing, nothing. No spring. And Bradshaw won the first race uh, at Anaheim, and then he won Houston too. But I I wasn't on him, but I I was legit. Johnny O'Mara got third place, but I got a second place. Um, and you know no other Suzuki guys were doing real good. There was was that your first two fifty Supercross podium? I, I, th I believe so. Must have been with Bradshaw and Johnny. I say it has to be. That that that's a good little. Yeah, because I think I think with. a fourth or a fifth was the best I did the year before in '89 on a, on because I rode some East Coast rounds on a 
CR250. Okay. Uh, I think fourth was I think the best fourth, idea. yeah. So, so yeah, it must be my first podium with Brad Shaw and Johnny O. That's a pretty cool That's first pretty podium. Cool. Yeah. And I got second, too. So then the next weekend was San Diego and hard pack track. So also in the day. So what did they say after that? We're like, all right, well. Well, nothing they could say. They we'll had, get you stock I mean, stuff. They, I mean. they, had, they had to let me, they, they let me run it because I was, and, and Suzuki was in a huge transition change. They, uh, Ron Heben was our team manager, but he was only there for a short amount, just that one year. Buzzard um, was coming Bob in. Hanna was an advisor, but he was more there just for his name, for advertising. Um, Mike, Mike LaRocco and his dad, they just totally did their they own thing. They did their thing. own program, huh? Um, Tishner, Tishner actually wrote, wrote decent that year, but, you know, I, I watched videos and he, he had the same, his forks wouldn't go in either until they did and then they bought him out. So yeah, you, you told us you asked him to flip the Alvin <laughs> stack upside down. No, that was your best buddy Bones that I asked to flip <laughs> oh, yeah, it upside yeah. down. So well, Bones was talking a little bit. He he was the one that told me about that stock fork story. Yeah. So so we'll get to Bones, I'm sure. But the, the next so in the '90s there was three different promoters. So each promoter had a different track builder. Uh, Mickey Thompson, when we'd race the California races, had this guy named Is that right? Kitchens that would build the track. And I couldn't, I hated those tracks. They were curbed and horrible jumps and uh, no landings. Um, and then there was, I can't, uh, I can't remember the other two. One, one was the West Brothers, uh, Jerry West that had Gatorback all the years. Okay. They, they were the, another promoter and they always used John Savitsky, Stadium Dirt Designs. And I loved his tracks. Uh -huh. I, lo I, I loved them. That. And, and his tracks are part of my, We'll, we'll talk about my, my European Supercross successes. He built a lot of those tracks, and I just, I loved his tracks. Mm. Um, so different tracks, w one weekend you'd need super stiff suspension, next week you need softer, um, but this stuff I was just comfortable. Well, San Diego was the next weekend after I got second at Houston, and it was the race where Bradshaw was winning, and I don't know if you all remember, he cut in. Slid. It, or Stant went outside, and he cut inside and slid in case that uh, tape, that plateau jump and hurt his ankle pretty bad i think stanton won but i got fourth place in that race so now i've, I've gone from a 14th being miserable to a second and a fourth two weekends in a row which isn't yeah. too bad for my uh third and fourth or second and third super crosses in my first rookie year um and i'm up to like fifth in the series and so then we go to seattle and it's my hometown it's cold it's it's kind of soft softer rockier dirt like what i grew up on and then that was the night the chicken and me had the slugfest, and I won, and I get within one point of the championship lead, and I'm a rookie, 19 year old rookie, and things are going pretty good. That had to be a trip. Yeah, it was. It was. I, I bought a new Toyota truck that week. I, oh, you were really feeling yeah, it. Yeah, I was you? feeling it. Were you? Uh, <laughs> you know, that championship's right there, boys. <laughs> How did that feel? I mean, I, I know I've heard you say you'd rather keep those Seattle wins than even win a championship. Like yeah, that was really a big deal to you. Yeah. Was that harder, though, with all the family and friends there, like pressure to perform for them? I mean, having to buy all the passes, I'm sure, and all that crap. Well, I, I guess it. some people, Jeff, Jeff Stanton, I don't think, ever had very good success in, in Pontiac. Pontiac yeah. So I guess it plays different on everybody. For me... Villapoto. Yeah, he's, he... He never won Washougal forever, he, and he just said, he, I just want to win this one But his national. first Supercross was Seattle. His first Supercross win was Seattle. And I'll tell you how I know, and you're about to laugh. You're both about to laugh. So... Being, Are you sure? No, yeah, I'm positive. Being from Washington State, winning my first Supercross in Seattle, here comes a young kid 20 years later, wins his first Supercross at Seattle. I'm going to be a cool, humble, nice guy and call this young kid and congratulate him. And so Anthony Paggio at Oakley gets me his number, and I leave him a message, and he calls me back. And I say, hey, bud, I just, I just want to congratulate you. You know, I, want, I know you won an outdoor championship, but your first Supercross in Seattle, there's only two people in the world that know what that could feel like. That's, that's me and you. And he's like, hey, man, thanks, thanks man. Uh, is this Jeff Ward or Larry Ward? <laughs> and I went, whatever. <laughs> I haven't talked to him since. <laughs> and he's probably laughing, too. Or, or he thinks I'm a dick, too, like you do. <laughs> Good stuff, RV. Good stuff. <laughs> he probably did that on purpose. I don't know. He's got the it, same kind of sense of humor as you. So he was like, pretty, is this uh, Jeff Ward? Who, who is this again? Yeah. Who's this? Exactly. I thought I was being You said your name was Larry? So I did the same thing to... Uh, I got to get the hills right. Josh and Justin. Josh. Josh Hill won yeah. Minneapolis when he was pretty young. Yep. Yeah. And I called him, and he 
did back. They, they, those kids are both so respectful and so so nice to me because we're all from Washington State, or I think they might be Oregon. from Oregon. Oregon. Yeah, yeah. But mm-hmm. still, the, North, the Northwest, it's it's a yeah. tight group. And they were so thankful, and so I was all excited to call Villapoto, and he wanted to know if I was Jeff <laughs> Ward or Larry Ward. So so I was a Dungy fan for a while after that. <laughs> <laughs> You like I just want to see a Ryan beat that, that Ryan. <laughs> so, so then the next weekend after that Seattle win with Matasvich was the best race of all time maybe Atlanta that 1990 was Atlanta. when Jeff Ward won and I don't know if he was that excited or making fun of me because I did the biggest victory dance you ever saw at Seattle win and but he was pretty happy and and he won uh and I, and Bale and I came from back and John Michelle was fourth and I was fifth in that race. So, I was still Legit, and I was still in the championship. Uh, I think I was close until like Oklahoma City Supercross that year was like a hundred degrees, and I don't think I did very good that day. And then that track looked miserable, the la- and it was bi- it was big. It was big. Tough. Those jumps big. were. Isn't that way Denny had a big crash? Yes, he freaked yeah, he freaking slammed straight into yeah. it right onto his face. That did not look that track. I watched that. I'm like, thank God I wasn't around that time. That was, yeah. Tracks were track big and technical back then. Yeah. Like, it yeah. just kept building but bigger it, it and deeper. And that was, it didn't even look like jo- enjoyable, jo- though. John Savisky, it, it was fun, because, but it, that, when it got 100 degrees and hard pack, it, it was a little sketchy. Mm. But I vapored that day, and then I, I had some mechanical issues. I had a main seal fall out one, a uh, finger on a clutch basket break. So just little silly stuff. That So you, did you run the stock suspension all year, then? All year, yeah. Yep. And you said you only got two races out of them, and then they would get start to get sloppy, and you had right. to throw new stuff on. Right, and they if they changed the valves and stuff, it just they didn't feel the same. But sprint, but they had twenty pairs because everybody else ran. I was going to say stuff. all the takeoffs. But but what I didn't know now, and I, I appreciate and understand now, was why are you not helping me and giving me better KYB stuff to help me when I'm have a chance to be you know. I was kind of in the yep. championship. They're content to just and, put you on stock and, stuff. It's well, like. they were pissed that I was even using that, actually. But I didn't know at the time they were going to Showa the next year. And Bob Hannon had already convinced them to go to, to Showa. And it was already in the works. And I was making it really hard on them to make to, that they were mm. doing that. I was making them look silly. So, Who was your mechanic that year? Uh, a guy named Jeff Clark. He was Mark Barnett's mechanic at Suzuki and uh, Jeff Clark. Okay. Huh. And I've lost contact with him for, for a long time, too. I, I don't know what ha- happened to him. You know what else you did that was like a Big Bird special? <laughs> was you cut the don- the, the inside <laughs> ring off the bottom because right? you, your thumbs would... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He ran your thumbs like this. Just because my hands are so big. <laughs> <laughs> so the true story, the true story on that is... <laughs> So when you ride for Suzuki, you always have to go to English Town to the Suzuki Race of Champions after the year. I it, thought... It was Kawasaki. Well, it is now, but it used to be a Suzuki. It used deal? to be a Suzuki. Oh, deal. I didn't know that. Yeah, so I had to go there, and, and which was fine. Um, but when I was at that race, I can't even remember the name of the kid, but I was past him, and I was in a rut, and he and his rear wheel slid off into my front wheel that was in the rut, and, and it's called a gamekeeper's thumb, and it snapped my thumb out. Uh, and so it's actually it was this one. I've done them both, but it was this one. And so I, I, my thumb is fused straight. So this one, you see, I can make it round, yeah. and that one is yeah. like totally surgically. Just, they had to do that, or just from the calcium. I think it just. I think it, I, it never was surgically. I, I've had different like uh, fluoroscope. Um, they, they injected uh, what's the uh, cortisone in there uh-huh. so to try to get rid of the pain, but it just grew straight like that, and so it hurts. W- with the grips in there, so I just cut a little mm-hmm. notch. So, so my my finger, my thumb actually lays down the side of the handlebar. Yeah. So, but I, that wasn't being picky. That was because of it. Well, no, a, it was just a, it was a Larry Wardism. Like yeah. I always was like, what the hell is these little grooves in the side of his grips? Yeah, there was actually grips from the past, like olden days, that had a little spot for your thumb like that from somebody. They were else. the Oakley ones, weren't they? I don't remember. I don't remember what brand. Oakley O wings or something. They had it was the ones that had the little wings on the end. Yeah, it, something like that. I don't remember it being Oakley ones, but yeah, anyway. That's funny. Those little wings hey, were for su- your palm or something. Remember, you could rest your palm yeah, yeah. on that so, little outside so thing. So if you, if you did like a yeah. X up, as they called it, like it was like a stopper almost. A, you know? a Webco? Yeah. A Webco? <laughs> oh, getting old. Uh. A Webco. <laughs> so, so you make fun of my levers and stuff, but my favorite thing for them to do was just take the handlebar mounts, leave, leave the bars and, and levers all mounted to the... Uh, but move it the just, mounts. Yeah, just take the mounts off, and that way they didn't have to change nothing. And that way the next week it felt the same. But it was just 
you know, that, that it's funny now, but it wasn't me trying to be an a-hole. It was me just trying to oh, get yeah. it right because I wanted yeah. to feel comfortable and do better. Yeah. Um, and also in the day, you got to understand, and Renthal guys are probably going to ride in and say I'm full of crap, but whatever the tolerances are now on handlebars, <laughs> in the day you used to get some yeah. the same number and the same thing, and they weren't even close. Felt different? Oh, my gosh. Totally different. So. Well, I thought I think this is funny because I – we take for for granted now. You you can go to any website of any grip company and order half waffle, no waffle, full waffle. Super soft. Medium, Back then, you remember, firm. grips just came full waffle. Even in '95, I w- and and this is funny because I'm second place in the in the Supercross Championship, the biggest. You know, I was between second and fourth through the whole the whole mm-hmm. series. Um, ended up finishing second. I personally would go to the local in, up in Adelanto or Victorville, or wherever, to the Honda shop. And buy stock Honda grips because I like stock Honda grips, and, and then the take top. a razor blade and cut the whole top half off. I was doing the same so, thing. I mean, second in the Supercross Championship, and that's but that's just the way it was in the day. It, you didn't have all the luxury yeah. of. I'd love to see go tell a kid now that just signed like Pro Sig or something. Go, hey, you need to do this, this, and this. Well, gloves. I remember every pair of gloves I got when I rode for Mitch. I had to cut. I had to cut the step. padding out yep, of the palm. Me too. Me too. So I'd get a new pair of gloves. I'm like, ah, oh, all right, guy. Okay. In the, the next day, 30 I've minutes. even I've even had other brand gloves and stitched a different brand that right? on the top, just yeah. to uh, just because. In the day, some of the gloves were a joke. Hey. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. seen I've seen some stuff done where you're like, huh. I even and I, I I'm sure I offended a lot of people, but I even wore I was I had a lot of ankle in, ankle injuries when I was younger, and uh, so when the teams went to where you had to wear their gear and their stuff. I, I always fought really hard for two things to, to wear, tro- have Troy Lee paint my helmets. I just, it wasn't a, a relationship thing. It was just, I love Troy Lee paint. I just loved having a cool helmet. Yeah. Um, so I fought real hard to let him always do my helmets. Um, but Alpine star boots, I always wanted to wear Alpine star boots. And uh, there was years that I even had to have Alpine star boots with a different face plate on. And that's so that's, that's taboo, but, it's the truth. Well, there was two years I had to go into something different. And the year I had to wear Axo boots, I twisted both ankles. Like Those boots were around. terrible, dude. Those, terrible. They were terrible. So I had to wear Axo boots uh, in 89 when I was on my factory Honda deal. And ankles ruined all, all the time. They, they would break the, shra- the shank in the middle of the boot. Remember, they had a metal shank in them. They were terrible boots. Yeah, I, mean, I would have been better off in a pair of uh, you know Chuck Taylors, I think. That was about the protection level I had. So you guys were basically being dicks to your feet. It was pretty yeah, we were right then. <laughs> okay. yeah. not, not because we wanted to. Not by choice. All right, so 91, you were still factory Suzuki. So I, I, don't, know that I, I don't know that I was full-blown. Full so Did you have a one, 90? Was just a one-year deal? 90 was one one-year deal. 91, I think Scott Stauffer was my mechanic, and I think I had some help because uh, – I can't remember his name now, but Tosh, Tosh, I Tosh, think, yep. was the big, the big Japanese guy. Yep. He was little, but he was the big wig at Suzuki. <laughs> and, and he liked me, but, you know. There was Hide. Yeah, all, all the, Hide got against me and, and Ron Heben and stuff because of the, the suspension thing. Because I, I was doing well with the wrong suspension. Mm. Um, so they all got down. And, and I don't think I was a factory guy even in 91. I think I got bikes and, and a little bit of help, but I don't think I was a factory guy. Is that right? Yeah. 91, 92, 93 are vague to me. I don't, I don't remember because I struggled all three of those years. I mean, I still have some podiums and stuff, which <laughs> sounds funny. I struggle, but I still get a Supercross podium. But Well, 92, you won Southwick again. Yeah, but, but on a 125. On a 125. Okay. On a 125. It's only good at races that start with S. Seattle and Southwick. <laughs> and and yeah. Stampa. I won stamp, Tampa. You did win oh, <laughs> Tampa, Florida. <laughs> What's maybe near, I went near up. St. Petersburg, so. ST, maybe I need a, uh, an R, an R race somewhere. <laughs> um, so nothing really from those seasons that stands out? Uh, no. Something else, though, that we, we skipped over that, that was always a big deal. Um, and once again, 18-year-old little kid. Trying to get the best money, trying to get the best deal, but I get a lot of, a lot of uh, cer- certain people like to remind me that I wore like four different gears, yeah, clothing in 1990, um, and it's true, but <laughs> I didn't have a clothing. I couldn't get a spo- I couldn't get a sponsor at all, a clothing sponsor zero, to 
and I had to wear something at the first Supercross. I'm a Fatter Suzuki rider. So, so in, during the year, you wore, you wore, over the course of the season, you right, wore four different gears? Right. What did you start Three on? or four. So, so, at the time, Suzuki had their own apparel line, which was Answer. Yeah. And so, I bought it out of the, out of the Suzuki catalog. I bought Answer gear, and Seattle Supercross... I win my first Supercross in bought answered gear. That's just the Suzuki line of that gear. That jersey you have that here. That jersey I, I showed you. bought you. that. Yes. Yes. How is no company giving you a factory Suzuki guy at least some free gear? I, well, I probably could have got free, f just free gear, but I didn't want to sign a contract for free gear. Yeah. Um, I said I was buy my own. And, and so my stepdad, Harry, was helping, trying to get me a deal. And Scott Link, who did Alpine Star in the U.S. for – maybe still does. I, I'm not very current now, but I know he did – Alpine Star here in the U.S. for a long time. It had a company at a uh, that Talon Volan wore Yoko. Yep. Yeah. And my stepdad was trying to get me pretty good money from Yoko, and so they were close to having a deal put together. I'm an 18, 19 year old kid. I don't want to wear Yoko. That shit's ugly. I, I, I don't. Super I mean, ugly. all I think about is the the Bellacci brothers, and that's just what we call them, the Volans. That's the only people I knew that ever wore. I didn't want to. I didn't want to wear Yoko. Um, and so I was fighting it, but it was enough money to where I, I would have had to. Yeah. Um, so they start, since I have no clothing deal whatsoever, I'm wearing bot gear. I start wearing Yoko Well, the deal falls through and, and, and didn't happen. So then I think I got, uh, I can't remember either, either Fox or JT, but I wore, I think I wore Fox and JT, but it was just them giving me, giving me some gear cause I didn't have a deal. So had to wear something. Th there's, there's. People like to give you crap for stuff, but they don't. They're not in your shoes. They don't know your situation. No. And and uh, I was a 19 year old kid. I was. I won some races. I wanted to look. You look at anybody that's really really fast or really good. They still either usually have Fox or Thor. Uh, you know, the best guys get the best stuff, and it's the coolest stuff. And I, I wanted to be one of, one of those guys. So yeah. in my defense, it wasn't that I was. Uh, not not honoring my contracts. It's, I never I never yeah. had anything. I had to wear something. Yeah. So. When so when did you wear Taichi? Yeah. So I think that was like ninety ninety two. Ninety two. And and Taichi was you know it was a Japanese company. They they were so so nice to us. Like when we go to Japan every year, they give us all really cool leather custom jackets. leather jackets. Yeah. And I have some really really. I, I wanted one of those so bad. And by the time I got to the pro level, they kind of had it, disappeared. It, exactly. And I, I can show you a couple old ones I have that are pretty funky. Um, but they, they came out with some clothing, but it was another thing where it was just, it was just clothing, you know, and, and it was a very short last Bale And I wore it for a little while. Their, their logo was like Daglo yellow, right? Just little arrows each way. Kind yeah. Of thing. Yeah. Black and yellow. And then John Gregory, um, and his daughter, uh, from JT, they were they were really cool. They 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 gave me some stuff for a while, but I, I wasn't uh, just because I get a podium there once in a while. I still wasn't a, a, a legit guy, so I was That's struggling crazy, find, trying to find any money or any any help. So, hmm. so, and then and then I was at the end of my ropes. Uh, well, I mean, I was lucky to still be racing um, in the '93 because I was struggling hard Suzuki those a couple of years. Um, and I think Mike Craig actually had signed to ride for Clark Jones at No Lean, um, but something happened and fell through. And they primarily were more of a, uh, what was the old Mickey Thompson? Ultra Cross. Ultra, yeah, Ultra Cross Ultra. team. Because they had Kyle and Larry, Kyle Lewis and Larry Brooks, who were really good and competitive and both won championships at that. Um, and then they were going to add Mike Craig, who was a very talented <coughs> uh, rider, and he would have been good in that same atmosphere, Southern California kid. But for whatever reason, it, it fell through, and, and somehow I, I snuck in there and got a chance, um, hmm. and uh, I took advantage. It was a fresh start. Different. I finally got off Suzuki, being there for a long time, being good there, but then slowly going downhill, um, and got on that Nolan Yamaha. And also, I think the Yamaha, <laughs> as a stock bike around that time, the, the early 90s, they, they, they were pretty it, decent. It was decent. It was decent. So I started the year, a lot of arm pump. Um, a lot of fading, you know, maybe lead some laps at Houston, I think, was the second race. Or, or as you would say, you vapid. No, I, well, arm pump fade <laughs> is different than just exhausted vape. vape. Okay. <laughs> well, I, got, vape. I gotta go back and t we gotta ask you this story. So I told you about Bones telling me this. And I thought it was Seattle, but it, it might not be. But there was some race, and he said you were 
they had done a shock for you, a suspension setting. So, so no, this is 91 to 93. Ni- nine, 91, 92, 93 when I'm on a stock Suzuki, which wasn't very good at the time, out of a, my own funded box van and, and struggling. But I'd still manage a podium every here, here and there at Supercross, even though I was out, out to launch on my whole program That's and huge. equipment and everything. Well, so, so he said... But Pro Circuit was co- cool enough to... to st- keep trying to help me with motors and suspension and stuff although i wasn't like a premier guy for the team like you were i was just a guy in my own box van i i don't remember if i had to pay for it if i did it was at a discounted rate but i wasn't i it was just a i was just a guy i wasn't yeah. nobody well so he said they're watching you in practice and you're the fastest guy on the track had the fastest time in practice and so they're walking back from the from the and he said you were pitted kind of like across from where they were you know they were. It would have been Honda. Uh, you know peak pro, peak uh, Anna Fries. You think Honda they, it was already? They had peak. Well, it would have been ninety one, ninety two, or ninety three. Yeah, Maybe they were pro they were circuit peak, in 90, they were, or Cowie in ninety three. But ninety one and ninety two, they were on Honda. Definitely. And I anyway, think they were, I think even ninety three. They were ninety three was Cowie. Oh, it was, huh? Yeah, ninety three, ninety four Cowie. So anyway, they were parked kind of across from you. You're in a box van, and they're walking back to their truck and. They said you were screaming at them. I can't remember who they were uh, with. Maybe it was your friend. You were screaming across the face. This shock, oh, what the hell? You got you to get over here. You got to do something <laughs> with this shock. Like yelling across the pits. Well, maybe I wanted to be the fastest fast. And so Bones is like, oh, my gosh. Like, like, let us get back to the truck. Like, you know, come over and talk to us. So he goes over there, and you're like, this shock spring. It's the wrong spring. I need a different spring. It's this thing, da, 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 da. And Bones is like, I mean, I know the sag numbers. They're right. Like, you know, I watched it. It didn't look bad. Like, so he goes, all right, take the shock off. Let me see it. So he takes it off. Didn't do nothing. <laughs> he takes it into the truck. It, probably. Cleaned it off. Rubbed off the, uh, you know, whatever the spring rate was and wrote on. Just please tell me I didn't get a podium. <laughs> <laughs> he gives you the shock back. He put it on. Go out for the next practice. Fastest again. And you come back. You're like, see, I told you, man, if you just give me what I want, like, I can do it, man. I, I, I got the speed. You know, I just need to feel good on the bike. And I think he, he said you went out and won, but that would have only been, that wouldn't have been lined up with the time. So maybe, oh, did you podium well. in Seattle at 92, I 93? I don't remember. I, I okay. don't remember. Probably. But, but I know that I was, I was miserable on that bike those couple of years. I was struggling. It was slow. Uh, I, I, did, I just did not care for Showa suspension yeah. in the early yeah. 90s. Um, so I was probably he, a pain in the ass. But Bone said that was the only time he ever lied to a guy and then never told oh. him. Because he said, oh, you right, went out okay. and like did well. So he's like, oh, I'm not going to say I was about to say, lied to a guy? No, he, Bones He told lie. me that he lied to me way after the, I was done racing. He's like, remember? In but in Bones', Bones, Bones defense, he was pretty green back in the early 90s to suspension. And you can polish a turd all you want. It's still a turd. Those forks were still t- terrible no matter what. Yeah. So and 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 the, and the whole that whole thing. So hey, hey. I just thought it was a funny story. And also, you gotta understand, I'm at the end of my. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest of my life if motorcycle racing doesn't work out. So I'm trying everything I can to be better. So yeah. oh, he heard. So yeah, he heard from across oh. the pit. Damn <laughs> shock. That that, he, that I just I'm just gonna tell you. I know my personality and. It might have, once he was in there, I might have got excited because they weren't saying what I wanted to hear, but I, that's not that's not really me. You calling bullshit on it? Uh, I'm just saying. Well, I you know what it is, too? I think He may believe it, but I think years probably have exaggerated the, the level possibly. of my But also, when you come off the track, have, I've watched, been able to see some footage of me talking right after I come off the track. I'm like... You're People heated like, up. Dude, are you yeah, pissed? I'm like, up. no, I'm just debriefing. Intense. You're intense. I'm like, I'm debriefing. But if you if you don't hear the whole conversation, you would think I was having a go at the team. And then it, it's like, everything good? Yeah, no, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to punch me. But yeah, I, yeah, 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 yes, exactly. we're good. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, let's take a quick break. This is our TLD timeout. We're going to be right back with more Larry Ward. <laughs> At Nihilo Concepts, we have a passion for innovation and for motocross. 
Our mission is to develop parts that will improve the durability, functionality, and the appearance of your motorcycle. We're proud to say that everything from Nihilo is made in the USA in our state-of-the-art manufacturing facility in Stewart, Florida. Whether you race every weekend or you just ride for fun, Nihilo offers high-quality, innovative parts that you just won't find anywhere else. Nihilo offers custom engraved engine covers, one-piece titanium foot pegs, brake tips, internal engine components, specialty tools, frame grip tape, carbon fiber components, and so much more. Check out our website, nihiloconcepts.com, and see for yourself why teams like Red Bull KTM, Rockstar Husqvarna, Troy Lee Designs, and some of the fastest riders in the world choose Nihilo Concepts. nihiloconcepts.com. See the sunrise. I wake up in the morning feeling so nice. I burn a couple bowls of the all right. I look out to the world and it's all mine. Yeah, it's all mine. I see palm trees and joints, kids smoke palm trees like ointment. My wee breath is fresh cause I keep my appointments. Now I can finally see like I smoke some DMT. What you think we should sound like? What you think we do at night? Cause we the best of this shit. We made a mess of this shit. We wrecked the rest of all the west of with the recklessness. If you's a bitch, you might get snatched up like some necklaces. This where the rest of us live. You 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 say you say we feel like a West Coast. I say we sound like a West Coast. You say we feel like a West Coast. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Whiskey Throttle Show. Uh, a couple of things. That was your TLD timeout, so be sure to get over to TroyLeeDesigns.com. Check out everything they got going on right now. The Liberty helmet's out, which is badass. Uh, the new uh, GP Air helmet's out, which is um, really a, a cool, affordable way to get into a TLD helmet. All of the same safety features, just built with a, a more affordable material. And um, really awesome stuff, so check those guys out. Larry, before we get going here, I want to give you each of our guests get a little fire department coffee gift little mug and a bag of their uh, kind of medium roast blend. So from them to us, to you, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. I'm from Seattle. I think it's a law. We have to drink coffee. It is. So. It's a law. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> no, you, uh, I had to call the police if you didn't take that. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. Anyway, thanks to those guys for doing that. We, uh, that's something that's really cool. In fact, the last uh, thing I heard from Marty Smith before he passed away, he sent me a text saying thank you for that, drinking a cup of it. Mm, that's awesome. That was, uh, it was really cool and then also really uh, a bummer, you know, obviously. All right, so let's dive back into your, your life here. 94. So you're kind of at the end of your ropes at the end of 93, it sounds like. You were done with the Suzuki's. No no idea what I was going to do. No idea. how Because I, I had already funded my own team for, you know, paid for my own box van. Yeah. And uh, I, I just, I wasn't willing, to, I didn't really want to do that again. Yeah. So did you consider maybe getting out? Or were you like, nah, I got to make something work? Well, I mean... I, I didn't know what was going to happen, um, and it was getting pretty late in the year. So yeah, I, I don't remember exactly. It's quite a while ago, but I remember I thought, it, yeah, it might be, it might be the end. Mm. And so, how did you get hooked up with Clark? You said Mike Craig didn't sign the deal. <laughs> I don't somehow. remember it, for to be honest. I don't remember exactly how it all went, but I don't remember if I was talking to him and uh, I was in the running, or if Craig already had a deal, but then. If I remember correctly, I think Craig had the deal, but he bailed to go to Honda Troy. Okay. And left an open spot. And so they they Clark gave me a chance. Okay. So and and, it, and you said they were doing ultra cross, but he wanted to go full supercross nationals and Right. Okay. Right. He, so who are you there with? Kyle Lewis? Kyle Lewis and Larry Brooks. And Larry Brooks. That's okay. right. Yep. LB was there. And and uh, some funny stuff about that year. So I started off n not too good. Uh I remember way too s stiff of a rear shock spring, and I was getting a lot of arm pump. And I think Houston, I led like eight or nine laps, but then faded way, way back. But I knew I had some speed. And then Anaheim won, I believe, uh, 
we changed the shock spring and I was like, oh my gosh, I was pretty good. And I, and I believe I got third behind Jeremy Stanton and I got third and uh, I, I knew that I was going the right way and it just kept getting better and better and better. And then 95, of course, went, went real well. Yeah. Went real well. You ended up second overall in the championship, which to this day is the best privateer finish. They'll say Jeremy was a privateer at Chaparral Yamaha, but that was a factory bike. So, right. so anybody I, with any kind of... We, we were pretty privateer, right? Yeah. Uh, so my bike literally had the bottoming <laughs> cones were rubber from shopping cart wheels that Clark put in there that years later, those, those it all deteriorated. I mean, that's, what all, the, that's what all, all the factory teams <laughs> <is>. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> it, 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 we were pretty uh 95 i remember at the last supercross i'm in second in the championship and uh we didn't even have a, a new chain didn't even have a fresh chain for my motorcycle i'm i'm literally sitting in the pit area at the last supercross second in the championship and they don't have a new chain to put on my bike i, mean, I got this whole chain on my bike and uh it was it was kind of sad but this is the that, thing that, that blows me away how do you how are you getting those results you're second in the points and yamaha's not going hey Here's a couple extra parts. Here's a here's a cylinder to try. So, here's a, I mean, like that's crazy to me. So once again, what worked for me wasn't politically correct. Yamaha went to in '95. Uh, they came out with a new style power valve or different cylinder, um, and, and I didn't care for it at all. And I ran a '94 cylinder all year. Uh, I had good results, and I didn't. I was the same way as you. I'm like, why am they not talking to me about next year? Um, why are they not happy for me? Why are they, you know, they smile as I walk by, but they talk talk behind my bat about me. Behind, and I remember I wasn't going to bring this up because I, I, I don't ever, would never disrespect Keith McCarty. I mean, he's a legend in the sport. But um, Clark Jones actually went to Keith to ask for a chain for that last race. And I remember Keith just flipping out on him. You get him in the floor to chain, get a chain or something like that. And like. It was a big deal to get a chain, and I don't remember if we got it from them or if Clark went and got it somewhere else, but I didn't understand. I'm like, what the hell? I'm doing really good. Yeah. But now, some, well, it, it didn't take me this long. I'm not that slow, but <laughs> <laughs> well, I, re- I, mean. <laughs> I realized that we were on a shoestring budget with some contingency money and, and, and a parts allowance and a couple bikes. And you're beating the And I'm beating an $8 million budget factory Yamaha team. That, that, that Monday morning conversation every week was probably a little rough, you know. And uh, it reminded me of Mike Gosler's been a pretty good friend. And I've kept in touch with him through the years. And Steve Lamps and I used to love going to all the European races. And uh, they would bring, like, literally $20,000 worth of luggage uh, full blown motors, yeah. uh, different races for head angles, suspension, a full Honda bad ass bike. And I'd have like a set of handlebars and a really short silencer. And, and, uh, it'd take me like four minutes to get my bike ready. <laughs> and it took them all day. And Monday morning, I, I was lucky enough to, to win a lot. And then, uh, Goose told me, Monday or Tuesday morning back at Honda every week. How the heck is Larry Ward beating you on a stock bike when you have all this stuff? And so it makes you feel good and it's motivation. And maybe it's why I was a little bit better privateer because I, I, I probably had a little chip on my shoulder and I wanted to prove that I really just wanted a factory ride and wanted to be accepted. But it, it, it kind of, after a while, uh, it gets, gets, starts to piss gets, you off. It yeah, starts inside, to, yeah. Well, you, it hurts your feelings, pisses you off. Did um, you ever get that feeling like, you know, screw these guys. I don't even need them anymore. Just give me what I need and the money, and I'd, I'd rather not deal with that BS. Well, of, of course, but that's not really an option because back in those days, there was no money unless you were a, a factory guy. Yeah. Um, and then do you, it's do you have any idea what Nolene's budget was? Do you know that, like <laughs> what they were operating on? Three chains. So, <laughs> th- Not the new ra- hottest rapper. I mean, yeah. What was their budget? So I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys and tell you. I, I, I kind of said I didn't want to talk about this. Um, so let's bring it up. Because I have very – yeah, so I know you brought it up to get me there, and that's, that's <laughs> no, fine. I, I didn't really. I, <coughs> that's okay. But, but um, we were on such a shoestring budget that my contingency money that went was supposed to come directly to me went to Nolene. Um, and I still ha- have never received that because that was what was getting no lean to the last last couple races. And of course, at the end of the year, they, they I believe went ba- filed, went bankrupt and, and were no longer. But you're angry because I rode so good, my best year ever, and I didn't get all my money. But 
the company was struggling. He, I mean, his family was probably struggling because he was spending all his money on his racing habit. And if it wasn't for that 95 and the success that I had, I would have never yeah. got yeah. good contracts from Honda Troy, which got me good results, which got me back to a factory Suzuki ride, which got me two more Supercross wins and, and, a, and quite a bit more money. Um, onto a factory Kawasaki ride, which was a career ender motorcycle for me, <laughs> but I made over a million bucks before I got on the bike, which is pretty good for a, yeah. for, for a, a, a 30 year old has been, you know? Yeah. So, so it's so hard to be too angry. So, I mean, so it's hard yeah. to be too angry. And, and I'm just very thankful. And, uh, I did get to see Lois Jones at, um, Dallas here a couple months ago and it was so good to see her. And what and, was she doing there? And so Clark and Lois, from what I, understand are helping out with the is it hep suzuki team okay yeah yeah and they're kind of uh uh it, it looked to me like they were doing their suspension stuff. it looked to me like it was larry and clark and lois at no lean but with new kids and new faces and, and those guys were really nice what's the seven deuce deuce guy's name I think now. Uh, yeah. he was so cool when he saw me like i've been gone for a long time and it still freaks me out when people are oh, you're larry ward you know because I don't get it, but he yeah. was very respectful and, yeah. and, and cool to me, and uh, and it was great to see Clark and Lois. And Clark, Clark's uh, a super nice guy, super talented. Just yeah. uh, it, it just blows me away that well, how, how they couldn't get more help. How you're so, second in the championship, and you, I mean you're yeah. And then something uh, else happened that year. Um, so Damon Bradshaw had had retired and was a, a, a Yamaha's wonder kid, and uh, I mean Yamaha put. Yeah. all their eggs in that in that Bradshaw basket and then he <coughs> he left and, and quit well I finished second in the championship um he decides to come out of retirement and come back to racing in 96 well what, what are you gonna do Larry Ward who's just a privateer guy that yeah. you know they got second championship but is running a 94 cylinder when we want to be performing a 95 cylinder so once again I'm I'm a problem because what You've been a dick, like, since day one, you know? It's just <laughs> always problems with you. Misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, but but luckily, um, I signed it. I, I got on with Honda Troy, which was, was kind of by choice in, in the long run, in the end, because I remember practicing one day, and Mike Craig was there, and I rode his bike, and it was like a stock Honda practice bike, and it was... Were you blown away? Unbelievable yeah. for me that the torque and the power compares to my Yamaha mm -hmm. and I'm like oh my gosh if I just got second in the championship and like seven or eight podiums on that what if I had this yeah. um, but then of course then the aluminum frame comes around and everything changes 97 I nice, think 97, yeah. but uh but so how did you did you know Flipper before that so of course <clears throat> Phil knew me because his team was on the rise and I was a privateer rider on another team that was really good. So his, he had the biggest, strongest, best sponsored, most budget privateer team, and I would happen to be the fastest, the best guy to fit that spot the, almost. It, it, and, and, it, and it worked out. And, and Eric Kehoe was there, and uh, I, I had uh, I had two good years there. There was some more political crap. Like uh, I went at the end of '96. Um, Started get I, I got some different linkage and got a setup that I lo I loved my bike I, I loved it went to Paris won every European race that year on a Honda because a stock Honda is like perfect power uh, at, in in those days um, won Paris King of Paris King of Bercy or whatever and came back and tested before going to Japan the next week and last lap of testing slid out off a jump landed on my leg broke dislocated my ankle and broke my leg and. I had a non-weight bearing six week injury and it's only five weeks yeah. until Anaheim won. Uh. And I'm like, Oh no, what do I do? So I went home, South Carolina, got a pin through my ankle, pulled everything back together. Um, tried to, I, I couldn't, I, it was non-weight bearing. So I could kind of ride a bicycle. I could swim a little bit, but I couldn't do much. I went home to Washington for Christmas. Um, and I remember my mom and I went to the doctor, and they, they cut me and pulled the screw out on a, on a Monday. It was Monday morning. It was on a Monday, like, at 10 o'clock. And I called Eric Q. And Anaheim, or uh, it was Coliseum. LA Coliseum was round one that weekend, the coming weekend, five days from, or six days away from them pulling this screw out of my leg. And I haven't ridden. And I, I talked them into doing it a week early, so it had been five weeks. And uh, they said, okay, you're, you're good to go. It's, it's just on pain. You can, you're not going to. It's healed up enough to where you're not going to rebreak it. You can. It's just pain, so you're probably not going to be able to handle it. So, I well, you can rebreak it. 
Well, they're just saying can. it's healing right, right, enough right, right. now that so, you could go ride on it. So I went and rode that afternoon. Never changed my bike. Same same suspension I like. Same setup I like. Um, I ride and I, I felt I felt great. I felt good. And I called Keo. I said, "Hey, I'm coming. You know, uh, book me a flight. I'm coming." No, no, no. You don't need to come. Well, they signed Kudrowski that year, and so oh, I remember Dan that. Bentley. They had hired Dan Bentley on, and he made a big push for. Kudrowski, because Kudrowski was really, really, really good in the, in the past. Um, so he came back, and they were, you know, all Kudrowski's our man. And uh, so he kind of filled in for you. So he was no, he was just going to be my teammate. Okay. But they were telling me to stay home and not race because I mean, it's probably common sense. I had not r ridden in five weeks, and I and I've been on crutches for five weeks. So when I said, "Hey, I'm coming," they probably thought I lost my marbles. Um, but they Kehoe let me go. And I got there, and uh, it rained that day, so they knocked a lot of the jumps down because, you know, they get ready when they're steep. So they knocked them down, LA Coliseum, and I'll never forget getting to call my mom after that race. And I'm like, Mom, guess, guess what? Guess what I made? And she was like, you made the main? And I'm like, yeah, I got third. I made the podium. <laughs> and so it was awesome. And that was 97. 97. 97. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 97. I know it was because I was coming off the broken ankle. 97. You were 94, 95 at Nolene, though. No, I'm talking Honda Troy. Yeah, we and you Honda went Troy. to... So you would have been... 96, 97. Yeah, so this was 96? 97. Oh, okay. Well, how'd 96 go? Oh, I think it went okay. I, I, you'd have to tell me. What? Oh, it obviously right, didn't go that you. well because what did he's Kudrowski, not bringing it up. What did Kudrowski No, it, it was a story. That's That was <coughs> my point was they were pushing for Kudrowski, and Kudrowski okay. didn't make the main that night. He didn't make the main? No. So, well, that was a year that uh, Tortelli won, right? Was it Tortilli or Albi? Albi Albi. won the following year. Okay. Albi won 98. Okay. Yeah, no, it was Tortelli. This is around the time I was, I know the date. So Tortelli won, then Albi won, and then the following year, um, Pichon was leading and broke his female or something, mm. or was leading briefly. So, but my point that I was trying to say was, once again, you know, one guy on a team can have, want to support another guy, no matter what a guy's results are doing. The, the teams have their, had, in the time, kind of had their favorites, and... Um, and then because of my success and 97 was the first year with the aluminum frame. And so Honda, I started getting good supercars, started giving us more and more support. And then they, st when it came time to, before the first outdoor national, they were going to give us good bikes and they wanted to give all the good, we got one set of good stuff and they give it all to Kudrowski. And they I'm did? just like, what, whatever, you know, I mean, I get it. I get their side of it because Kudrowski was national stronger champ. than me and a national champion, a really good outdoor, but damn. <laughs> yeah. But as a racer, you don't, you don't get that. You know I what get I mean? It like, at the time. get it. Like, um, I, I, I've, I've had it on, I've been on both sides of the fence where I got something that other people didn't get and previously. And I'm like, it chaps your ass big time. I mean, Albie I'm won. sure you've had something. Albie won that night. Yeah, it was Albie, so. Henry, and Ward. Yep. In 97? In 97. Yep. So when did so. Tortelli win? Was it 98? <laughs> Listen to Jill. Oh, no, I know these dates. I remember this. This is the time I remember. Uh, it, was a, it was a double header. <laughs> I, mean, I remember <laughs> my mom was changing my diapers when I watched that race. <laughs> I was whipping it around at the same time. No, because I thought it was Tortelli, Albertine. Meaning it was the it opening was Albie, round. Doug, Henry, me. I'm talking about that, the oh, years. Because okay. Tortelli the, won the opener the one and year. Then and, then the night, and then night two, because it was a double header, you got fifth. Coliseum was a double header? Yeah. Oh, I don't remember that. I don't know if that's true. It, it, uh, we it wasn't read. a yeah, double header. Facts are it was, wrong, it was a next week. Yeah, that, it, because I remember uh, I hit my knee. I kind of tall for a motorcycle. And uh, I hit my knee on the handlebars and had a great big old swollen knee, and I had to get it drained that week. Ugh. But... I started, you know, being consistent. I think the next weekend I got fourth at Phoenix. I thought Phoenix was the next weekend. But anyway, I was consistent and riding good. And I remember Dan Bentley coming and saying, saying, hey, you, you remind me a lot of Stanton this year, which was a compliment, at, you know, and trying to pump me up, saying, you know, you're being really consistent. Solid. You're staying right on the podium. That's how you win championships. So, so there, there's <sighs> – it's life. It's just like life. Racing's a lot like life. It's, yeah. it's, it's up and down all over the place. You just got to do the best you can with what you got. Well, you did pretty damn good. I, I wonder if do you ever kick like lay in bed at night or especially back then and go, Man, what if Jeremy McGrath didn't exist? 
I mean, you, you can't. You, you can't. You can't. No, you can't. I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Lay in bed and just do it. Especially so, off to playing with guns, <laughs> with playing with guns all day. He's, he's thinking, yeah, so Jeremy kind of got rid of some people <laughs> no, back in the day. Jeremy, I don't want to scare you, but Pingree lays in bed <laughs> thinking about you. So How can I get rid of these guys? Whoa, <laughs> no, not, not him specifically. Just, well, he, you know. but he, but he Alternate reality. You can't be thinking of MC if you stay in the RC showroom. Oh, uh, but see, maybe what if there's no RC? Pink's thinking, how could I get rid of Shea Bentley? Well, I was uh, I was in the brownie room. <laughs> if there was no brownie, would have had another championship. Yeah, see, or if brownies you, are bad for you. Or if you tighten your spokes. <laughs> oh, that's a Ooh. bad joke. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Ever since then, I became a little more paranoid about spoke <laughs> tension. Yep. Who is in charge of that GL? It actually had nothing to do with the spokes being loose or anything. KTM screwed up. They ended up buying nipples from like a third party company and they started just mushrooming. Pulled them apart. I, I hate, hate mushroom I hate nipples. Mushroom nipples. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst. That's Mushrooms a, and nipples are great. <laughs> that's, a <laughs> that's a fetish. That's a fetish. Mushroomnipples.net. <laughs> Tortelli won in 98. So is LB then Tortelli? That's correct. I was. Get your Flip shit together, goes. Langston. I thought it was And in 98, totally he got seventh at LA Coliseum. Okay, so between your Sizzler bike and the uh, HOT, not even close. That bike was way better. Well, they were, to they were different, um, and I, I felt like I rode them both, both pretty good, but um, I don't know if you ever saw, like, my bar set up, and, like, I had really far forward bars on the Nolene bike where the, the Honda was a little more... Balance. You were more so, in the bike, yeah, it looked so, like. So, and, and I remember it was towards the end of... I don't think I was that great on it uh, the first year, 96. But towards the end, I remember it was something as little as like longer dog bones on the linkage or something like yeah. that. And all of a sudden... Yeah, but that, it was that can be huge. Unbelievable how good I could... And, and that's the first year I won the Saporiti Fast Cross, which is my, one of my favorite, all-time favorite... Mm. Uh, European Supercrosses, and that was the first year I won it. And well, like so I had never gotten in the top five before, and all of a sudden I win it pretty easy, and I'm like, I love this bike. So you were a third of your way to a really cool trophy. <laughs> so, yeah. so take take us through what what happened to you in Europe. Like, what would happen? You obviously had some kind of mindset change. They did or love you over there too. You won everything. You would go over there and beat Jeremy <laughs> straight up. You beat everybody. Yeah, I I, uh, I don't know. Um, but that that was a little bit like Rhino. He would go to some of those races and just clean the house. Like MC. Yeah, like, but not as consistently no, no, no. as Larry. I, I'm just saying, I don't think Jeremy put a lot of effort into those. That's, that's, that's what I was going to say. I think he, he did on some, and, he'd win, and he would win some. But there was and others where money. He, he would go because it was like, I, I don't want to talk his business, but rumored like 100 grand for one weekend over there. And he'd take Which a, was true. And he'd take a new friend, and, and, and he'd, he'd race, but... He was smart, and he, he knew what he was doing. I, I remember him saying after Paris one night, Stanton won one night at Paris, and I remember we were walking to dinner, and he goes, yeah, Stanton can beat me all he wants at, at these races over here. He ain't never going to beat me in the U.S. And I'm like, damn. Yeah. You're, he was pretty self-confident. You know, yeah. He was he mentally he went really peak. strong. Yeah, I when, agree. When he, was, when he had to turn it on and win, like he just... Well, there were times, if you go look, and you saw like pictures of him from Bercy, and then fast forward, what is it? Eight weeks to Anaheim one. Different guy. You could even see like he was chiseled. Everything. You could see like he was peaking at that point, not that point. But I think like Jeremy was smart. He would go to those events and know I'm here because I'm Jeremy. He would spend time with the fans. He would do the autographs, do all the speeches, do everything that they want for their fans. He didn't hardly ever win, but mm -hmm. he got way more money than the guys that kicked his ass every year. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. you, you know that firsthand. Yeah. He, <laughs> one of the more impressive things that I saw him do was one of the years I was at Honda Troy. Uh, he had a knee surgery in the off season, and I remember watching him the first day back coming to the Honda track and you know just put, literally putting around doing just play jumps and having fun, and and slowly worked his way up to to the first race and he wins the first race. You know, so you just watched him just tick away at it. It, it was like it was, but once again it goes back to same bike, same motor, same frame, just like me. Jeremy did. He's admitted he loved the, the same. same. Like, and that's how I was, too. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's, like I said, when I came off that broken leg and I still got on the podium, so I didn't have to test. They didn't make yeah. me switch nothing. I had the same exact setup that I really liked, and I, was, I got on you it. You probably just, weren't overthinking things and either. It, and it, felt, it just felt good. 
So, and and I was competitive the rest of that year. I think I ended up third, uh, third or fourth, fourth maybe in the championship that year. Ninety seven. Yeah, I think so. I, I don't. I don't. You I'm not like going to say something. Stack. No, yeah, I, I was just saying that he did. You were always right at the podium or on it. Yeah. So it was like third, fourth, fifth, always right there. A couple of six. And believe it or not, in that time. It, that, that was oh yeah you're okay I mean, I'm thinking I'm top five every weekend that's nowadays if a guy gets top five every oh, weekend they're, they're golden yeah well if if you're t if you're finishing fifth you're a high paid factory rider yeah. these days I mean if you're finishing eighth you're probably a high paid factory rider these days you got you got at least twelve of them in the premier class yeah. if you're in the top ten you're you're making good money and well, you ride for a well factory. that's what I watch now is I don't know if, if you ever look at this but there's times I'm, I look at the results and I look at well, the factory rider is not in the top ten, and at times factory riders that haven't made the main. It's happened a few in, the, in recent times with the depth, but you go look at that and you're like, "Holy crap!" Yeah, like that. It, it, the sport has changed in that aspect. Well, don't you feel like though? Also, it's there was a broader spectrum of guys that were like better back then. It seems like it's <laughs> like you have now A riders and B riders. Well, I. I also think in in any sport, um, and maybe you guys can add to this, but there's definitely years like I'm sure you looked West Coast, East Coast, which one's stronger, which one, you know. And some years you could tell that the West Coast had 10 good guys, the East Coast had four or five. But I also think there's been ebb and flows. And in the 80s, there was definitely like a lot of big names and champions. And then there was, a, you know, and then the 90s again. And then you saw another lull because, you know, even when I was racing – there were times I look back, I'm like, outside of the top five, there was a pretty good gap. Now it's nowhere like that. It's just boom, 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 boom. Yeah. But I don't know. It, if but it does I seem like Kenny and Eli are able to distance themselves from the pack. But even still, when you look at those Cooper gaps, well. they're, Cooper, they're not Cooper's half a lap. They're half a straightaway or maybe a straightaway. You know what I mean? It's still in relative. Yeah. It's all done this. But I think between the bikes getting closer, people learning. If you learn, if you come in as a pro now, you almost learn how to have that longevity. Like what you did in your era, no one did that, right. meaning r riding that many years as a pro. I almost felt like they kept thinking I was going to go away. <laughs> like, Dude, you're like a bad rash. I did. You're around for yeah. a long like, time. I was going to go away, and then all of a sudden I get a podium, and I get some momentum, and I, I, get, I, get another, I buy another year. And it wasn't intentional that I did it like that. It's just... It's, it's, the just, it it's just the way it was. I you was, were like herpes. <laughs> no. You know? I was really good in certain <laughs> situations and not not so good in other situations. So There were times there was a big spark, and there were other times you were like not even there. <laughs> well, uh, so you made you told me you made over a million bucks just from your European racing. Is well, that accurate? So <laughs> I, was, I was fortunate enough to save, um, yeah, around that amount of money. I don't like to talk about money. But I know, I know you don't. All right, we won't make you talk about. But it, yeah, but so for, so from your race, and I'm. I mean, I, dude, you want everything. I was able to save a lot, and and, and you were doing four, five, six European races every year. Mm, yeah, I tried, Geneva. I try to do Saperides. In my Percy, prime, I was trying okay. to do a hundred hundred grand a year, and I was. Uh, so what I think would that I was be eight, for you? Like eighteen thousand for one night and twenty four thousand for a two night event. And when you'd get that kind of start money, there was no purse. Yeah, some some, some there was, some there wasn't. Yeah. That that would come before I'd even go, and then I'd go in some places with. And, and if I got four thousand dollars cash from purse money, I, that's that's long gone. <laughs> that was gone at the bar that night. Well, no, I wasn't. I wasn't a real bar guy, but TV that's or where I lost my money or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, smart. I, it's good. Yeah. I, you know, guys could guys could probably stand. A lot of guys could probably stand to listen to your with well, the way you did it. You know, and maybe because you weren't making these huge salaries, it made you go, "Okay, I need to save this." But you seemed like you were good about putting money away. You didn't buy the stupid car. You didn't, you know. So, so I thought to me though, I thought I was staying. The more I raced, the more I rode. It was like I, I kept getting better and better. So that's I chased a lot of Europe races for the money, but also just. To keep practicing and yeah, stay current, riding, training, where yeah. a guy like RC wanted nothing to do with anything because he wanted the time off. But I was always a slow starter. Like Anaheim one, I was arm pump oh, and, yeah. and slow. But then by the fourth round, fifth round, I, I was, you know, on the podium. I was getting better and better. Yeah. Um, Ninety five when I started first five races of the year on the podium, it started in Florida, softer, 
you know softer dirt a, a little easier yeah. tracks on the on the yeah. east coast so that that worked to my advantage so 98 you went back to suzuki how did that happen did you have a falling out with honda of troy or was suzuki no come? I, I don't remember having it falling out it's just that i think they were capped at at whatever sixty thousand dollars salary or something something that i was making and that's just was just their budget yeah. um i don't really remember having a fallen out i don't remember what went wrong or i think they i mean this is no disrespect because he took good care of me and, and i loved him but phil alderton everybody knows has ha had some problems and i think th they were seeing the end and that's when the transition the other owner was taking over and they were switching to yamaha, yamaha yeah so i don't know oh, there's a lot going on i don't, yeah, don't remember they were i don't remember what happened i do remember i, I think I remember correctly. I could have my e years mixed <laughs> you up. You sound like me now. I remember. I, <laughs> I have crashed more than my share, but I showed these guys at all my helmets, which you can see a picture of on, on our Instagram, but uh, they're all scratched. So <laughs> I've, I've bumped my head a lot. But as we said, they look better than they functioned. Yeah. And now I just forgot where I was going with that one. Oh, sorry. All your helmets had scratches on. I, I believe, on. if it's the correct year, I remember, um, I did have... I did ride pretty good. I had, I think I finished fourth in outdoor super motocross and fourth in supercross in, in 98? 97. Oh, 97, okay. On Honda Troy. And I remember, I'm pretty sure I remember flying to California and testing the Yamaha four stroke with Yamaha, hmm. uh, which I don't remember. I, what, what I recall is Henry had been riding it, but he was hurt or something, and then they were looking for the next guy to ride that bike. That was the job Button got? And I, yeah, and I, and I believe it's the job that Button got. Yeah, you're right. Fourth and fourth. Okay. Um, and so I remember going there, and they took me to Carlsbad, and I rode it at Carlsbad. Of course they did. Yeah. And, and, and hard pack makes it look good. And then uh, we went to the Yamaha Test Supercross track, and, and I rode it there. And I really liked the bike, but I think they were like at $50,000 salary or something like that. But at the time, I'm 20 it, – it's 98. Yeah, so I'm 27 years old. Um and I'm I'm needing to make some you know I want to yeah. make yeah. some money, and uh, we've paid your dues at this and, point. And Ro Roger invited me to come ride the Suzuki as well, and it was right after Jeremy had left. Cause, and in '97, of course, Jeremy struggled with the Suzuki, and it 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 wasn't very good. They had a lot of problems, clutch problems, motor wasn't very fast. Um, but I didn't know at the time that the whole future was four stroke, and that bike was going to be a wonder bike and and make everybody really really good i didn't know that and and i was just more comfortable staying with the two stroke For sure. and it was a, a lot a lot more money i mean not ridiculous money but a lot, a lot, a lot more, more money, more money yeah. to to go to suzuki and uh and i i, I don't remember why or, or all my decisions but i but i remember what deciding to go with suzuki um and, and it was horrible the first <laughs> It was so slow. I mean, and it was horrible. It was, it was so the slow. best decision I ever made. The bike sucked. It terrible. Uh, no, it, it, it was, but this, this has a happy ending, this story. <laughs> it was so slow, and, and it was okay suspension, um, but Roger promised that he was going to continue to try to make it better, and I knew he had his feelings hurt from Jeremy making it look so bad, and, and he had that opportunity to have Jeremy there and then well, went, ran away as yeah. fast as he could, so R Roger doesn't lose a lot. You know what I mean? He... he he, yeah. And if he gets embarrassed, you better watch out because he's yeah. going to fix it. And and he did. And well, he and Mitch, I remember going in there at that time, and they were, that bike was on the dyno all day long at Pro Circuit. So it's a joke, but but there's some truth to it. Roger would go to Pro Circuit every day after work and drink wine, and that's true. Dremel and port on our power valves because the problem was in, they thought it was in the power valve, and. I don't know if he lucked out, or I don't know if it was a Cabernet. I don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> I'd like that Cabernet power valve with the cylinder so, from ninety. Yeah. So, uh, hints of bottom end with just uh, yeah. good notes of yeah. And yeah. so, so <laughs> the bike slowly got better. But I remember the week, the weekend of the Tampa Supercross, ninety-eight Tampa Supercross, complete mud bog. Um, I was on the start all week. I had a, I had a weird feeling. I was practicing. It was wet, and I was having fun. I just had a weird feeling all week. But in the heat race, when I shifted, so you start in second gear, and you hit third gear, and all the rest of the year, every time I hit third gear, everybody would. I mean, I remember having to super glue my goggles because my goggles would blow off when they go by <laughs> me so fast. <laughs> so, but at Tampa in the heat race, I shift to third. And they all hit wheel spin. <laughs> and I stayed even. I stayed even with everybody. I'm like, holy crap, my bike's fast. My bike's pretty fast. And uh, it rained, and I was, I always, 
I wouldn't say I was a great mud rider, but I, I had some success sure. in the mud. I did I did well in the mud. Well, you from Washington the State, Northwest, yeah. and <laughs> South Carolina, and I, mean, I have yeah. web feet. So yeah, yeah. Um, and, and then I ended up being able to win the main event that night, and uh, Albie crashed in the first term and came back to fifth. So his bike, you know, obviously the obviously the bikes were getting better um, that year. Ninety eight, the first outdoor national. Uh, second moto, Pichon won. I was second. Albie was third. Suzuki sweep yeah, at the podium. Yeah, yeah. Second moto, which is pretty pretty strong. So it, it was going that, the right way. At that time, right that had way. to be huge for them. Oh, Roger. They was didn't have a lot to really rest happy their head that on. Day. Yeah. Really happy that day. Tonight, we have two bottles of Cabernet. <laughs> so, and then I don't I don't really remember uh, how I did the rest of the year, but I was I was competitive. I had podiums, yeah. and, and I, I was pretty pretty decent in 98. And Ninety nine, I, I won, was able to win Seattle, and uh, I think I got a second at Dallas. Had, had a, I had some some good races. I was I was second in Minneapolis. I was strong, yeah. consistent, but Je- Jeremy was just way better than us, all of us. Was that did the bike improve from ninety eight to ninety nine again? I, I thought so. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think so. Okay. And 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 then two thousand, the end of two thousand or end of ninety nine, I, I kind of wanted to stay at Suzuki. Um. Because I got along with Albie, I got along with Roger, Ian, yeah. Lee, Lee, Lee McCollum was my mechanic. We got along good. Everything was comfortable. Um, but as a little kid, being a Jeff Ward fan, a team green rider. You got sucked into the Cowie thing. Well, it, it's a little bit in your heart, right? Uh, RC, Especially when you start there. And RC and I were buddies. He, he, you know, he couldn't rent a car because he was like 12 when he started racing. And so, and we both lived on the East Coast, so he'd ride with me to every event and he got hey, me. Hey, can you take me to this place? I don't know if you guys heard of it. It's called Dairy Queen. <laughs> I have a I have a story like that, but I'm probably not going to. No, you got to tell it. You told us. Let's hear it. It's great. We've heard something similar anyway. But, but, but remember <laughs> where I was going uh, with the with the Kawasaki deal. So I'll finish that first. Um, so Ricky wanted me to be his teammate at Cowie, and Cowie was having problems. Emig and Huffman both. I found out just like six months ago there was a change accidentally made to the Cowie frame. After I think maybe ninety eight and then so ninety nine Emig couldn't ride it. John Dowd and I couldn't ride it. Ricky struggled in two in two thousand with us on it. And then they figured out the problem and then that's when Ricky and O one went on like a fourteen race win streak. Mm-hmm. So so I was so bummed because I got I, I made a ton of money. Uh I was on factory Kawasaki. I thought my gear, everything looked good. Uh the first race I ever raced on it was at um uh, what's the um, the Rose the, in the Rose Bowl Pasadena, Pasadena oh, the, uh, World World Supercross? World Supercross right, yeah. I, I get Ezra wins. I'm all over him in second. I get second. Jeremy's third. I mean, not. I'm never gonna say a distant third, but we beat Jeremy. Yeah. We got and uh, first race on it. I couldn't go through the whoop to do's on it back, and it was back to the whole frame change problem. But I was. I thought I was gonna be pretty good, and then second race of the year, I broke my shoulder, and and uh, I just. I call it a career ender. I just, I really think at the time, in the 2000, Kawasaki, everybody knew four strokes were coming, and so they weren't putting very much effort into uh, two strokes. But that's just mm. a, that's just an afterthought theory. So, so there's you, some truth to that because if you look at the way the Japanese work, they're usually about four, on average now, about four years ahead of the game. Right. So in 04, everyone went to four strokes. So so by 2000, you're probably right. They had focused. Will shift their focus to four-stroke development. I can remember practice bikes, you know, rods going out the front of the of, of the motor, like like it was. It and was, you would be think they, oh, we got to fix that, but instead it was just like yeah, eh. it was. It, it, oh, the, and and then the rod said like Lachine on the side. It was that old. No, it wasn't that bad. But it, they were getting Weinert. They were getting rid of some old stuff. Lackey, Gary Jones. <laughs> so tell the Ricky story. So. Ricky Carmichael and uh, Ernesto Fonseca. Oh, yeah. There was little Ernie around. When I was like, you know, I think it was at Nolene. I think it was 95. (coughs) And I could be off my years. I'm sorry. It's been a long time. But uh, so Ricky and Jeannie came to my house um, because I was a a pretty good pro. And he was on a 125, but not a pro yet. Still a a Loretta's kid. And uh, I remember going on a mountain bike ride with him at my house. And they stayed at my house. And. Uh, we went to my outdoor track and like we did a 30 minute moto and I think I passed him on the last lap. I gave him, you know, a little head start, but 
he's a 15 year old little kid and he's and I can't catch him and I remember like probably one of the hardest I've ever tried I didn't want to be embarrassed getting beat by this little kid and I, I finally got him with some bonsai move on the last lap um, of this moto and I'm like what that you know this is impossible he's on a 125 and uh so I knew that he was pretty special back then already yeah, yeah. and the next day we went to my supercross track so not not so good there he he uh, wanted to go around all the whoops and and of course genie's not not taking not thinking not this that, is, yeah. is very funny at all and and we ride and, and i we, get where he's coming from and we made it to the, <laughs> I day. Did the same thing we, we did our motos together and uh my confidence went back up from the day before <laughs> where oh yeah i am fast and and uh because it, it was a different guy so it, he jumps and, and my supercross track was about 30 minutes i lived in a little town called florence but my supercross track was out 30 minutes away and all two lane back rows out there and he he jumps up and i'm not picking on you because you know i love you ricky but this is kind of funny and and i've heard this story it's kind, there's kind of seems to be a pattern yeah <laughs> a bit of beauty. so he he jumps up in my truck and he's like go 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 and i'm like go go where what, what are you telling me he goes go ditch my mom and i go why he goes, because she won't let me go to Dairy Queen, and I really want a blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> so here's this chubby little kid, wants a blizzard, ends up, like, never losing a championship, being the best uh, ever. It's, do, it's well, hilarious. Well, you know, I lived with Chad Watts when, when yeah. Chad worked for him. Yep. I think I told this when he story. Had, when he had muscles. Yeah, muscly Chad. Well, Ricky and I would go ride about, you know, teammates <laughs> at the time, whatever. So we'd come back and wash our, car, our uh, bikes at this car wash. It was right next to a McDonald's. And so I'd be power washing my bike, and I'd look over, and his would just always be just leaned up against the thing. And I'm like, where's this guy? And he'd always come back, two cheeseburgers in his Make hand. McFlurry. It was always cheeseburgers. I'm like, dude. Maybe we should go on <laughs> Hamburger. <laughs> hey, yeah. We'll be banned from his. I heard he's good at banning people from his social media if you make fun oh, of him. Oh, so. listen, I love Ricky. Hey, I, I think you, I guys you, are, you guys are missing the point. Everybody should go on these diets because look how fast this little kid got. Uh, he, hey, it, he, he did, that's what's he, so funny about Ricky is that's, uh, that's what made him happy. He trained so hard. He had Alden Baker. He, he could still be eating cheeseburgers and, and yeah. probably won three-quarters of the championships he did. So I don't think any, any disrespect to Alden, but I think Ricky probably would have had almost the identical record if you'd done it with him and Jeannie the way they were doing it. I don't know, Rick, Ricky, and, and, and it may be a show. I think it's a show because I've seen him, especially in 2000 when we were, when we were teammates and sat right next to each other, got dressed upstairs in the semi, uh, come in after practice, literally tears in his eyes. Go, why? What's wrong with us? Why can't we go through the whoops? But, you know, we're, we're going to get smoked. And then he'd, win, then he'd win the main, you know. So <laughs> I'd be like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> w was he joking earlier or or? Psyching me out? Why is he psyching me out? I'm like an eighth place guy now, so uh, he was probably genuinely upset. But but having, I think you know, of course it it changes, but it made him mentally so so strong having having the the real trainer. And it's one thing to be guessing at something and think you're doing the right thing, and actually have someone telling you this is the right thing, and just be a robot and follow it. Yeah. But the, but the talent and the speed ridiculous. Yeah, he didn't need any help. See, there. I I've had this debate with people because some I've had some people. You know, even people close to me debating, saying that, well, Ricky didn't really have natural talent. It was all heart. I'm like, that's bullshit. you telling me he had no talent? Yep, no talent. It was all heart. I'm like, <laughs> so there's dude, some I felt like I gave it all heart. And I got told I had some talent. I didn't do shit compared to him. So There may be a little teeny squeak of truth in that in his Supercross skills, but outdoor, like, like I literally... Most guys I could keep up with for a lap or two no matter what. I couldn't keep up with that sucker for a straightaway. I mean, he he was so fast everywhere. It was stupid. Yeah, yeah. He, he he embarrassed some people, including me. <laughs> he, no, I'm serious. Like there were times you came back and you're like, uh, half a second, a second, maybe. But he lapped the entire four. field at Millville. He lapped the entire field twice at Daytona. Yeah, I mean, uh, so yeah. I anyway. said he should have gotten first, second, and third in those races. Yeah. Nobody else should get any trophies. He should have got all three of them. All right, so 2000. And he would have thrown the other two away. Yeah. 2000 Aww, didn't go. It's the Ricky show again, huh? <laughs> <laughs> stop. Just stop. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get through this so we don't, it doesn't go six hours. 
If I let Donnie and G, I'll just keep talking. <laughs> this will never end. We'll run out of, you know, storage Tape. space on the thing. You have to get a new hard drive. Yours was a great show. I don't know what the hell you're complaining about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My show, I didn't even get to talk. These two just talked the whole time. <laughs> we, did, we, we told Ping's story for him. <laughs> we should have him back on so he can tell us about his yeah. story. Yeah. That'd how be was cool. it? How what, how'd it go? Anywho, moving on. So 2000 was no good. That bike sucked for you. For me. Yeah. I mean, and John Dowd, too. And he, so at the end of the year, were you like, well, okay, I'm done with this team. Did they talk to you about staying? Well, I'm 30 years old, too. That that doesn't help. No. N- not me. Plus that number. When you go from 29 to 30, yeah. I think at that time so it was. Now I'm going to be 30. Um, I've ridden for, I've ridden almost every all four bikes, you know. Uh, you should have looked at KTM. Yeah, so that wasn't an option <laughs> at the time, and and I was thirty, and I was like, well, I'm not gonna ride, I'm not gonna ride for free, right. um, just why? I, I had some money saved up by then. I wasn't gonna ride for free. I wasn't gonna spend my own money and take a chance and and waste a bunch of money. Yeah, no. Um, so I I I didn't do anything. I, I went to uh, I made made good lo- money local races, uh, Victory Sport, Sam Gammon's races. <clears throat> made some money there. What? Oh, where, what's that? Uh, it's just it's just the South Central area. Like Sam Gammon has Muddy Creek. Okay. But he has like um, Mega Series and Ultra Series. Oh, races. like that shootout. He's a shootout race or something. I don't know. It wasn't necessarily a shootout, but they they just have good good purse okay. money. And then the contingency money was good. I I, I rode a uh, a Yamaha 250F and a CR 250. Yeah, and rode both 125 and 250 Pro Classic. Um, local races and made made decent money. Um, I went and raced a GNCC, which was a lot of fun. I raced uh, a lot of enduro, Citra Southeastern Trail Rider Association enduros in South Carolina. Had a lot of fun with that. Um, so if you had a lot of fun, you, you didn't think like maybe try pursue this as a sort of winding down part of your career? The off-road stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I, I considered it. And that's why I went to those races to show I could win. Tell us, tell us about the GNCC race. Um... So I went to Muddy Creek and raced at Muddy Creek, and I think Damon Bradshaw was even there, and uh, I think he won like the. Anyway, we we he won one class, I won the other class, and Mike Brown. I mean, there's there, it's it's yeah. legit. You go to a local race and you're a factory guy, you better tighten up your shorts because yeah, y- you're supposed to win. But these local guys have their full blown race bikes. You're on your practice bike. Yeah. And they know the track inside they, out. And they get the whole shot. And at the end of the first lap, you're going, oh, no. That's, I mean, that's I mean, their chance to be big, Larry Ward. Big trouble. Yeah. Uh, what it was Kevin Walker? I yeah. think I was so fast for two laps that any local southeastern track is retarded. Yeah. Uh, Jim Neese was a good one. His son Luke's racing now. Um, so then I did this GNCC race. And. Uh, I get down there, and Mike Kudrowski's a factory Suzuki guy, but they told me Shane Watts, KTM, was the man. and uh, He was. Yeah, and I said, okay. And they said, if you can get anywhere close to him, just follow him and uh, do the best you can do. You know, So I hauled butt from like 7th or 8th. You got to do a dead engine start, which was odd. But anyway, I get up, and I get all the way up to 2nd by the end of the first lap, and I'm right when I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Shane's not that far in front of me. I'm using his lines because uh, by the second lap, there's mud ruts and stuff everywhere. And uh, I'm doing good, but I didn't know anything about racing off-road, and I blew by all these guys through sand berms and stuff and clogged up my air filter. And when I pulled the skin, you, you have a filter skin. What were you riding? What bike? Uh, a CR250. Thank goodness, because in my opinion, Honda motors are, are very, very strong. And any other bike to me, the, the crank would have went out with as much sand as that thing sucked. Because I found cat turds in there, literally. There was so much sand in there that there was cats pooping in my motor. <laughs> it was like a litter box. That's, I'm kidding. So... Uh, <laughs> Some people are like, wow. At the end of the second lap, I'm like all the way back to like 35th because my, my, when I pulled my filter skin, the, the, wire, the wire pulled through the skin, Straight so it stayed out, on. Yeah. Um, and I limp it all back, bull, 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 won't go, limp it all the way back, get into the pit area. And the, the guys that were helping me uh, pat me on the back, and they're like, oh, you did good. I'm like, I did good. It's not over. You know, there's still two hours left. And uh, I'm like, change the filter. And like, well, we don't have an air filter. And I'm like, well. Well, why didn't you just pull the skin off? Well, because when we opened it up, the whole, it had pulled the whole, I think the whole air filter fell off. And it was just all Come. pure oh. sand in there. So I remember taking off my gloves and a, kid, a local kid, Ashley Brewer from South Carolina, uh, he grabbed the filter and he washed the filter in gas. 
And he's like, give me some oil, give me some oil. And I'm changing gloves and goggles, you know, and trying to get ready to go. And uh, they didn't have no filter oil. So he, like, finds some motor oil and dumps motor oil all over it. And it won't start because it's so saturated in oil. And they pushed me. And I think it was Steve, maybe Steve Hatch's wife or uh, what's the other guy? Rodney 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 Smith, Smith. maybe, his wife at the time. I, I, I remember, like, she was one of them helping. And they're all pushing me. And after about, like, 80 yards, it, blah, 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 it takes off, and I'm like two minutes behind last place. And, uh, and I take off wide open like like it's a heat race at a Supercross. I mean, wide open, and uh, not realizing there's two more hours left to go. And I caught all the way back up to second place on the last lap, but Watts was gone. He was, he was really good at that stuff. And uh, filter clogs up again, and I limped it in. I remember... It, like Jimmy Jarrett or somebody fourth, I'd, I'd pass him for fourth, and then we get to a straightaway. And and but I ended up getting fifth. I did get fifth. And you talked about bones, you know, never tell me the truth. That is one day. I don't think he was ever a huge Larry Ward fan. I'm sure I was a pain in the ass when <clears throat> when they helped me. I was I was struggling. And then when I got to where I was successful, I I, I wasn't with Pro Circuit anymore. So. But I remember, like, I came from so far back, even Bones was out there rooting for me and cheering me on because I was was really doing good. And that's the thing where you maybe don't get along with your family, but you stick up for them in a fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Bones is a Supercross guy. Bones had nothing but good things to say about you. And he's a Supercross motocross guy, and here's a motocross guy just came from, like, last to to do pretty good. And ended up getting fifth, and... uh, Hands were completely destroyed. destroyed and uh, Dude, three hours is a long time on a yeah. bike, so going then, that fast. Yeah, so then right after that, so that's what I was doing, was I was trying to see if, you know, even if I could make a, a hundred grand or 200 grand racing off-road, that would have been better than not doing anything. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I was planting the seed for. But Kyle Lewis called me and asked me if I was interested in racing for Team, team Moto Triple X. And... Uh, I said, I'd, I'd love to. And I said, and I really like this 250F. I like the 250F, which it, it was great at times. There was a lot of growing pains, you know, the carburetor falling out of the back of the air box. Yeah. And uh, there were some different problems with it. Um, <laughs> I had a frame. They had the oil in the frame, yeah. the original yeah. ones. And uh, they bead blasted my frame and filled it all full of sand and didn't get it all out. Yeah, uh-huh. that, that, that happened, stuff like that. So there was growing pains. But... Um, I had success w- w- with that bike. Um, you know, Grant, Grant and I had a great that uh, Red Bud in 01. Um, Pastrana, the first moto, had a great, great thing. And this is, you know, I was sitting at home racing local races and stuff during Supercross when Pastrana was winning every East Coast round. And then to battle with him and battle with Grant, um, it kind of got me going again. And, and I, I was successful. So and, yeah. then, and you were good there again. And that weekend. And they were, and Moto Triple X was really cool. I don't... I see on Instagram that there's still somebody that has something to do with it. I don't know if it's Kurt Hall It's Jordan Burns. Okay, and yeah. that's what I figured. And they were so cool because they just were so stoked to have a race team. They had absolutely nothing to do with it. They didn't care. Um, Kyle Lewis really was the brains behind it and kept it going, and Alan, Alan Brown also. But yeah. uh, um, there you guys. They, they gave me uh, decent stuff. I probably didn't have great stuff, but I was I was good. And even '03 when we both rode 450 all year, I had a lot of fourth places in Supercross at 33 years old yeah. on a on a st- bike, st- yeah. stock 450 Hon. And I was I'd always almost get Ernie. Uh, I remember always almost getting Ernie, but Ernie was on a factory 250 still, and he'd always always squeak it out. But I got a lot of fourth places that year, so. Well, at Bud's Red Bud, you made history in two ways. First guy, only guy still to ever win a race, a pro race, in three different decades. Yeah, and th- and that's that's cool, but that's just luck that I started. It is, and it isn't. Well, end, end but it one. speaks to your longevity, which yeah, is crazy. That's, that's cool. Uh, eighty nine was it? Eighty nine. Eighty nine. Yep. Ninety nine. Well, ninety eight as well. Well. 89, 90, 90, 98. Well, yeah, but I want nationals in between. I want like 92 and 90. 01. Yeah, but from, yeah, for, so that long of a gap between first win and last win, 89 to 01. And you were the first winner on 250F, right? Yep. 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 450? Well, at least outdoor. 450 as well? Like first no. four stroke winner? I don't know about I don't I don't think so because Henry uh, Henry probably had that no because well I I know O one Ernie won the West Coast on the two fifty F but outdoors yeah you would have been the first because first it was me 
Pretty me, cool. Pastrana, that had won up until then. Didn't Henry win in 98 on the four-stroke? But on a big bike. Four on, four on, a big bike. on a big yeah. bike. Yeah. 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 This was 250. Yeah. Right. To win a 125 national on a four-stroke. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's all stuff I'm proud of. And uh, some, some of the numbers are just coincidence that I started in 89 and ended in 03. But, but it's still fun. Yeah, yeah. Numbers and, don't lie. That's what we always say. Yeah. I know you're trying to downplay it, but <laughs> that is gnarly to think that you won in three different decades. Did you ever uh, have any funny stories with the Moto Triple X guys? Did they ever, ever go to any of their concerts or anything weird like that? No, not really. Uh, the, I know. Uh, the worst thing that ever happened to me when I was on that team was uh, I was we were testing up at uh, Castillo Ranch, and it was the day, I don't know if you've ever seen it on, uh, I think one of the Krusty Demons of Dirt or one of the, those type of movies, but uh, Dave Castillo oh, yeah. is oh, doing yeah. the big, huge Pastrana jump over the hill, and when he lands, his front wheel blows out. And like I, you can see on the video, I'm the first one. I, I I go up there and I lay my bike over, and I I, I don't even want to go. I, th I thought he was I thought he was dead actually, and he he was pretty messed up. And uh, I actually reached out to him on Instagram saying something about this or that about the morphine and. Uh, he said, "I sure miss that morphine." <laughs> it was it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, when you're in that much pain, you do miss it. He's lucky because that, that was a high speed jump, oh, it was and, and he straight, had to have he had to have rolled hill. like tumbled Forever. down that hole. You hill. also had the momentum of the continuation, and the hill, of the hill never stopped. Yeah. It just kept going and going and going. Yeah, normally it would run out to flat, and you'd come to a stop. But he, back but real quick, back to the Triple X guys because they they gave us good equipment, and uh, I, I had fun. That was that was I was at. It in my thirties racing and, and being competitive, that, that was a lot of fun. And, uh, they, uh, you know, I don't know what happens when you leave teams, but you never really get to say your thanks or goodbye. But yeah. those guys, were, you're, those guys were you're always cool. doing this. And then one day you sit back and go, Oh, kind of like you do now. You reflect, and you're like, shit, maybe I should reach right. out to him or I forgot about that guy. Yeah, but or, but yeah. Pretty, I think that was pretty cool for both of you, you know, cause, uh, um, Jordan and who, who's the, Eric Sandin. Kurt Haller. And Kurt Haller. Those, Eric Sandin was the no effects drummer. Jordan's a strung out drummer. And then Kurt was, how was he involved with them? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. Anyway, uh, they, were, they were just huge fans of racing. Right. And so to have a guy, one of their guys go out and be, yeah, they were win so, a national and be yeah. top five in 4D Supercross. So I mean, I'm geez. always excited when I win or do good to call my mom. But I was really excited to call Kurt Haller and, and let the team know that. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, I know you think this is just kind of a joke to you, and you just want to have somebody out there, but we actually won a national today. It was, it was pretty it's a cool. big deal, yeah. Pretty That's cool. wild, man. You think about what those guys did. They won a Supercross yep. with Deegan. They yep. won a national with you. Yep. They had guys consistently in the top top ten, you know, e with even, Kyle. And even the next year, um, I don't think I told this story on the on the show yet, but about Bubba, about James Stewart in O two 2 at Washougal. Oh, yeah. At, on the same triple X uh, moto triple x yzf 250 uh -huh. i won the first moto at washougal and uh james stewart in his interview says the old man got me yeah and i love that story yeah <laughs> you were 32 and he was 16 yep, so yep. exactly twice his age yeah yep. that's awesome all right so at the end of that year did you did you decide okay i'm done or was there just no more opportunities like i mean you were what 33 at that point 32 yeah uh i think what happened if I, if I remember the right right years and stuff, is for some reason, even though I was really good on a 450 outdoors and motocross, uh, supercross and motocross in 03, for some reason, I decided to ride, I was going to ride like East Coast Lights on a 250F the next year, 04. And I don't know, I don't really know what I was thinking because just being a top five or six guy in a 450 is way better than, you know, a top three or four guy on, on a light so i don't especially at 34 years old so i don't know what i was thinking but you probably thought i could win ah uh, i don't i don't know maybe <laughs> that might have been what i was thinking but didn't, but didn't james end up on the east coast in 04 uh well 04 it was uh hansen was pretty good i think oh james yeah it was james yeah yeah he didn't he but, dominate that yeah he dominated 04. and i i trained and i rode and i had i had a 250f honda and i it, i don't think it would have been competitive I, it, it just didn't it didn't have enough power uh, but I crashed and broke my collarbone the week before the first race. Uh -huh. And uh, I think I went to Pontiac um, and didn't even make the main, and, and that, that I was over it. That was the end of it? Yeah. Where you're just like, I'm done. Yeah, I mean, I, I was 
riding pretty good and people are just blowing by me because the thing was it's pretty much just a stock 250f and at that time like the yamaha Tro bikes were like really fast yeah. and there was a lot of progression quickly in yeah. those four strokes and, and and my bike di didn't have so much so and i yeah. just broke a collarbone and went through that and uh there i was there was no no money any left over anymore so i just was yeah it was it time. was about time was that you, you was get that to a, a point was where, that tough for you was that a tough call to make or no, you kind of been building to it. I had been building because at the end of 2000, I was pretty much over it. And then to get another, you know, moto win, a national win, uh, it's like okay, it, it pulls okay. you along it, a couple of okay years, now. and then it, yeah, yeah, it's okay now. Yeah, I would have thought when you said you were okay walking away, because just listening to you, you've talked about a few times that it's crossed your mind that maybe this is it, or maybe it's not worth it. So I think when you have those conversations, it at least helps. Yeah, prepare you for a little bit. You're yeah. never really prepared. I think we were we were all thought we were prepared, maybe. Well, some aren't. I wasn't. But but I was 33, 30, 33 years old so too. You, and you had your shit together. And then and then I did race one more time. Um, the last time I think I saw you, I went to Dortmund, oh, yeah, yeah. Germany, and I'd been riding four strokes for several years, and uh, I got a last minute call, like literally on a Thursday or Wednesday, and you got to fly out Thursday. Um, <laughs> And I get to Germany, and I, I have gear. I have, like, one set of gear. Um, and there's a KX250 two-stroke sitting there, and I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> so like, Shoot, I forgot to ask those details before I got on the plane. Literally the first two nights, I did not even make the main event. Embarrassed, just, I, I, I can't ride this thing. I was arm pump and struggling. And the third night, I asked him if I could have a bigger rear sprocket, you know, to give it more loading. It was really ruddy and, and loamy. Super sticky. And Always I went to over a there. Bigger, and Mike Alessi was there. I mean, there was some. I think Alessi was winning. Yeah, there were some okay guys there. And uh, I went to that bigger rear sprocket, and I don't know what happened, but <laughs> I hole shot it and led every lap of every race and won the main that night. That was the last time I ever raced. <laughs> yeah. DMQ, and I remember, DMQ And win. I literally remember standing on the podium with my trophy going, "This, you better enjoy it because yeah. this is the last time. And that was it. That was it. Last time I ever raced. When you, when you did you literally think when you held, held that trophy like this is the last time? Yeah, for I, sure. I knew the last time I'd be on the podium for sure. So you stood there for a while, like get a couple extra. <laughs> this is literally the last time. No, the the the, the file Kawasaki team. Yeah, I remember. They, the they were so happy because they thought they had Larry Ward, King of Europe, that they were going to do good. And after the first two nights, they're like, <laughs> this guy's not even making the main. Yeah, Larry. Ward sucks, <laughs> and then and then I won, and they were so happy. Yeah. Uh, and they think, what is it? Uh, uh, what Wiener Schnitzels or something? We went and ate or something. I don't know what you eat in Germany, but huh. but they, yeah, were, they uh, were happy. Schnitzels, yeah, like pork schnitzels. Yeah. They like the schnitzels. Yeah, and that I I remember that weekend. I didn't make the main event in any night. <laughs> that was the last I raced in the Czech Republic the next weekend. You were and that new, was you were a newlywed though. I know what you were doing. <laughs> well. I, that solidified. That he was, was practicing, just not on his dirt bike. I did a Supercross the following weekend in Czech Republic, and I was done. That was the last one I ever did. And Chad Pedersen came. I talked him into coming. He broke his he leg. He cross-rode it, jumped off the track, landed flat-footed on the concrete, broke both his ankles. So I had to send him to the airport in a walker. <laughs> All the best, bud. <laughs> yeah, it was like, good luck, Keep dude. your feet up. Well, when you get <laughs> on the plane. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. Yeah, that was <laughs> a next, rough Next one. time I call. Did you have as much fun as I did? <laughs> <laughs> So then what? what? What happened in the years following then? Like, how did you, how did you deal with, um, what did you do? I remember right after Supercross, um, I, had a, I had a wakeboard boat. I, uh, I, I, I'll be honest, I, 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 for about eight, nine months, I drank, drank a little bit, um, visited some nudie bars. Uh, come hunting season, I'd get in my motor home and I'd go... South Dakota, uh, Nebraska, New Mexico. I'd go all over, you know, like three months hunting. Um, the drinking thing really wasn't for me. I, I didn't like, I, I knew I was, you know, when you're doing something wrong and you know it, uh, eventually you, you, you're like, okay, I'm, yeah. I, I'm, I can, I, I, I'm wasting my time. I did a couple, I taught a couple schools, local, local kids to stay riding. I, I stayed riding. Um, I started shooting uh, sporting clays, com comp competition shotgun stuff, and I got no I, shit. I got into that. We noticed that um, today. Did I'll, you notice when he'd hit a pigeon, it would go? 
dust <laughs> in the dust <laughs> and clay, we'd hit it and just like a little no, wing but, would come but out i would claim it even if i saw a little piece just <laughs> fa- i'm like nailed it we needed some salsa for his little chips <laughs> 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 that's right that was the wad you were that was she, that you saw not the Dang, little salt pigeon. shaker yeah. as well so clay pigeons in case anybody animal lovers he said pigeons but we were shooting clay, clay targets we weren't shooting pigeons Anyway, today anyway. <laughs> so, um, so I oh, you got to, is that when you got into RC car racing too? Yeah, so so I, I chased. Uh, I learned I learned how to fly. I was proud of that. I, I got my private pilot's license. I learned how to fly, um, and then I met my wife, and I didn't know she was going to be my wife. But I was out on the on my boat on the river one day drinking, and you know just see li- good living, things do come from living drinking. a life that most 23 year olds do but i was racing and serious and now i'm 34 and i'm kind of a perv because i'm You're the old at guy my, out my on wife's the boat. like 12 years younger than me <laughs> and uh i looked over there and i said damn i said i believe i just give that girl a ring and take my chances and uh saw you know talked to her she was dating somebody i was dating a lot of somebodies and uh <laughs> and we, we never, we, you know, we said hi and stuff a couple times, but and then I went to, I was in old Mexico, uh, deer hunting, whitetail hunting, unsuccessful. We didn't find what I was looking for. But when I got home to Texas, I had a voicemail. I you know, but you know, to Texas. Fo- you were- yeah. So my phone, I was in Mexico, old Mexico. Oh, oh okay. And so when I got come back across the border Texas. into okay. Texas, I had a voicemail and it was from a, a, fr- a mutual friend we had and Jennifer, who's my wife saying, Hey, haven't seen you around in a couple months, you know, wondering if you're still around. And I'm like. Okay, that's really weird. Why is why is this why is this super hot chick calling this old man? And and I called her. And when I got home, I, we went and had Mexican food dinner, and uh, she ordered an appetizer. And and like my wife is beautiful, and the waiter was so mesmerized by her, he never brought our food. He forgot to bring the food because he was just. That's what I tell her anyway. <laughs> and uh, the next day, I like I, your moves. The, the next day, I met her for a coffee, and uh, and I, I've been with her for. Almost 15, 14 years now. I've been married for eight years, and have a beautiful. But before, but then after I met her, uh, that's when I got into the RC car thing. Okay. Um, and Adam Drake uh, was the team manager for Team Losi at the time, um, and he he helped me out a little bit just because I was Larry Ward. Um, but then through the years we became friends, and he helped me more and more and more. And I, I got fairly competitive. I, I never was a, a a top pro guy, but I was a decent pro guy in the, in the southeast and okay. when i turned 40 i was a, a real legit plus 40 car guy and, and i got proficient and i got smarter and was there money in that no no oh, money okay. it's just but it's so much fun i heard yeah. some of those guys it, oh there's money in, the, in it in for the, the real guys yeah yeah they, there was a guy that lived near us and went to his place and that and he was a losi sponsored guy and turns out he's like no no we get i get like a, a good base and bonuses and i'm like yeah, but there's a hand. You think it's a small exactly. handful. Exactly. I said to him, that's crazy. And he said, yeah, it's about a handful like of people. Ryan Mayfield, Adam Drake still does pretty good. Um, I, I, I'm, I've been out of it for about five years since I moved to Oklahoma. But uh, but it's it, it's a thing where it's a whole another level, the pros versus the local pros. Is that right? Yeah. It, it's, it's just like moto, right? Like a it's local just like pro moto. versus a local pro looks good going to Anaheim. Until it, a local pro goes to Anaheim to guy, and yeah. he looks like Willie Lump Lump. <laughs> and he's not so good, so... Uh, yeah, Nick huh. Schmidt was faster than Dungey at Milestone. Yeah. yeah. Well, so so I got an RC car racing, and that that was a great fill, filler. So, Did something. you feel like you were though you were missing stuff? I mean, you're doing all these things to fill time, but well, I like the shotgun thing, but it, it got really expensive to travel. The shotgun shells, the sign up, it, it, it was pretty expensive. Um, I tried to get my wife involved in that. She liked to shoot a little bit, but wasn't into going and sitting all day in the sun at, at a tournament. She wanted nothing to do with the RC car thing, but luckily it was called the Badlands in Myrtle Beach. I had some friends that we had a unbelievable facility 10 minutes from the house. So my wife was great with me going. I'd work on the track one night. We'd practice one night. We'd race on the weekends. And then we'd usually have one race at Myrtle Beach a month and then travel a couple weekends at the month. And that was a great f- filler for the motocross, missing motocross, because it was almost, it was on dirt. It was gas powered vehicles yeah. um it was motocross except for you didn't have to train and you didn't get hurt <laughs> yeah um, you watch yeah. the car case the double not yourself right so so that i, I really really enjoyed that but you still spending money traveling and, yeah. and, and uh there, it just seemed like there was still like i still had even though i was had a successful motocross career it just felt like there was something 
something else that I was going to do with my life. Uh, I didn't know what it was at the time, but now, now I, now I know it's, it's the Stonewood It's this place. It's running this place, building this place, uh, entertaining the people on the weekends. Uh, I'm really comfortable here and we've been here for five and a half years and it's had like everything in life ups and downs, but we're at a really good place right now. And this so was it, turned out was awesome. it not too long after that, that you, you found this place and came out here? Yeah. So I got a call just to ask if, so originally this was a partnership. There was a partner next door, um, who I shot the sporting clays with and, and we were hunting buddies for a long time. Um, and he asked me to come out here and just help guide some hunts and try to just bring back a little bit of revenue for how much they were spending in feed and fuel and stuff like that. And so my wife and I and my little six month old baby got in the motor home and drove out here and we were only going to be here a couple months. Well, something happened with the general manager that was here and they moved on and they asked me to, to take over and do everything. And I'm like, Holy cow, I guess. Um, and I did, and we, we enjoyed it. We weren't settled though. We were in, in a double wide or in the, my motor home and, it, it was it was just it was awkward. It was hard, hard a little hard on my relationship. It's like being in limbo, just. and and there was a lot of um, because it, there was a partnership. I was always in the middle of mm. the two owners, um, and whoever was right or wrong, I was always in the middle, and and that was stressful. Um, and so finally, the the partner split, and you all saw the fence down the middle, and it yeah. split. And I chose to come to this side, even though him and I were originally friends, the old partner. Um, it just it just wasn't the environment I wanted to work in and I'm comfortable over here and we've grown this place uh the first year just totally transformation built it into what it is right now and now the last couple of years has been last year has been really fun uh work all week in your when your work clothes dress up to your play clothes or your dress clothes for the weekend to entertain the guests and take care of people it's, it's fun yeah it's been a lot of fun is that where they're mostly booking on the weekends yeah yeah a lot of um corporate retreats like to do Thursday to Friday and so they're home on Saturday Okay. Um, but private people are more weekends. Mm. Okay. So. Huh. And then since then, since I redid my contract last Christmas, my wife and I have, uh, we're completely sold out in South Carolina. Ho house at Myrtle, Myrtle's Inlet's gone. The, the farm I had there is gone. And we just bought 140 acres, a nice new house, nice shop. And it's been a game changer for me emotionally, mentally. When I, I love working here, but when I get home, it's like, I, I drive in the driveway and literally say, I still cannot believe this is my place. It, it's that nice. Like, yeah. That's cool. I really, really like it. My wife and daughter are out in the front yard. There's chickens and horses and stuff running all around. And yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm really happy and thankful right now. And, but it all comes from motocross. I, I wouldn't be in this position if it, if it wasn't for oh, motocross for sure. and, the, and yeah. the life I had with motorcycles. Well, I think we could all say that. And, and, uh, you guys needed to, the timing was right, right? Because Lakeland, your daughter's going to start school. Right. Soon now next year? No, she she'll be in first grade this okay. coming year. So, so you guys need months, to, huh? So w my wife told me you better. <coughs> my wife's my wife's pretty tough. You better figure out what you're gonna do, big boy, because I'm not moving <laughs> Lakeland around in school. And and so it was a transition for my wife too because uh, she's born and raised in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and never left. And her mom and dad and her friends are all still there. And I move her to, I mean, we're eight miles from the Tiger King Park, so we're. <laughs> It, we're out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, but thankfully the school that she picked for my daughter, um, the local rec center, the gym, and then the horse industry around here, and and now with our new place, she, my wife's really, I, I think she's really comfortable, and we're really happy here. That's awesome, man. So I love it. But and but but life is is tough. I mean, you can retire with, you know, four or five million dollars yeah. from a great racing career and think you're golden, and one bad injury or a sickness in your family or a stock market crash in 07 or or anything can happen and even ricky johnson i heard in some interview has to work for money now and he was the greatest when i when i was a yeah. young kid with 26 wins um so you still have to well even if you retired like you said with a few million it runs out. It runs Especially out. Especially because if you've made that money, you don't live on a shoestring budget. Right. You've gotten used to, yeah, you know, having the car, the and house, and even if you try to cut back to a shoestring budget, you have car insurance, house insurance. There's just those monthly yeah. bills that never stop. So, so, and I was smart. I knew. I, I saw that I was starting to cut into my, yeah, m my equi My, I was burning up Your more principle. more than just yeah. my interest, and I was eating into some principal. So I I had to make a change and. Uh, that's when I started looking for something else, and then this all you get. 
you got to be real careful what you pray for or wish for because uh, stuff comes true because I, I needed something else, and now I, I feel like this is for sure what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. Yeah, like I've said to you before, I feel like you're living your dream, man, like part two. Yeah. So this is perfect for you. I, I did, you know, there was 10 years in there that I, I maybe wasted or, or did what I had to, did what I did, but from junior high, we're trained and we never yeah. get to go to our high school prom. Mm -hmm. we, we don't get to do anything for fun. So I finally let loose and had fun in my late thirties. Um, but it didn't take me long to figure out that I needed to get yeah, back, yeah. back being serious and yeah. getting married and, and having the relationship and, and a family m makes you uh, a lot more humble than, and, yeah. and want to work for something more too. Yeah. I want to make her proud on, on something besides, Oh, you're Larry Ward, the motorcycle racer. I want to go, Hey, that place is nice. You, you, yeah, you've done yeah. a great job there. Yeah. Well, I think she can say well, that. And you know, like it, we, we talk about this all the time, but Ricky Carmichael probably doesn't need to work anymore, right. but and Ricky doesn't need to work. <laughs> guaranteed. No. So, but, but he but does. He has he, to he, look at all these him. things he's doing. It's like nobody, nobody wants to just sit home and do nothing no. like that. That isn't good for a, a yeah. man. You know no. what I mean? You, you want, you've got to have goals. You've got to have things that get you out of bed in the morning. So for sure. And that's just, I, I hope are. that younger riders, if they happen to listen to this, will just keep that in the back of their head and go, okay, what, what are some other interests I have? And what could I maybe do just in my free time to kind of prep for that? If I had any, if anyone cares or, or would listen, there's no one that's going to take care of you. If you think you're going to have this big motorcycle career or any career at all, you need to have, I'm not going to call it a backup plan, but you need to think about yeah, what's right. next because your exit strategy basically. there's no there's no manual um the promoters don't help you your sponsors don't help you when you're done you're done and i, w I wish you know i often think about I, I got my private pilot's license was one of the first things i did and if i would have been real serious and had a plan i could have maybe not been a commercial pilot like at an airline but a private private, pilot, private sure. uh, carrier like a cargo carrier or something like that which would be a good living or you i think you picked an awesome career um but you had to know what you wanted to be before you could be a fireman um and, and that's worked out pretty good for you so yeah. uh I almost wish, you know, especially with all the concussions and now the kids dropping out of school early, this sport does kind of need, in my opinion. Well, they are making a change to 18 being the new uh, right. limit to but start still, racing pro. I, I think I, that'll I, help. I think there needs to, I would like it if someday there could be some sort of a committee with maybe some yeah, yeah, some yeah. old retired racers that could sit down with these young kids. And, you know, I'm not saying that Feld has to have an employment strategy for ex motocross racers, but at least something. at least give them some some guidance. Yeah. You know, because they're all adults that are working, providing this this racing circuit for us, and we're little kids that we they don't especially now they don't let you get out of your shell. You have to eat this, ride this, do this, and then all of a sudden you're 28 years old, and they say, "Oh, here, good luck." Bye. And you're like yeah. a little 15 year old kid going, "What do I do?" Yeah. yeah. So it'd be nice, but that's getting a little, little deep and serious. But no, it's, it's true stuff that. you think I mean, about when about you get older. With, with at, at least in the NFL, these other sticking balls, they at least have. Well, they have a lot. They have unions. They have people that help them. Pensions. Hey, here's what they you should be doing for investments. Doesn't mean they all listen because a lot of those guys go broke. But we've tried too, but. so many times to do a union and, and the contractual agreements with your, the factory versus their contract with the promoters. It it, it doesn't work. So. Maybe just a guidance, you know, just a counseling form, you know. There's guys like Jeff Stanton who have who've done it right and saved money that I, I think Jeff's a, a cool guy. I think he would definitely be willing to help. So, you know, maybe it's something we think about. If we don't start thinking about it, it'll never happen. It, so. It's something that's lacking in our sport. How to invest your money that you're making now, and what are you going to do when you're done racing? Because it, it will come to an end. Well, and you will, will have to have another career. You can't just retire at 30. And live out the next 70 years of your life. R Ricky's another... Uh, we use Ricky a lot tonight. Uh, I know you like that. <laughs> Ricky Carmichael show. <laughs> well, well, it's the RC it's show. It's the RC show, so... <laughs> <laughs> but I think he always claims that his best investment ever was from... Uh, what's the... Uh, Earl May and the and the some advice that Earl May gave him. So that was just advice from a friend what to do with your money. You know what I mean? That was not... Which was what? The car washes or what? I, I, from what I understand, it's some like quick lube truck stops for, for the big tractor trailers quick, okay. quickly. But I don't, I don't know exactly what I'm talking about, but I think the car wash is something new. Okay. So, well, 
but we don't all have there's Earl, there's nobody helping Earl you, Mays that you yeah. know want to help us and don't take advantage of us. You yeah, know? the agents get you as much money as they can get you because it's self serving. They want a higher percentage, right? A higher amount of their percentage. And once they get it for you, they're like, all right, kick some ass. See you next year when I'm going to go. You know, there's no help. Well, there's another option on, on some of these, like, like, say, Yamaha, Honda, or places where you know you'll always get paid. Instead of cramming that mass amount of money in a two-year deal, what if it was X amount for two years and then deferred payments when That's you what have Bob less Hanna did. I was going to say, Hanna I've heard that. rumors of Bob Hanna doing that. He did it. So that way you're not paying highest tax amount each year and you've got residual income and when it's not sitting in your bank account I don't know about you guys but I, I know I'm, I'll be the first to admit it M money burns a hole in my pocket the best thing I can do is shift it to someone that's going to yeah. invest it because if it sits there I'm like what but can I get wait, wait, that's the problem there's another problem grand. though will they listen see my that, wife tells me I could live in a cardboard box with a rock and never buy a single thing so I'd have a whole buttload of money and savings and live meagerly if I could but I was someone that was different I didn't really come from money so when I got it I was like this is sick you know like I did I enjoyed it but I had to try and reel that in and I remember people saying you're wasting money I'm like no I'm not they're like you don't need three cars a year I'm like yeah but I want them. <laughs> that one got dirty. <laughs> I had to trade it in. <laughs> my, I need my, an oil change. You justify everything what, how you, you do in your head. What was it James Stewart said? My ass don't have to touch the same leather in one week because he had like seven different cars. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to run out. You think that's running out? I have no idea. I, I hope you, not. It, ha well, yeah. it has to. There's no way. I, I know they don't sell enough seven gear <laughs> to sustain... <laughs> Not sitting your ass in the same leather. Like, How much do you ride feet? anymore? So I have periods where I don't ride at all. Uh, lately, for some reason, I've been, I've been, I've been riding a little, a little bit. So, I mean, do you, so, do you miss it when you don't so ride? So the, the 50 mark was like, wait a minute, what? I'm 50. That don't sound right. So <laughs> uh, I've, been, I've been trying to stay in better shape, take better care of myself, and there's no better workout for us with the arthritis yeah. and the injuries than riding. You feel like a million dollars. Uh, d days when when we work out in the gym, if I ride that morning, I, I'm a monster in the gym. Versus if I come in there all <laughs> stoved yeah. up and stiff. So how fast do you pump up with all those new muscles you got? No, no I'm not <laughs> not new bad. Muscles. So I, I'm a little smarter now. I, I primarily just ride a 250F. Uh, yeah. it doesn't doesn't kill me. It's I feel sorry for the bike because I you know I'm a little heavier than I once was, but. Um, they're built to handle it, though. Yeah. The 250F now I've got, we've got, We both have kind of given up on the 450s. It's, just, yeah. it's too much damn bike. If uh, he had a really yeah. nice 250, so I took it off his hands. Yeah. I'm a nice guy. We've heard three times. It's really good. <laughs> so what 250s do you have, Pig? Uh, He's I, like, I got other ones. I got a YZ125. I just need some time to go ride it. Yeah. Um, you got competition. I saw Will Hans making an oh, awesome new one. A 252-stroke? Do you see that? Oh, it's a 250. It's a 250. Oh, okay. We're going to test it in uh, a couple weeks. It's nice. insane. What's going to be so special about it? It's all like race team parts, carbon He's been working tank. on this thing for like uh, six, okay. eight months. It's beautiful. So basically anything that could go on a YZ250 yes. is going to be on it. Okay. Yeah, he's, I'll show you a couple of photos of it. It's insane. Um, all right. So when you don't ride, do you miss it? Like I, I, there's some guys like Johnny O. Uh, Wardy kind of quit riding. RJ, he rides a little bit. His wrist hurts him. But, like, there's guys who just go, I'm done. And they never ride again. And yeah, I think, so man, how do you do that? Like, I miss it if I don't ride for a long time. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm good. With really? That. Yeah. So I, when I do ride, it's when the owner's family comes. And John, the owner, and his son, Parker, they both really like to ride a lot. And I feel like it's – I feel like they take really good care of me. And, and they do a lot for me. And riding is something that – I still am proficient at and have skills at that I can help them with. Yeah. And so I, I ride more just just to help them and make and, and make. Like, Otherwise, you just could take. I could care less. Wow. Um, if. Yeah, I, I I don't I just don't miss it that much. It's just, for me, it's too much. It's too much risk and not no reward at all. I, I'll ride two days in a row, and I, by the second day, I'm like, dang, I, I feel pretty good. I still okay. got it. <laughs> but what why? Am I, what am I going to do with that? Absolutely. But when you grease a corner or jump something just right, like, don't you go, man, that is such a cool feeling. And I can still do it at yeah, 50, but, even though I'm old also, as dirt. I also, over here the other day. Uh, that was a quiet little jab at you that missed it. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I thought I was in first gear, so I full-blown 
it hit it wide open, this big double that we have out here, and overjumped it because I was in second, and I overjumped it by like 30 feet, and my wrist has hurt ever since. So there's also that side to it, too. So. Yeah. Yeah, mm. I still feel good, and when I ride a couple days in a row, I think, like, dang, I'm still pretty good. But Start putting some phone you, calls out there? No. <laughs> what are you going to do at 50 years old? You Send know? them your resume. There's not a, PG, uh, a senior tour Motor, for Supercross. Moto Triple XL. And, and, I'm, <laughs> I, and this is no disrespect because I, I think it's cool that they did it, but the Fight Club thing, you know, no, I don't think people really want to watch 50-year-old guys go out there and, and ride I too much. I, thought, great the, idea. I yeah, thought the coolest thing was the sitting around the campfire just talking. Absolutely. That's fun. And, and that's what I talked about doing at Washougal in the, in the future. The riding so, is like, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. We would be better off doing something here and just, just dozing a little flat track. Pit or, bikes. Or pit bikes. Pit, yeah, bikes or pit bikes, bikes. Yeah, well, TTR 125. The smallest guy out here. I was just going to say. I was just going to say. He can touch the ground. <laughs> no, he can put both feet down flat. Just. Barely. Yeah. Oh, so PWs or pit bikes? <laughs> we can lower the pit bikes, too, to a PW. So Larry, if you sat on a PW, it'd be gone. <laughs> yeah, go up your ass. It'd, go, it'd be gone. Uh oh, let's try. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> all right, favorite race bike you had in all your years of racing? Mm, that's, 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 a, that's a tough one. Um, I, I did like the 97 Honda 250, CR 250. Um, Which you're so the funny. only human on the planet who yeah, probably I know, say that. I know. Um, I did like uh, actually ni 96, 97. Both both yeah. those Hondas were, were for different reasons. I liked them. Um, I, I did like that the YZF 250 01. I, I did like that bike, especially when you know you get it. You started gelling with it pretty just good. right. It, it I, I like that bike. I like my I think it was 80, 88 or 87 YZ 125. Yeah, I like I like that bike. That bike looked good. Yeah, I Those like bike that looked bike. Really good. Those are the red and white yeah. days that look pretty trick. I've been riding a, a, a Yamaha 250F, not a 220, but like a 17 model that, and I heard they've gotten even better. And oh yeah, it's out of the out of the box, it's so it's good. Yeah. The 2020, the stock ones, they're just stupid. They're so fast. You should so ride a modded torque. one. Like, they're really Yeah, good. especially when I build one into, like, a really titties race bike, and then Grant <laughs> buys it from me before I have a chance to really enjoy it. You should ride that. Bowie. I did. <laughs> it's amazing, dude. I'm telling you. You would love it. Okay, worst bike you ever raced. Worst race bike. <sighs> from your pro days. Yeah, so I, I hate to say it, and I did go at Cal I did at uh, Dallas Supercross a couple weeks ago. I actually went and talked to Bruce Sternstrom and, and, and talked about it. And it, I asked him about that. I heard about that frame change. And he fully told me the whole story. And it was legit, the story and everything. But I was building so much momentum, 96, 95 through 99. And I had so much hopes of Factory Kawasaki. And, 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 and it was just it was a career ender, I, ca I kept calling it. So 2000 KX250. Jeez. Huh. Was that the same? I'm trying to remember. Was it a? Was that the same bike Fro got hurt on with? No, he's he not a Yamaha. No, but when, when his, was his wrist also Yamaha, or was it? Wasn't he on the Cowie still? All I know is '97 Fro was unbelievable outdoors, and '99 he 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 was horrible. So yeah, '98 he was good too, and it, and the difference was that frame. Was he still on the Cowie? I, I thought ninety nine he was on that Yamaha. Mm, I thought. Oh, uh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I thought he. I thought he was there. Uh, well, I think they. I think it was ninety seven frame that was good, but ninety eight, ninety nine, two thousand, and what, what was bad. But I don't know why it huh. took him so long to figure it out. It's crazy. All right, so tell us about. And, uh, and there's no. I mean, there's there's good stuff about all most bikes. Er, early nineties, like my ninety Suzuki two fifty, I liked it. 91, 92, I, they, I didn't think they were so good. Mm. But And that's also just rider preference. You know, yeah, sometimes absolutely. like I, I, I've heard people, they're like, oh, you know, I'm not trying to bash the bike completely. I'm like, you didn't gel with it, or right. you couldn't find a setting that made you happy. So that's I'm, different to saying it sucked, but it just didn't work The for funniest you. thing ever, and a perfect example of that is in 2000, you know, Ricky's starting to do pretty good. And I'm like, well, let me ride his bike. And they're like, okay, go ride it. And I'm like, well, you're, you're kidding, right? I said, you're going to at least raise the handlebar nope just go ride it <laughs> so i get on this little <laughs> little thing <laughs> and i go like two corners and i'm like this is a joke 
Yeah. It, there's no way. Even ride it there's out. no way. There's no way I could ride it. Yeah. Yeah, he had lowered subframe cut seat. Higher drop, foot pegs. Yeah. Bars were Honda they were touching the front fender. Cowie they were back <laughs> on the on the or vice versa, maybe vice versa, but they were back they on were the fuel cap. pretty far back. So so yeah. Um, tell us about how, how can people get a hold of you here at Stonewood Ranch at Stonewood Ranch on Instagram on Instagram website uh, the is Stone, uh, the Stonewood Ranch dot com. Okay. And, and those and, are the best and ways. And if we can, can, can I give it to you and have you put it on the, on the screen so they can see it? Cause yeah, it, it'd be really silly of me to tell I'll put it in the link below. It'll so, be, re- it, so awesome. it'll be there all the time. Thank you. And we're, we're, uh, in Winniewood, Oklahoma, the Stonewood Ranch. Um, how do you say it? Winwood? Winnie Wood. Winnie Wood. What did it, that guy at the airport right now, say? It's famous right now for the Tiger King. That, the GW Park Zoo Alliance yeah. is literally like eight or nine miles. We're, we're going tomorrow morning. On now, our way out now here. Carol Baskin owns that. I heard. That's that's what I hear. I don't know. Yeah. So, but um, now she can kill the new husband over that there. That bitch, Carol Baskin. <laughs> <laughs> that's husband what, number two is going to be. It. So, you can check out the website. Check out the Instagram. Get a feel for it. The website. The pictures are awesome, but. It doesn't do it justice. I, I'm glad to hear you guys say that because yeah. I just don't. It's just this place is bigger, it's, yeah. cooler. There's more stuff it should to have do. been in Texas with the size of this place. Uh, like, seriously, that's the biggest kitchen counter table. The height of the roof is insane. I, like, I, I, is I don't gnarly. know if you guys need to get somebody with a drone to kind of get you a better aerial footage of it. But like, We could have drone racing the in The stuff yet. on the website doesn't do it justice. Dude, right. the property's unreal. Right. What, well, thank what, you. And what kind of animals can people hunt to? So we, we have... Uh, hogs, are, hogs are really popular. Um, bass fishing is really popular. Um, all the shooting sports, shotguns, pistols, rifles. Um, the motorcycle thing is, is kind of up in the air. You can call. Maybe we can work it out. I, I, don't, I don't know on the motorcycle thing yet what, what I can and can't do. I'm, I'm working on it. I'd love to have some uh, younger kids' schools, like, like 60 and 80, 80. 80s are smaller, uh, Some couple of schools. Um, and, and I'm not, it's more of a camp. I'm, I like to call it like a camp. Kids, I want them to come here and we'll, we'll focus on riding the most, but teach them how to catch a fish, how to tie a fishing hook, how to shoot a rifle safely, how to shoot a bow and arrow. Um, you know, even some of these kids don't even know how to start a fire and, and just stuff that if maybe you never use it again, but at least you, you can be a little more well, well-rounded. Sure. I, always, I always want to be real well-rounded and, and learn a lot. A little bit of, like Spicoli, a little bit about everything. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, and there's also an inquiry. You can fill out a thing, ask any questions. I, I'll be honest. I hope I don't open myself up to get a bunch of, hi, I just want to say hi to Larry, but uh, all, all the contact information, the website, everything goes to me. Um, and I'd be happy to call you back and answer any questions. And I'm really proud of the place. Uh, John and Melinda supported it. It's 100% funded by them. Uh, it's unbelievable, but I am proud of the placement of everything, the, the, the way we've taken care of it. The service with Brian and Kelsey, my cooks, is uh, Jeez, the, food the place is ridiculous. awesome. If you uh, stay it too, too long, Amber, you're going to gain want, a bunch of weight. I want to call out my, my mate Amber. She comes in here every week and keep, keeps it really, really nice. So <laughs> it's not the Amber. Okay, steady. <laughs> All right. He almost just had an Amber not, alert. It's not, right your, it's not your Amber okay. in a maid suit because okay. I've never thought of that. So oh. it's totally different than that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Steady. Why, why, so, why even need a maid suit? So what can people hunt, though? So, the so bo- we have whitetail. Pr- pretty much any, any exotic. If you call, I can get them. Um, it's hard to keep stuff here year-round because stuff dies. Stuff gets old. Um, but we can get any exotic, but primarily whitetail deer. Of all sizes, uh, I have access fallow, Audad, uh, lots and lots of hogs. Corp- corporate retreats is what we specialize in. Um, the guys come in. What were those sheep we saw too? Yeah, I have four horn Jacobs and Mouflon Rams, and, and uh, there's different kinds of, of sheep. There, th- that's there's like white tail, which I think is a legit animal, and then there's the exotics like the access and stuff. And then sheep, sheep is some some guys like it, but I, I have them more different price points so if a guy kills a nice eight thousand dollar buck and wants his 10 year old kid to shoot something he can shoot he can shoot in the goats or something you know so that, that's kind of why i have them in here and, and i'm not i just got a little billy go over there and shoot one of them goats and so, it'll be fine so I, some people that don't hunt don't understand it's not that we just want to murder goats it's that you know you teach that 
boy how to be, have patience and, and, and find, the, find the animal that he wants, make a clean, really good shot to, to harvest the animal without it suffering or wounding it, um, and then teach him how to, how to... I know some people really actually think that their meat is made at the grocery store, but, it, but it's not. <laughs> it, 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 you know, and, and the Do world's we, getting weird. You might, yeah. We might have to... Uh, I don't know if you all have tried to buy meat lately, but it's not easy to buy meat right now. It's and, actually uh, sad because of the whole system. I mean, they're killing off livestock and animals because there's no one to package it. Are, are you all, uh, have you ever watched um, the zombie, the, what's the, uh, Walking Dead? Walking Dead. Like, this would be the ultimate place. High fence all the way around, animals everywhere, uh, lots of ammunition, lots of wine and liquor. So, we'd live, we'd live a long time. I was going to say, I, I could be quite happy. Can I, can I shoot the Uzi <laughs> if that happens? Can I come here and man the yeah, Uzi? Yeah, so, so we have a... Yeah, well, a, you're not shooting the pistol. We have a little... No, nine, not, don't put the pistol in my hand. We'll n- all die. Nine millimeter Uzi that uh, <laughs> has a red dot scope on it and, and ping. He was electric with it. See that? Electric I like ping. that. Electronic ping. Yeah. He, he loved that thing. I was savage so. with that thing. He was good. It reminded me of you. It's this little short, stubby, uh, tight little thing, but it looked cool. It was hey. loud, too, man. Bang! It reminds me of you. Ah, that was a good, that was fun. It was All a bit of fun time, good. dude. I, we, we really appreciate you Great. having us and, out. And, and I got to tell you guys, I, I'm, you know, when time goes by and you don't think about racing for a long time, it's, it's been, you know, pr- pretty humbling to, uh, that you guys would even want to, let alone actually come out here and, and spend some time with me. And uh, uh, Grant's been, you know, he's a multi-time national champion and been very humble and very very uh respectful to me in my career and i've like known and liked ping ever since he was a little kid so it's been uh, well, i'm you. very thankful for you guys coming out here yeah man we're like i said i was excited for the show for a long time and like this has been i, he, I he wish we booked a, a couple time. more days now like i kind of yeah, really I, told, I warned you i warned you i, about I didn't that. i mean you know i didn't know Wants yeah to come back can watch you do some more well of the, you knew more than i did like You'd been sort of working on this. I was a little more naive and blind. So when I came, what I must say, it was kind of a trip. And I think I mentioned it last night. But, you know, in South Africa, safari lodging and, and places like that where people go to safari or even hunting places as well, they have places. And this reminds me a little bit of being in South Africa, like the architect, the the banisters. You know, it's very outdoorsy, a lot of wood, a lot of... You know, animal print stuff, but coming in here, it was a bit of a trip. I'm like, I've been to some cool places in South Africa, like really cool places. But this place takes the cake, at least this main hall. Everything here is huge. And don't let, because this place is over the top, super luxurious, but our price point, it's not that expensive. Yeah, now when you were explaining, I'm like, in so California, don't, that's don't cheap. Don't be afraid to, you know, get eight or ten guys together, and the more people you bring, the cheaper I can I go. I was shocked at, like, I'm like, this is so, super reasonable if yeah, for if what you, you're getting. Uh, and I'm I'm talking any big city. If you go to any big city and stay at a five-star hotel more like this, than this, you're going to spend more than more what than it costs this. here yeah. for food and lodging and everything. Absolutely. If you stayed at a, a, a nice $150 a night hotel and ate at Outback and drank a bunch of drinks and yeah, be way just went look. to an amusement GL. park or something like that, you're going to spend more money. And this is this is private. This place is yeah. it, it's legit. And, and uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm really proud of it. And, you know, I... I I hear a lot of, I read stuff now recently that, like, I ghosted the sport or I just went away. It, it's it's not like that. I was just moved on to the next thing. Yeah, but that's everyone's, that's their perception of, of how it was. And, yeah. And to me, I didn't have any, you didn't have any reason to stay behind. Like, who's to say you had to do these things? And I've it, had people say certain things to me, and I'm like, well, Well, it also say it? Hey, it also sounds like, and you've explained it, it's like, you didn't get to do a lot of these things when you're young because you're concentrating on racing. So you get to go out and explore other things. Why Enjoy You don't life. have to just sit in one yeah. spot. And I'll be well, honest, I'm not arrogant enough or even – I don't I, – it's hard for me to believe that the fans still want to know what I'm doing or where I'm at. Like I don't want – I don't – I wouldn't be like, hey, look at me. I'm doing this. I thought y'all well, would want to know. So. Fans are so damn fickle. If you were hanging around, they'd be like, look at Larry Ward. <laughs> What's so Larry doing around? here? And you don't come around. They're like, why is he – why is he hanging? Come ever come around? You know, like you're not going to win. Yeah, so, I think but, but you're pretty now, much right. But now, I'm really proud of this place. It's it's can be very beneficial to any business, any team. Uh, the team building and the camaraderie that you gain here playing, whether you're For playing sure. cornhole or shooting shotguns today. If you would have placed you and me on the same team, and we didn't even like each other, but we'd have helped each other 
or I'd have helped you get better. <laughs> it, it would have built camaraderie, you know, and it's the same thing playing cornhole at night, yeah. having, a, having a drink on the back porch. Uh, and and yeah, we also yeah. have the, the, the amenities that we have, the guns, the night oh, vision. Uh, it, it's, it's, all, it's all first class. I think and you it, need to help them in the pistol range a little bit more. <laughs> and I'm, I'm very proud of it. John and Melinda Folker, like I said, it, it's their facility, but it's amazing, and we, and we treat everybody really well. And, uh, and now that I'm finally proud of something, I'm thankful that I do have some fans that remember me so I can use my brand to help promote this ranch and ho hopefully get to, you know, if there's people that want to hang out with the ex-motocross racer on a family reunion, this is the place, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I'm just doing, I'm being honest, I'm doing whatever I can. I'm so proud of it that I'm trying to use any anything I had to promote it. And that's why I really appreciate you guys coming here and, and helping me get the word out. Our Instagram just, it, it keeps going up and, we all are still the same motocross family, it's, it's so one, we'll help yeah. each other. And, and I like that because I haven't seen that a lot uh, since I retired. People in the sport trying to help me, and now all of a sudden, you know, a lot of people are trying to help it, and I yeah. really appreciate that. Yeah, listen, man, you, it is a small, weird, little family, dysfunctional as it may be at times. <laughs> right. And um, just, yeah, stoked that it's Don't going Don't touch well my you. drums. <laughs> <laughs> Do I'll not. go put my balls on them right now. <laughs> hey, we got one more question. Oh, boy. We end every show with this. Yeah. How do you want to be remembered in this sport? How do you want fans to remember you? Well, you know, my, my, my mom's already thinks I'm the best ever, so that, that's important. <laughs> my mom's <laughs> proud of me and thinks I can do no wrong, so that's important. Um, just, you know, I, exactly how I was, the truth. I was never the best, but I wasn't the worst. And for a skinny little kid from Snohomish, Washington, to uh, actually win some Supercrosses and race as many laps as almost anybody, uh, it just the longevity and never give up. And, you know, obviously I had talent, but not quite enough. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, that's all perspective, man. So that, that's... I don't know. That's that's better. I'm just I'm just very thankful and humble that right. people still remember me, and I get I get to hear my name once in a while. I'm I'm cool with. I don't think by no stretch of the imagination I'm a Hall of Fame guy, but I was very honored and hum and, and I love it that I'm in the Washington State Hall of Fame because that's where it all started. So, uh, so I, I I did the best I could with what I had. I don't think I ever had the best of the best stuff, but I always just did the best I could with what what I had. And I think a lot of people recognize that. I mean. People know That's the name. Partly they know the name Jeff Ward. So you know. <laughs> you've really left an oh, wait, impact on the sport. Uh, oh, it's Larry. What do you oh, mean? Fuck it. Man. You're already <laughs> in the Hall of Fame, bro. Like, you know, calm down. I never did like David Villapoto. <laughs> <laughs> you mean David Villaman? <laughs> hey, dude. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. I've had thank a ball. You. It's Me been too. a lot of fun. Yeah, Thanks for too. having me. Absolutely. Out. Thank you, guys. Hey, we'll be right back to wrap up the show. Be sure, be sure to check out Stonewood Ranch uh, at Stonewood Ranch and thestonewoodranch.com. You're going to want to come out here and check this place out. It's dope. We'll be back to wrap up.
Hey guys, welcome back to the Whiskey Throttle Show. Uh, thank you so much to Larry Ward for having us out. Uh, the Stonewood Ranch is epic. It's, it's not just a smoke job. Like This place is really, really badass. If you come here and say it's not what we made it out to be, call me, please, because I, wa I want to hear you what your complaint is. Yeah, I mean, it's... I don't know how... There's no Ping way has one complaint. The beds are too tall. I, I, but I get <laughs> I it. Even I struggled. I, ha hey, I you, had to seat bounce you know to get little, in last night. You know those little run-in-place trampolines? You, you need, need one, one of those <laughs> just to get into the bed. The hard part, like is getting out of bed in the middle of the night. You're like hanging yeah, on, sliding well, your feet off, going, "Oh shit, where's the floor?" Where's yeah, the floor? Yeah, but you're half asleep, so I wasn't even thinking. <laughs> so I went. I was ready to hit the ground, and I didn't. And then I almost literally hit the ground. Yeah, that's funny. A stuff. Little wake up call in the middle of the night. Uh, I mean, I feel like I, I already want to book another trip back here some sometime. Well, we haven't used that movie theater room. I haven't used the bar enough. <laughs> GL. We'll, we'll see yeah, if we GL, get to that, some of that tonight. You're just talking nonsense now. Uh, <sighs> all right, I'll stop rambling. Yeah. Uh, I will tell you this, uh, we are headed up to Guy Cooper's place in Stillwater, Oklahoma tomorrow, so you can look for that show the following week. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're, we're trying to get the most bang for our buck out here in Oklahoma. Uh, we also, also are going to go over to uh, Wild Animal Park here and see if we can meet Carol freaking Baskin. So look for those selfies tomorrow out in front of We the can stop by the, the uh, state jail and see <laughs> Joe Exotic. <laughs> I think he's done. Is he in Florida or is he here? No, he's here. Oh, all right. Yeah. I'm over him. Yeah. All right. Um, we got the SKDA Get At Me Q&A. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with SKDA's graphics, man, go check them out. Uh, not only do they make a really cool Whiskey Throttle Show graphic, which is 20% off at the moment, um, they just make rad stuff. They've got a new uh, retro line. Have you seen some of the stuff they've been doing? Yeah. Old Yamahas, old Cowies. Even the CR stuff. Yeah, the I CR saw. stuff is rad. Uh, they just, man, they're killing it. They just keep coming out with designs that are rad. Uh, absolutely the next level. So check those guys out. Donnie, what do we got for questions today? Well, now that we've run uh, or started Supercross back up again, what would you guys think of the day race? And what would you think of no fans? I thought no fans sucked. I felt like I was watching a time to practice. That's what it felt like to me watching on TV. Up <laughs> Right up until they cut off the 450 main event and went to riding. Oh. And I flipped my TV off and walked out. I think we all did that. Um, it's definitely, to me, feels a little strange. Um, but a couple of weeks prior, obviously, NASCAR had come back, and they did the same thing at Darlington, no fans, day race. And I, I remember watching, and there was nothing else on TV, so I was kind of amped to see the NASCAR, and I'm like, it just didn't feel the same. So I was hoping, okay, maybe that was NASCAR, because it can be a little boring going left. Supercross maybe will be different. And I watched it, and the same thing, I was like, it just feels a little strange. I don't, I don't know what it's like for the races on the track. I'm sure once they're in that zone, they probably don't notice any different. I thought the day race made it even more weird with no fans. Yeah. Not only could you see everything, but racing Supercross in the day, it's, that's so past you can't removed. Do, there's, there's so no, it was there's weird. There's no contrast at night, and you can't see like what each guy is doing on the track. It's difficult to follow the race. At least at, least at night, it looks a little TV. bit better yeah. as far as the aesthetic side goes. But yeah, yeah when, when it was that first uh, day race, and then my other thought was, I think this has gotten Eli's Tomac. It's a name written on this kind of dirt, and if it's going to be in the day, you know, those day races. Dry, dusty, high desert, or, you know, high yeah, altitude. I, I thought Ken, he, he's so good with th uh, throttle control, and he's just so kind of smooth and flowy. I thought it would be good for him, but yep. he got like a seventh, eighth place start, and I guarantee if he would have gotten a first, second place start, we would have seen a different I, race. I think, and I think this was the, the one part about that first race back that sucked, was the racing just sucked. It did. There was no, really no good battles up front. Uh... Pierce Brown blew me away. That kid, uh, from I, I, I'm obviously watching him because he's a TLD guy, and he was way back off the start with that 
crash. You know, he, he clipped somebody and went sideways, and I thought, ah, he's done. Dude, and man, he, he just kept coming. He so picked like, up I, the I'm, pace. Yeah, that was really fun to watch. But man, was there really anybody else? It was just kind of felt, la- felt lackluster. And I then the, the daylight and the no fans kind of made it. Just easy. when you look at just how flat it. everything looks, because there's no contrast, yeah. so it flattens the entire track. Which when you when they shoot Supercross now, I don't want to beat them up too bad, but when you have the high angles, you don't see oh, yeah. w- a lot of the obstacles on the track. And so now you you couple that with no contrast, and it's just all white. Well, there's not even the fireworks opening. You know, yeah. when they come in. It's yeah. super there's a, and hey, there's, boom, a, boom, hey, boom. there's a positive to that. We don't have to hear Ralph say, light the candles. Oh, well, he'll still say it. No, he didn't say it because they didn't light the candles. So think, I was thanking God for that. He'll still say it. Oh, yeah. He, it's coming. <laughs> He's just going to say, say it. He's going to say it. All right. You better go watch the night race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. What else we got? Well, O'Reilly wants to know. What do you guys think of the current state of racing is? I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't know. I think that uh, I think it's in a precarious spot, I think, like everything right now. Um, maybe we can answer this question a little better in a month or two's time. But Well, I think there's, there's a couple What's, things. I don't think, I mean, the Nationals have one round confirmed. Announced. It's just very... I don't know. I think there's a couple ways to look at it. You, where, you, where you're coming from, temporarily, I think there's, 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 there's a lot of mud in the water. You know, we can't see clearly at the moment. I do believe that'll change and kind of fizzle out, essentially. But I think the silver lining has got to be, who would have thought COVID-19 would have basically injected a bunch of cash into our industry? People went out and started buying stuff. I mean, whether it's distributors, bike shops tracks that are reopened everyone's telling you our industry has gone to another level as crazy as this sounds is this a blessing in disguise for us i mean think about it for the past i feel like 10 years we've just slowly talked about uh oh, this is too expensive we're losing entries here this is so now the government gave all down payments right i mean however you want to look at it i people just yeah. had some money maybe they're bored maybe they're like me it burns a hole in their pocket they were like oh i like bikes and crap like that and people just came or either fixed up their old dirt bike or yeah. got a bike for their kids or something bikes. to get out and do stuff pit bikes are flying off the shelves <laughs> well there's none left on the showroom floors so i mean there's some good problems out there so there, there's definitely some some immediate issues some some things that i go hey this this uh, this could sort of reface our industry for a little while but in racing terms it's got to be better in the sense that if companies are making more money, that there's a trickle-down effect that's going to end up in the racing hands. Maybe not 2020, maybe not even 2021 per se, but I think it's going to help a little bit longer term, um, or they're just going to put the money in their pockets. The only thing I don't want to see is I've heard of teams and people getting the, oh, we can't pay you because of COVID. So I think some people are using it to pull the piss out of the system, meaning as an excuse not to pay, even though they're making the money. But there's more money in our industry now than there was last year or the year before or the year before. So to me, as crazy as it seems, I know there's a lot of people and I truly feel for a lot of people that have lost a lot and lost their businesses, lost a lot of things or very uncertain. But just talking purely selfishly for us from our motorsport industry, I think it's, it's been a blessing. You don't want to see in 12 to 24 months a lot of used bikes for sale. I'm sure there will be some. Yeah. I mean, right now, used bikes are getting top dollar, and they're hard to find. I mean, so there's a good trend, at least. There's a good trend. I'll leave it, it at that. I, and I love to hear that. It surprises the hell out of me. Does, yeah. it, does it not you? Like, it shocked it's me. Blown, yeah. It's in blown a, my mind. In a time like this, you think people are going, I'm not spending. I'm going to save. Hey, well, like me, but for the first time in my life, I cut back on spending, and everybody else is buying bikes. Yeah. Well... Yeah, I uh, bought a really I, nice used YZ 250F yeah. <laughs> at a great price. I'll, I will tell you this. Uh, I, I just think we're, it's going to be touch and go for a little while. I don't well, think we're going to be able well, to answer that question uh, no, really right, well but, for a But while. really, like everybody's talking about next year for a lot of different things, school and other sporting events and how's it, concerts, all li- this li- stuff. Life's going to be a little bit different. How, how is January, whatever, 4th, Supercross going to be? Right? Because... We're completely uncertain as to what yeah. that's going to be. Well, apparently you can uh, go out and protest and riot without a mask. So, by the by the thousands. Yeah. Why can't we go to a Supercross and not wear a helmet? <laughs> well, I mean, right. Randy Redham. All right, that's all I got. <laughs> all right, 
Well, uh, thank you again to Larry Ward for having us out. Thank you guys for watching. Yeah. Uh, we've got some pretty fun shows coming up. We've got another trip to Utah with a couple cool guests in two weeks. Uh, we're kind of taking it on the road because things are weird, and why the hell not? We're just going to go. Uh, Let's make it weirder. Yeah. We're going to get right up in your living room, <laughs> sit on this couch, and make it weird. Dude, I like the new sofa setup. This is what I'm into. This feels way too casual. I, I was almost falling asleep back here a couple times. Yeah, Donnie's asleep at the wheel out there drooling. I was over there. Yeah. <laughs> How tropical fish over there. <laughs> okay. Well, you want to read our... Uh, oh, that's right. We're going to yeah. do one more thing. Yeah. Ah, it's my time to shine. <clears throat> GL's going to go through This it show you. would not be possible without people like Yamaha. I know Larry talked about how good the Hondas were. Now it's Yamaha's <laughs> turn to shine. Is. I'm telling you, Yamaha's the bike to have. Trust me on that one. PowerDot, 20% off. Um, I know a lot of you are aching and hurting, probably aching from listening to me, but trust me, the PowerDot will sort that out. 20% off using the code Whiskey Throttle. Method Race Wheels, you can also get 20% off. I just got some new wheels for my new truck. I'm going to put those on. Maybe we can put them on there. Will you post my truck on Whiskey yes. Throttle? Yes, oh, I will. Yeah. You heard it. Put my bike in the back of it, my yeah. Yamaha. Yeah, with a big eight on it. Yeah. You did. <laughs> anyway, Method Race Wheels, 20% off the lightest, strongest, fastest wheels around. Troily Designs, Ping mentioned it earlier. They've got uh, a variety of helmets, uh, well, new helmets. SE5 is amazing. And then they've got the more entry levels that have the cool uh, look, graphics. Well, the SE5 is not out yet. So slow, slow down. The SE5? Is it? Yeah, it is. No, it's not out yet. Still in development. Uh, R&D. Oh. Uh, yeah. What's out of my head at times, but <laughs> but anyway, when you get it, I'm telling you, you're gonna freaking love it. But it's Next available year, soon. Amazing, you're gonna love it. Yeah, we had to. It was COVID's fault that it's not out yet, not mine. SKDA making the best graphics around. Uh, actually, I just ordered a new set for my new YZ 250F. Oh, they're so sweet. But they make some great ones. Check out their Whiskey Throttle. Trying uh, to get those graphics. ping graphics off there, I guess. He must use super glue. They were hard to get off. No, they're really good graphics. Great quality. Um, as I've mentioned before, you won't get bubbles. The material they use is fantastic. Um, they're not so stiff. They really, a lot of the new plastics are got a lot of edges, and, and these graphics just tend to really mold around, not the old stiff ones that would peel. So trust me on this one. Great quality, great stuff. Dunlop tires, do I have to really say anything except put some Dunlops. Don't be a dick to your bike. Adidas, get some, sh trust me. Pro Circuit, they race, they win a lot. Buy some. Trust me. Get the pipe. Trust me. A lot of hey. people are trusting GL. <laughs> <laughs> Just trust me. I'm an amateur gynecologist. Trust me. <laughs> uh, Pro Circuit. They, if they can build my, if they're good enough to build my motor on my YZ250, if they're good enough to do yours. I'm not suspension. a gynecologist, but I'll have a look. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'll give you my expert opinion. Uh, Nahila Concepts. Enter Whiskey Throttle, get a free gift. Who knows what it could be? It's They are pretty cool. Trust I shot me. the clerk. Trust me. I shot the clerk. Wait, I shot the clerk? <laughs> Seat Concepts. Don't be a dick to your ass. <laughs> Fire Department Coffee. 20% off. The best coffee. It's really good. If you drink enough, you'll poop at least twice, guaranteed. Use the code Whiskey Throttle. What, to poop twice? Yeah, look, you're drinking coffee anyway. Just order it from this place. That's online. what I do. Bang. Comes right to you. It's really cool. Bang. Free shipping over 50 bucks. You enter the code. You get your K-Cups. You get your light roast. You get your donut blend. You get your... Hmm. Uh, what's the other one all the flames on? I just know it's strong as shit. There's all... There's everything, man. What's, what's Spirit infused. Yeah. There's the, the whiskey Double infused. the caffeine one. The extra strength. Specialized bicycles. You know how good they are? If you went to the website last month, you couldn't get one because everyone bought one because they were smart. But now if you go to the website, they are available, specialized, seriously. They've got a bike for everyone from entry level to... Kids' bikes. The most luxurious. They've got bikes that cost more than dirt bikes, and they've got bikes that you go, oh, wow, that's a specialized with all that? Great. I can afford that. Especially for your Trust kids. Me. Trust me. Trust me. <laughs> Ogeo. Come on. If you're going to get a bag, get an Ogeo. Just trust, trust me. me on trust this one. Me. <laughs> Paleo Ranch. <laughs> Really good food. Trust me. I've tried it. Their jerky and stuff is <laughs> sensational. It's I'm not true. joking. It's true. It's true. Paleo Ranch. They don't have a discount code because Donnie and Ping are involved and they're cheap. <laughs> Just like Langston Motorsports. They don't have a discount code, but go there. You will get a discount. Trust me. Trust me. Tell them GL sent you. <laughs> it usually works. And that's our show. <laughs> trust me. Just trust him. He knows what he's talking about. Thank you. Thank, thank you guys for watching. GL, Donnie, thank you. Thanks to Larry Ward. See you guys on the next show.
You're going to love it. Trust me. Trust us. 